schedule yet this week I um have just been doing some really busy work on the um all of our sports teams and all of our clubs to be honest so it's been quite busy this week and this season. And in fact we have been getting to Table two here is very good for me overall. That's annoying. To episode three of the Game to Game series. Uh, Stairs are currently down at the moment, guys, so I've decided to play some data days and be fighting out here in a bit. So I'll turn it up. Um, I know I haven't put up a schedule yet this week, guys. Um, I've just been really, really busy with uh, doing this team's commentary the last three or four days. So hopefully, I'll get the uh, schedule up and running by this evening. And if not this evening, then definitely at the latest tomorrow morning or after. So. Um, like I said, guys, I've been very, very busy the last three or four days with um, doing this team's commentary, so only getting a chance to record this now, and this is probably the only chance I'm going to get to do it before I have to upload on YouTube. So, without further ado, guys, we're just going to jump straight into this 25 and out Zoom on uh, 8 days. Let's go. Something like that, guys. Mark and mark and mark and mark all the time. All the time. Mark and all you can. Start with check here now for the F3. Like over an overbet on this turn now with the uh, F3 now. Don't do that.
All righty, folks, it is showtime. Dealer, shuffle up and deal. This is the final table of the main World Series of Poker circuit event. Delighted to be in the boot with Alan Finn once again. We have been having a great time the last two days. So many interesting spots to dissect. So many interesting characters at this final table. It is set to be a thrilling affair. Hope you are all very well on this Tuesday afternoon a bonus day of coverage with myself and alan how are you alan alan will be with us in just a moment vittorio queen jack of hearts here raising to 200k small blind is 50k big blind 100k with 100k running big blind ante that's 50 100 100 Hope you all had a good night's sleep. I hope the players got some rest as well. So much action to come. The average stack is about 30 big blinds, but don't let that fool you. We are playing one hour blinds. There's a lot of stacks of 40 big blinds here at the FT. They need to be very conscious and ICM aware. They've all secured a 10 grand ticket, but are chasing the first prize and the glory. Winning that World Series of Poker circuit ring and a small matter of 160,000 euro. Be nice to see what you think in the chat. 
of who is going to win this one. Good afternoon, wherever you are tuning in from. Whether it be the Action Army on Twitch, YouTube, we've got some great new content on there. We're on all the usual social media platforms. If you like what you see, check out all the additional information and the merchandise store on the website www.kingsresort.com. Babo with 11 big blinds here. Pocket sevens. He's going to raise to 200k. Apocalypse is in the house. Hello, Apocalypse. Current payout is 15,775 euro. So Martin is going to call for an additional 100k in the big blind with A7 off suit. A little bit ambitious here for Martin considering Babo is min raising off an 11 big blind stack from early position. This tends to be a very nutted range in general. We can see he just has sevens. I believe he should have pushed pre, but he gets it done with a small C bet, and that is a huge pickup there for Babo as one of the shortest stacks. We've got some exciting players at this FT. If you were tuning in last night, We've seen some epic hands. Watch out for Gianfranco with the scarf in middle position there. He's got the button in front of him at the moment. Middle position in the table now is what I meant. Uh, Vittorio going to min raise to 200k here with Ace Queen of Hearts. I can hear you, Alan. Hello? Can you hear me? Gianfranco, the man of the moment, ran an incredible bluff last night with 7-5 off suit on a very tricky board for his opponent. Fuck my life, man. I could hear you now, Alan. The obscenity was heard 
throughout the building. We'll get this technical difficulty sorted out for you in just a second, and we will have Alan with us for the day. Don't worry. Never fear. Action Man Dan and Alan Finn are here. Dennis is going to can defend in the big blind. Can you, can you hear me now? No. I can hear you now. I can That's hear all you right. Okay. Clear. Perfect, perfect, perfect. For some strange reason, man, if the, mic, if the mic is muted on the... No, I was just going to say, if the mic is muted on the... Um, on the link, for some strange reason, the mic audio comes out. So as long as I know this is working now, that's fine. No worries. I actually should have messaged you about that because uh, <laughs> one time in particular sticks out in my mind where I got delivered, <laughs> delivered my dinner to the door and I was eating in a hurry on the break. Uh, and I, was, I never try to eat while I'm commentating. Of course, maybe I'll have a coffee or whatever. But uh, does someone just typed in the chat, will you please stop scraping? If you want to eat, mute your mic. We can hear everything. This is ridiculous. Disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Not ideal. Well, you're here now. That's great. We heard your obscenity anyway. It's a PG channel, Adam. <laughs> Apologies for that. PG channel guy. for an adult's game. I don't understand it myself. <laughs> At least we got it sort of raw. I don't mind after that. Again, guys, apologize for the, for the swearing that you may or may not have heard. Apologies. <laughs> Neutral, oh, we're already getting compliments and the stream has just started. Neutral saying the English stream is better and I am German. Well, you know, two crazy Irish guys on the mic at the same time expect fireworks. And it's, the, the players have made it easy enough for us, Alan, over the last day or two. I have really enjoyed the action and it's great to have a co-commentator. So brilliant to have you back with us again. I had a bit of a strange morning there. It was You, you had a weird morning last or yesterday with your internet and stuff and i told you we didn't have an oven so i was waiting for the part to come for the oven and <laughs> of course they decide to knock down the door my parents were out there it was half nine in the morning so ringing the door and i was like oh my god and it took me it always takes me about two hours to wind down especially after a 12 hour stream mm. so so no, didn't get the full morning routine done today but did dump two liters of ice cold water over my head in the shower there so that will help just off the cobwebs. That was a nice pick up there for the King 10, by the way. Now, what did you make of that first hand, Alan? I'm not sure you're probably dealing with your technical difficulties, but he decided to <laughs> min raise off 11 bigs from early position. And although that, that will look very strong to the rest of the table, hand like pocket sevens, not really what you want to do there. Now, I've seen Dan Wilson before. Big shout out to him. He's an amazing player, a wizard. And he's at the final table of the Irish Open and he was doing things off 11 and 12 bigs like with ace, queen off and pocket nines, two hands. He's an ICM genius, he knows, and he has people running the spots for him like David Lapp and Darrell Kearney. So he knows what he's doing. So when I do see things like that, it does uh, strike alarm bells to me that there's a reason for it. I would think we either just jam 11 bigs into even though it's into the full table we're one of the shortest stacks we've secured our ticket and there is eight remaining even though the field says nine i think we get into a lot of sticky situations there with the pocket sevens i think it just plays better as a jam or you might call me crazy but into seven players we could just elect to fold at an ft with such, such significant icm pressure yeah i agree with that strongly bro um it's just, again, there's so much up top here, bro. Probably just folding them kind of mid to low pocket pairs in the really early formations, man. Probably is a better play. Although in saying that, I'd imagine maybe sevens might be on the cusp of, you know, raise folds. Um, but yeah, I think eights plus is probably a pretty standard either raise all in or, you know, raise small. But again, probably just jamming off 11 and bigs effective is probably the better play. But I do think sevens and sixes are definitely on the, uh, the closer side for sure. Yeah, there's some interest. Sorry, Ron Don, I was speaking too close to the mic. You are correct. I was leaning in because I was trying to make sure we had everything right. I'll be leaning back now. Don't worry. <laughs> and, lean lean um, back. Um, lean back. Uh, we let the players do the work for us today. They're playing so much high intensity stuff there the last two days. It's great. You get to know the characters now and you have an idea of what they're at. And how they're playing. Oh, he said it's not me, it's the other fella. You're in trouble, Alan. You're speaking too, too close to the mic. Oh, no. What else is going to happen today, huh? 
Well, we have the oven fixed, so that means that I'll have more turkey to attend to later, which is great. <laughs> I can eat. Nothing better. Look, you did tell me a healthy breakfast you were eating, Alan. I did come up with a life hack while I seen it. Uh, I didn't know that you could put eggs in the air fryer. If you put them in for seven minutes, they come out really nicely, soft boiled. Well, no water included, nothing. You just put them in, take them out. I thought this was awesome. I expected them to just smash, because that's what would happen if you put them in the microwave. <laughs> so that's speaking from experience, yeah? <laughs> um, well, you learn a lot when you don't have an oven for a week. <laughs> Not the heater I was looking for. <laughs> so, going back through the chat here, Lenny getting shout-outs from the get-go. You gotta be rooting for Lenny, the scrappy underdog coming back from the brink of destruction a couple of times yesterday and he finds himself in a very, very good place here in contention with 35 big blinds. And make sure you get your predictions out in the chat, folks. Who do you think is going to become your champion as we will crown yet another winner at this fantastic resort, the King's Resort, live from Rosvedov. Gonna be a heck of a day. And it's, uh, I think it's safe to say, Alan, at this stage, that all players at this FT will be accomplished in some, in some regard. Yeah, it's kind of like what you said, bro, in terms of uh, the cream always rises to the top. So whatever nine players, eight players that are remaining, probably gonna be uh, pretty uh, efficient in uh, what they need to do with ICM considerations and all that stuff. Yeah, Gianfranco going to raise from the hijack. I actually am not too fond of this open with H3 offsuit. With the cut off, the button, the small, and the big to get through. I, I don't mind this from the cut off or the button, but maybe the hijack just a little bit tad too light. Um, speaking of a tad too light, Babo is going to just call from the small blind here. This is a risky business off 12 bigs to start the hand. It might just play better as a rejam, but also that might be not great from an ICM perspective. He is one of the shortest stacks, so when we are one of the shortest stacks, we don't have to take ICM into as big a consideration as we would if we were one of the bigger stacks. I think that goes without saying. With eight remaining, so they're all guaranteed 19,500 euros because we had one elimination Oh no, there is still nine players remaining because we, we played on and we didn't have an elimination. That's correct. It was nearly, it's just gone past 3 a.m. at Kings. It was time to call it a day at that stage after 12 hours. Ridiculous, Lent. <laughs> this is the problem. If you miss for Babo, you've just put in nearly 20% of your stack. What do you think about calling this one pre, Alan? Or do you think... I think if we know Gianfranco is going to be raising this light, then we could just rejam the Queen Jack, honestly, from the small. I suppose it's one of those spots as well, bro, where if you do get called here, you're probably not going to be in that good of shape. But I get where you're coming from. Gianfranco's definitely going to be opening probably wider. I mean, a wider range than normal, we'll say, here off the stack size. But... Yeah, I don't know, bro. Queen Jack kind of doesn't feel great. Queen Jack suited, Jack 10 suited, that sort of range. The suited combo is very easy jam here, I would assume. Um, but yeah, off suit ones. Mm. I don't really mind V pipping it, though, from the small. I would just rather be a bit deeper. Yeah. Maybe in this scenario, given. There's such chunky pay jumps, Alan. The difference between ninth and eighth alone is a few grand. Like it's fifteen thousand seven hundred and seventy-five euros the current payout, and just surviving one more elimination as a short stack, you make all the way up to nineteen thousand five hundred euro. Yeah, it's good. So the difference of about three thousand seven hundred euro. Look at this, though. I was not expecting mm. to see this. This is wow. This is ballsy. Interesting. 
This is something I would never have found in if I was ever no. in this situation. <laughs> no. We would want um, Gianfranco to have a hand like Queen Jack that would see bet this board. We don't. We we want him to have those cards that would see bet this right. So, what are we trying to say? We have here. We don't have much nine x. We don't have an overpair to the board unless it's nutted like queens plus and i think we just jammed those pre so this really looks like a diamond draw or some sort of a combo draw that's got out of line from the small blind probably going to get the 3x to falls here though and that's obviously a huge win with this sort of spot the thing is man it's just a weird such an un unorthodox spot where look if john franco is c-betting way too wide here which he's definitely going to be doing you know you should definitely be check raising very very aggressively that's how you kind of more or less counter that that that's that strategy excuse me um i mean the thing is man babo still has like two overs here and technically a backdoor straight or a backdoor flush draw so off this tax size when you're going to get a good chunk of folds here i mean again i probably wouldn't find it i i, I probably wouldn't end up in this spot because i just inexperience and just not knowing but um seeing this now <laughs> I really like it. I really, really do. Yeah, it, it puts Jean Fran Franco under a lot of pressure. I mean, wor word will have got out about that 7-5 hand. So I'll, I think that <laughs> from a psych psychological perspective, it's really interesting. Jean Franco knows that the, the jig is up. And he knows all the players at this table know he's capable of being a scallywag. Mm-hmm. It is a really, really nice pick up there for Babo. Finding a way to V-pip that one pre and going for the check raise, not something I expected to see either. Very un unorthodox, no? <laughs> yeah, if you, it just, it's, he looks like a genius when you get it through, but a lot of the time you're just going to get snapped off there and you're hating life. Yeah, but as I said, bro, it's kind of interesting because he, do, he does have the two overs and he does have some backdoor equity. And as I said, if he's going to get a good chunk of folds there, it's, it's probably not a bad play. I think it's probably, again, I would not find it myself because it's very, very <laughs> risky to say the least. Um, but man, it looked good and it worked out. So as I always say, if it gets through, it's never a spew. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a good phrase. <laughs> I won't rob that one. I can tell that's, that's your bread and butter there. Yeah, copyright, bro. Copyright. Not a spew. Always <laughs> golden, never folding. <laughs> I am not a real fish. We won't start with the fish puns now this early today. But if you do yeah, think not... of any, let me know. <laughs> Class is in session. School around the corner. Apocalypse says, I think you guys had nightmares about that hand. We were really struggling uh, with that <laughs> hand because <laughs> we look, it looked like amateur hour if that one goes viral. The two of us speechless. <laughs> what happened here? What do you think went on? We uh, completely okay. misread the action as well. That was the best part. We didn't, we didn't realize that there was a donk on the flop and a call with seven high and then another lead on the turn and a raise and a call. Man, it was just ridiculous. Absolutely insane, that hand. We were about 10 hours into the stream and we were probably still talking about a hand that happened three hands before that, so... Yeah. It's part and parcel. <laughs> Neutral says Queen Jack is really close in this situation. Well, what I would say about that now, the last point of that hand is he's, he's making a 575 with 465 behind. Is he just going to stack off or is he folding for the additional? I don't think you can fall, to be fair. That's the thing. It's, again, like that, man, having two overs is, is enough equity in itself. Again, ICM is obviously a big thing to take into account there. You know, if the ICM wasn't part of this or it wasn't that extreme of an ICM kind of uh, situation, then um, I, I'd imagine calling it off there. But the thing is, if you're getting that good of a price there with the backdoor equity and the two overs, bro, I don't think you can... Um, I don't think you can fold, even, even if you get a jam there, but you're going to be in not great shape. But you still have some backdoor equity and the two overs, so you kind of have to call, I'd say. But at the same time, bro, maybe he knows something that we don't know in terms of, you know, just being a little bit more aggressive with that situation in play. Yeah, 
the problem, the reason I don't like calling pre is we are super capped. There is so many hands yeah. we can't have. So even 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 a flop that has picture cards, like what are we trying to say we have? And on nine six three there, we don't have nines, we don't have sixes, we don't have trees, we don't have nine six, we don't have nine three, we don't have six three. So we don't have any overpair, I don't think so anyway. He might have a hand that contains King Nine. Jack nine, queen nine, but they'd have to be suited. I think you're not going to be calling the offsuit combinations there. So he is super capped. I wouldn't have been yeah. shocked to see Jan Franco to say, right, I think you've got diamonds and I'm going to play for it all. But if he does have diamonds, then you're not doing great with your ace tree. You've just so many cards to dodge. There's better spots. Jan Franco probably a bit gun shy after that. He doubled up Lenny one of the last hands of the night and lost about one and one point three million of his stack. Mm -hmm. he could have done without losing that one because he was the head honcho there playing I think he was up over 5 million at one stage getting close to 6 sick yeah swings and roundabouts this is a very mm. uh, edgy final table because there's a lot of closely closely contended stacks here all between that 25 to 40 big blind range Who says very risky raise? He might think ICM is for the poor. <laughs> I bet he doesn't have anything. <laughs> no skills says was up. Was it? We are going to keep an eye on the on the chat today, but I'm definitely going to more focus on the poker because it is the final table. There's a lot of tricky spots to discuss, and <laughs> it's hard hard to get all the content discussed on time. Through. We pick up the action here. This pot getting bloated now, Alan. 1.75 million in the middle. Dennis electing to just call pre with his tens. And Gianfranco going into check call mode. He won't like that river, but rates to have the best hand the majority of the time. Maybe we'll go for a blockerish type sizing forward slash value bet here. Yeah, I like it. I like it on this river. Although I'm saying that, man, this river, like, the in-position player is going to check back this turn a decent amount of the time. So I think block bet is probably fine some of the time. Um, but like that, the in-position is going to probably bluff this river a lot, given that, you know, it is hijack versus, well, sorry, under the gun plus two versus hijack. So he might be tempted to stab that there. But yeah, either way, just checking back the tens there has more than enough showdown value. We get an update of the chip counts here, and you see just how significant every pot and every chip is. Look how, look how closely grouped they are at the top here. Even the top seven, there's not that much separating them. Hmm. Like there's only a difference between 14 bigs between first and sixth place at this FT, which it's not that it never happens but it, usually there's the one giant stack who's taking control that is definitely not the case here at all yeah it's tight bro it is tight we're, 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 we're in for an interesting final table man I, I can sense it and I, as you said the hour long blinds as well man there's going to be plenty of play off them uh, kind of 30, 30 to 40 big blinds so yeah, as I said already looking forward to uh, some interesting spots yeah because the last final table I watched was Giraffe Ganger, Ganger winning 3 million and he steamrolled the final table in record time of three hours, cool as a cucumber. So this is a mm. completely different final table. Yeah. Big ass asks, is this real money? You betcha, buddy. You betcha bottom <laughs> dollar this is real money. This Definitely is a 1,700 is. euro buy-in if you're just tuning in. It's the main event final table of the World Series of Poker Circuit Events. There's a ring up for grabs. They've all secured a 10 grand ticket to the World Series of Poker Europe main event happening in a month's time. Live from the King's Resort in Roswell is what you're watching it. this on. A one hour delay. And the first prize is 160,000 euro.
Martin with the men. And Pez is going to use this as an aggressive tree bet from the small blind. Pez is an aggressive player, man. I'm getting that impression. It's not even overly aggressive. It's just timing-wise, I think it's very, very good. And look at this, man. Getting ace-jack to fold there. That's, that's such a huge win, man. Such a huge win. Yeah, I was about to say I think this is a bit light, but it's not light at all if we can get a hand like Ace-Jack to fold, which I think Ace-Jack has to fold there. It was a kind of a similar spot, if you remember, there was one hand, I think it was like under the gun plus two facing a three bet with King-Queen suited. I forget what the small blind had, but we saw King-Queen make a, a fold as well. Now, that might have been closer to the, the ticket bubble last night, so maybe a different, um, different situation, I suppose, but... Still seeing the, uh, the folds versus three bets with these sort of, you know, relatively strong hands. You know, ace-jack suited is quite strong, king-queen suited is quite strong. But again, like that man facing a three bet from, you know, the blinds. Don't think it's going to be the, uh, two, the most out of line range, we'll say. Yeah, it's just as well. I'm going to keep mentioning it because stack sizes are so important uh, with ICM. So... That's going to be my primary focus for a while. Like, if they were a bit deeper, you might call there. But you're calling 700k. It's going to be about 20% of your stack just to see a flop. Mm. And even if you flop an ace there, you don't know where you're at. Yeah, agreed. Plus, you don't expect Pez to be tree betting as light as a six of hearts. That's what made it such a nice takedown there. Yeah, again like that, man, he's just a very, very experienced player. I know one of the guys said in the chat last night that this guy was battling Isildur heads up, you know, back in the, uh, the rail heaven days and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, hearing that, as I said last night, it's like an amazing, amazing story to know that this guy is on the table when he has that kind of background behind him with, you know, playing heads up against, you know, arguably one of the best online players in the world at, at that time. Yeah. That's a good point. I think Pez was outed to be a bit of a sicko. I didn't get his uh, official name, but mm. you know by bet sizes and stuff like we were talking about yesterday. Exactly. Christian going to try flop a set. I would prefer for him to be a bit deeper here. Button against small. I don't hate it, but Again, what we were talking about yesterday. We're going to keep talking about the same things we were talking about yesterday and <laughs> Sunday, but they're just they're even more reinforced now because there's so much money at stake. Um, it's okay to try flop a set, but if you don't flop a set, you need to be done with your hand. You don't want to be doing that compound mistakes. Mm -hmm. Which we saw plenty of yesterday, as you mentioned already. We saw that plenty of times, man, over-investing with some sort of hands that just don't really... You can't really justify it, you know. I remember the trees hand on the seven seven four, you know, small blind versus hijack or something like that. Check calls flop. The run out pair, double pairs the board. And he tries to bluff the trees, and we had a good discussion about that as well. Where you know, calling free flop is probably the the compound mistake or the domino effect to lead to more mistakes on top of that, which was a good example if you remember that one, Dan. I do indeed. Yeah, double pair board. It's before you consider a bluff, you have to have to think about what you're repping. Yep. Some players exactly. just find themselves on flop turn and river, and they're like, "Well, I need to bluff this," but they're not thinking it through. It's like, right, yes, but you know, the jig is up here. He's checked back for a reason. He's going to call you here, or you know, you're capped in this situation. I think players are so capped from the small blind. It's a very difficult position to play from, no matter where the raise is coming from. 
it's why it's so difficult to play from the small against the big blind as well, which is what I wanted to pick your brain on a bit today. Selfishly, for my own, <laughs> my own reasoning, <laughs> I want to get better at playing small against big blind. No, it is it is the it is the wild west, man, and like you, uh, it's again when I'm studying that kind of blind blind v blind situation, bro. It's just like the wild west. There's like you know, say you see about the flop, but say the imposition player raises. There's you're supposed to do a bunch of three betting as well in that situation, man. Um, you know, combo dependent and whatnot, but it it just gets crazy, man. Some of the some of the turn plays because you know equity is so kind of are leveled out in terms of like he can have a lot of strong hands i can have a lot of strong hands even though the fact i might have the nut, nut advantage he still has a lot of strong hands i need to take more passive lines man it's just um it can get messy it can get messy but at the same time it's um if you can get really good playing blind v blind man there's a lot of ev to be made against what kind of population might be doing incorrectly yeah that's fair enough i think a lot of things go out the window when we're watching hands from kings. Like I said, it's very hard to plug things into a solver or a calculator. True. When it's, it's a very unique environment, Alan, the Kings Resort in Rosvedov. Players from yeah. all different walks of life, all different skill levels, all under one roof, battling it out for the price of half a house in Ireland. <laughs> Only half. <laughs> but you might get two houses somewhere else. Jabba Solo is in the house. Nice to have you with us, Jabba. You better watch out for Han Solo in the chat later. He'll be trying to tra track you down and eat you for dinner. Christian, go to call on the button here. I think this is wise. He could have elected to jam if he was sub-20 bigs with this kind of extra f six bigs on top i think calling just becomes a better play and he might just want to call anyway considering the icm it was a cut off open from pez though so he definitely could have just decided to get a bit more aggro pre with the suit of variety it's a nice hand to just see a flop with though especially when he flops top pair here i'm gonna i'm gonna go for pez for um out out, out, and out winner I'm calling that now. Yeah, I was going to say he's showing, uh, showing time, time and time again yesterday that he's definitely one of the most accomplished players left in the field, mm -hmm. and he mm -hmm. is the chip leader now with 50 bigs. Like, if he keeps accumulating chips like this, he's going to have at least 20 big blinds more than anyone else at the table, and then it's, it's his world, and everyone has to live in it if he continues to accumulate chips the way he has been. Yeah, strongly agree, bro. I, it's just again, I haven't seen him take a. Bad decision. I mean, again, I know it's live. You're going to see whatever X amount of hands on, a, on, a, on an hourly basis. But as I said, man, we've done the coverage the last two days. Doing another coverage today. I haven't seen him get really out of line. I, not, not, not out of line, but out of line in a, in a, in a smart way, you know. Not like doing it like in, in, in a bad way at all. Just like really, really smart about it. Hold the phone here now, Alan, because look at this scallywag. Gianfranco raised... <laughs> Raising to 625 here with just queen four diamonds on ace eight five. It's sandwiched in between two players here, by the way. Oh, no, sorry. He's in the big blind. But still. He's going for it, bro. He's going for it. <laughs> oh, dear. I don't mind this from Gianfranco with the back doors. I just didn't expect to see it. He's really repping a strong range here. But again, like that man combo is like, think of all the other better hands you could do this with potentially. And queen four is just like, again, not, not, not going to be, not going to do it for me, basically. I expected to see his hand go in the muck. Now there is 2 million on the nose in this pot. So stack to pot ratio is less than one to one. Christian, you, you, know, you know what? Feel like you need... Go ahead. I was just going to say, you know, you know what's actually funny about this turn card? He actually should be barreling this quite a bit because it is very good for his kind of check raise range. You know, he has the 6-7, you know, stuff like 9-7 we really good bluff here too if he has that. Like, they're, they're the combos that make the most sense that you, if you ever check raise this flop. Like, stuff like the 3-4, 6-7, 9-7, 9-7, 9-7, 9-7, 9-7, 9-7, 9-7, 9-7, 9-7, 9-7, 9-7, 9-7
with the maybe, I don't know, some four six, nine seven, six seven, stuff like that. Blockers to the straight here in terms of like continuing betting on the turn here makes the most sense. So it kind of goes down to the flop strategy here, man, and how he's constructing his check raise range. And if he's not doing it with them sort of combos, man, then it's going to be very, very difficult to continue bluffing on turns and rivers. So it all stems from the kind of the way he constructs his range on the flop. So picking this queen four, man, is like, it doesn't really, um, it's just not one of those combos, man. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, he's got better hands to check raise it, is what you're saying. And if he does check raise it, I thought he was going to do something mad there on the river. It wouldn't, <laughs> what does surprise me? I mean, it might have surprised me for a moment, but it mm. is Jan Franco. Um, I think you have made a good point there. When he check raises the flop, he should continue on that turn, but he did kind of get his information. You have to remember the button has called with just 25 bigs to start the hand, so the range is capped, but it is going to contain a lot of ASEX. Mm -hmm. So perhaps then like Jan Franco just using that as a one and done situation, unless he picks up a, a diamond or better equity on the turn. Yeah, that's that's fair. Like that's the thing, man. Like I mean, it's one of those things, man. That like if you get if you if you raise and get called on a side board, man, I would tend to give up a lot on turns, um, simply because people just probably won't continue that much worse than an ace there most of the time, you know. The second pairs without back doors are probably going to be folded already. Third pairs, if that is a thing, are already going to be folded on the flop. So, yeah, most of the time when anyone continues after getting raised in the flop, um, I, I, I would strongly believe they have an ace the vast majority of the time, at, at, as a bare minimum, you know. Yeah, that's, that's good analysis there. Luca going to have to shove this one with eight bigs. I was thinking about that hand after the stream last night. That's... How much mm. we're getting engrossed in the poker. I yep. I just think he needs to jam that queen tree. We're not going to start talking about hands from last night while there's hands in the play, <laughs> but I think he knows himself probably when he went to bed. He probably struggled to sleep over that hand because it was. I don't want to call it a blunder, but he lost a lot of chips in that hand where I feel like when he constructed his range that way, he wants to be jamming for just under pot on the river. And as you said, if he's not jamming for pot, then at least 600, 700k of his 1.3 remaining stack so mm -hmm. about half stack at them at the least to get the job done there also i i don't think we talked about it in time because we just kept talking about the 200k lead he did on the river so basically if you weren't tuning in any five made a straight and he had would have had all the fives in his range um i think it would have been a sick call by the eights considering we blocked the straight but we don't block any fives so maybe he just has to let that one go it's a huge difference if he calls there and he's wrong yeah, agree, mate. Agree. And that's the thing, man. It's like these decisions in them spots are just like so, so close between one and the other option, you know. But um, again, like that, man, there's so many variables to take into account at this stage in the tournament or even at that stage of the tournament too where, you know, and we saw loads of passive plays as well, man, for that reason with the ticket bubble and all that jazz. So, um, yeah, it's just one of those things, man, where like, you know, either option is going to be super, super close when you take into account all the potential variables that are in play at the moment or, as I said, at that time. Yeah, now this is interesting as well because I was like, is Luca going to shove this one also? Um, he did just take down the blinds and antes. I love that he's using this in his min raise falling range. It looks so strong to the rest of the table. He can easily get away from it. He does have a blocker. So that's three good reasons for using this in your min raise falling range, even though we just have a tad over 10 bigs to start the hand. The Jeffrey's here for Christian though. And when someone wakes up behind us, yes, okay, we lost the two bigs that we just won in the previous hand, but it's not, it's not going to happen every time. This time, however, it is Christian with the Jeffrey. He's going to apply maximum pressure to Luca's stack, leverage the entire stack, and he's got to have a very strong range here, Alan, to be tree betting. This looks extremely strong to the rest of the table. Yeah, that's what I was going to say here, bro, because um, I was going to ask, like, we've seen the examples at the start of the stream for the coverage here today, that sevens min raised under the gun and, you know, whatever happened after that. I'm thinking is it better to have to, to min raise these ace nine because you're blocking the, the ace x kind of um, parts of the other player's range. So is it better to maybe do this with ace nine to min raise fold than it would be, we'll say, with the sevens to either open jam or just pure fold? Yeah, that's exactly what I was saying about the sevens. It's just like we want to be shoving our pairs and then using these blockerish type holdings 
off these these stack sizes because I think the pairs you're even flipping against ace king or ace queen whatever the case may be with these ace nines you can easily min raise fold them they're so easy to get away from the pairs are just going to play well in an all in situation yeah makes sense also if the blinds come along for the ride you're going to be faced with an overcard the majority of the time and you can get yourself in very tricky situations when you don't have many bets left when you have 10 bigs to start the hand it's not something i'm too used to just playing off these tiny stacks because mm. i've always been a rammer jammer but i have been doing some work <laughs> on it i've seen it loads and loads especially the top players uh online and live they're using these hands they're raising they're never out of a tournament. It, it allows for so much more playability with their stack sizes as well. They're, they're getting deeper. They're getting more scores. They're making more final tables. I'm seeing it time and time again, even especially on the, the King's stream the, the last 18 months or so. I'm watching what the best players are doing, and they are min-raising all sorts of hands from early position of sub-15 bigs. Yeah, love it, Matt. Love it. The game is changing. It's always changing, but I, I love where it's at at the moment. There's just so much, so much poetic stuff to talk about. There's just so much um, more of a flow to the game, and there's a lot more creativity than just ramming and jamming your 10, 12, 15 bigs. And you obviously can't be doing that <laughs> final table like this, because if you're called, mm -hmm. you're one foot out the door. Pretty much. But hey, there's always a surprise around the corner of Kings. Pez with the top pair here. I like his uh, open with the ace four from early position. A lot of players might just let this one go. Not Pez, especially when he's the chip leader. And I think this is a bit of a speculative peel here from Dennis. Yeah, from the small blind, I think so too. It's not the worst hand to see a flop with, but you have to remember, Pez is in position. He's a very accomplished, very aggressive player. You're not just going to realize your equity. He's not just going to check back, flop and turn and let you hit, hit on him. He's just going to apply maximum pressure to your stack. Yeah. Oh, Nook with the funny comment. Is there an English cast? Kidding. Love the accents. <laughs> yeah, I get called <laughs> Scottish on here. I'd rather get called Scottish than English, but I assure you, me and Alan are Irish as Irish can be. Through and through. Although I am 12.5% Italian, and there's definitely a bit of Scottish in me as well. So... I don't want to sound like an American who says they have a cousin from somewhere that's Irish and that makes them Irish, but yes, Irish true and true. And now, now I don't know about this uh, again, Alan, this is off eight and a half bigs. This is a, a very, this could be awesome. I just, I don't know. I think we tried this already. We lost. It's okay to do this off 10 or 12. I don't know about eight and a half. Yeah, I'm not too key. Like, the thing is, man, I'd be a little bit uh, unsure about this in general anyways in terms of what you have as a min-raise kind of fold range anyways. Again, like that, I can see this being a, being a thing, but yeah, man, when you're kind of like the sub-10, maybe eight, nine big blinds, I assume just having more or less uh, an open jamming range is probably the only play. You might argue, I suppose, and I mean, later formation is going to be more of a thing just to try and take down the blinds and antis. Yeah, I, 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 I'm not sure, bro. I'm not a big fan of it, to be honest, this min race here, but I am, again, you'd probably have a better idea give, than me. Well, I'm going to give Lucas some props here because he is a very accomplished player. He's over 200k in caches. We've seen him many times. Uh, he's very stoic, very composed, knows what he's doing, and he's obviously been running spots, and if he's doing this, there's obviously a reason for it. He thinks there's some equity to be had by min raising off this stack depth under the gun, and he gets it through. Pat on the back for Luca. Um, he obviously has run, run some sims or done something this morning. These guys never stop. So he probably thinks there's more equity there in min raising off the eight and a half bigs than just folding. But it is this risky thing, business.
it's hard for me to overrule what, what these players are doing. They've just come through. They play in Kings week in, week out. They've come through a field, a very tough field, with 543 entries. Nine players remain. Yes, the pressure is going to be on. Yes, it's massive money they're playing for. But these guys, they're coming to grind. They know what they have to do. So when I see someone do, like, do something like that, rather than criticizing it, I'll say, okay, well, that guy knows what he's doing, so maybe there's a reason for it. Yeah, that's the thing, man. Like, I mean, in general, like, when somebody does something that you would maybe not do yourself, the, the first thing that comes to mind, I would just, like, be like, why? I, I would need to know why. And if I hear the reason and it really kind of doesn't resonate with me, then that's fair enough. But at the same time, man, I love knowing, I love knowing as to, um, you know, why they're doing this certain play. And I think that Ace-9 off that stack size, man, is a very, very good example. Because between the both of us, we probably weren't the... Uh, in agreement it, it, with, with that play, but you know, it worked, bro. It worked. Yeah, that's why it's every day is a learning day. Kitty game down the street. Um, but if he, exactly. what I'd be thinking is if this doesn't work, I'm about to post my big blind and my big blind ante suddenly have five bigs. Where if I just fold this one, I post my, my big blind and my ante, it's not the end of the world. I still have six and a half. Because it really is, it's a full orbit before it comes back to you. So I think that would be the lowest ace we would see him do that with, though. I don't think he's doing that with the ace-6, the ace-7, and the ace-8 offsuit. Now, it could be wrong, but they're just really bad combinations to do it with. Maybe the ace-9 is the bottom. And if the ace-9 is the bottom and we're folding all the other ace-x combinations that are unsuited, then, I, then I, I'm all for it. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> It's called Texas. I think I wouldn't open ace five of spades here. I may be clubs. Oh, God. <laughs> Out! Out! Out. <laughs> but it's just, there, like I say, there's no cure for curiosity. So I'm curious to see what other opens Luca comes up with from early position because like we said earlier you see these players it's an individual sport but usually there's a whole team behind you when you're playing at the elite level of any sport in the world and poker is no different Yeah, Kaelin says, sport in quotation marks. Yeah, well, I don't know what else to call it. <laughs> the greatest competitive game known to man. That every player that loves the game spends their whole life trying to solve it. Good luck. Vittorio's turn to get him in, raise. Maybe not true, but he's going to attempt to do it with trees on the button. Let me ask, where is their team? Well, behind the scenes, you've got your coach helping you. Able of people, like-minded friends. Oh, do you learn anything? You learn from players who are better than you. You ask the hard hitting questions, you get the hard hitting answers. As the defense. Not a great board here for, for Vittorio. Let's go for a little sneak, sneak one through here, Alan. Jack on the river. One 
Lopez going for a blockerish type sizing here on the river. Just not wanting to face a larger bet. Occasionally will get called by worse. Although it is unlikely. And Vittorio is going to call and will win a really nice pot here considering he's only got a pair of trees on such a draw heavy board. A lot of hands that beat him. But he does make the call for 125 and that's a nice pickup. to hear a bit of Beatles for the ambiance playing in the background always great music playing in the background of Kings two Romanians at the top of the leaderboard we've got Lenny repping the Netherlands Gianfranco from Italy Martin from Slovakia Dennis from Germany Babo from Bosnia Vittorio from Italy and rounding out the table we have Luka Bohovic from Serbia. Gianfranco raising to 225 from early position with King Queen off suit. Pairs with the decision here with Ace Deuce of Diamonds. Looks like he is just going to call. Needs to be careful. Post flop here out of position. Christian going to come along for the ride with 5 Tree of Hearts. Flop is Ace 10 4. An action type board here. A piece for everyone. Straight draw for Gianfranco. Some backdoor equity for Christian and Pez with the top pair. Turn is the four of clubs. 775 in this pot now. Pez going to pot control again. Play this one cautiously. I expected to see Gianfranco take a stab at this, but perhaps against two players he just wanted to try realize his equity on the Turner River. Maybe he goes for a delayed C bet. We're about to find out. 'Once the flop has been checked through and it's checked to Checked by the small and the big on the turn. I think we want to be betting this one. Doesn't have to go too big. Goes for a little over quarter pot. 200k.
Great. Up top. Trips for Pez, hoping to get additional value. San Franco giving up on the double pair board, hoping to win with King High. Another pot goes to Pez. Tell you, Matt, strong, strong contender first. Strong, strong contender first. Yeah, he's got a very, he's got a, a likability about. Him. Remember, he's smiling at the dealer yesterday. He's very composed. Mm. I I predict he's had a lot of scores in his career thus far. Doesn't give much away. Now he did. We didn't see that much of him because he got moved to the outer table for a long time yesterday. We did see a variety of lineups. It's nice when you have one player at the table that who's who pulls away from the rest of the pack where you've got a, a wealth of knowledge on him. You've been watching him for the whole day. I think he was getting bounced around, um, but we did see some key hands from him. It's hard to remember them all, Alan. There was just so many. True. Very true. It's definitely a brain overload when there's just so many cards flying at your face for that many hours. Very easy to get the players mixed up, etc. But I... I it was funny when you were just about to say, I think he's the, the runaway bride. Um, I was about to say the same thing. <laughs> he's given that impression, bro, in fairness. He's definitely given that impression. And I always say I have to be unbiased, but of course, at the final table, you get to pick a player or two. I, I'd I, I predict Lenny's going to make a big run, unless, <laughs> unless he gets ran over like he did a few times yesterday. Uh, Gianfranco is a bit of a wild card. This guy could easily pull off a savage move and double up, or we could see him have a blunder. That's the way I am viewing him at the moment. And then you've got a couple of the other players who are just going to be very tight and solid, which they need to be. And then I'm interested to see what other tricks Luca has up his sleeves with this short stack. There's a lot going on here to get things underway. Sometimes the action can be very slow the first level or two, but that hasn't been the case. We've got Anis back in the chat who was with us for nearly 12 hours yesterday. Hello, Anis. Nice to have you back with us. If you were with us today or yesterday and the day before, how could you, how could you miss the final table? Exactly. Unless, unless you've got a missus who's going into labor or a wedding or something, this is where you need to be. It's funny, Alan, sometimes I have people coming on here talking about how they're in work watching on their phone or a different screen. <laughs> I was guilty of that myself in that time, bro. When I was working full time, I work on a nine to five. I was always, always on Twitch, man, or some sort of YouTube channel for like, you know, studying or just watching like kind of educational videos for poker, man, and all that stuff, like playing, explain, sweat session reviews, all that kind of thing, man. Um, <laughs> yeah, you got yeah, to you, you got to make the time pass. Mm -hmm. Enjoy the passage of time. Disco Duck is back in the house. He was with us for a lot of yesterday as well. It's great to see the regulars back in Kelvin as well. Paco says a wedding shouldn't have planned it for today to begin with. Well, yeah, you'd have a nice wedding with 160,000 euro, but don't forget you have to buy these 50% off certain projects, pro products in the merchandise store. So that is going to take a chunk of change. You need to buy as many hoodies as you can, some tracksuits, whatever the case may be, and then you've got 100 grand left for a wedding there. We'll get you a nice wedding these days. Or a third of a house in Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, it's about 50 grand a wedding these days, guys, in Ireland anyway. Why would you do that when you could just fly to the King's Resort and play till your heart's content? You gotta win that jack jackpot on the slot machine sooner or later. 
So we pick up the action here on the turn. Christian with pocket eights. Pez. I think his open is fine. Gianfranco getting a great price to see a flop with a suited king. I think that's okay as well. If it was unsuited, I would like to see it go in the muck. Pamu says he's working from home. Twitch on his laptop next to the work laptop. My man. <laughs> My man. <laughs> So Jean Franco with the best of it here, but he won't be too thrilled about this board. Did get checked through. And Christian catching up somehow on the river there. His eight's not looking too hot, but does get there unless he gets bluffed off his hand, will win this 750k pot. Two pair here for Jean Franco though. I just realized that. What's the play here, Alan? Just try get the showdown if we're Gianfranco, or do we go for what we think might be really thin value? I would personally just check this down, man. I just think when this is multi-way like this, um, yeah, just we'll be just checking back here. Yeah, we could mm, perhaps call a yeah. small sizing, but not one just to the pot. It's just hard to get called by worse, man, most of the time there. And the only justification here is Christian could argue to go for some tin value here. But, yeah, I think with this multi-way like that, man, even with the eight of hearts, given how it played out, I still wouldn't be too keen on value betting that river there. We'll just try and take down the pot and just move on to the next hand. Again, like that, man, it's always a better spot to kind of go. I'm all for going tin for value, but, you know, multi-way there, four to a flush, not many worse hands are going to call you for the most part. Maybe the four of hearts. Might have called, but outside of that, bro, hard to say. Yeah, I agree. I, I didn't know it, or, it looked like Jan Franco wanted to bet, though. Like, if he was going to bet, he could bet, like, two big blinds. Table Trawler says, hey, guys, and says, Alan F. Poker in the commentary, legend. A local there legend. Indeed. Quaggy Skaggy says ICM is huge. Holy smokes. Yeah. Some people say that ICM isn't real, but I don't know. Maybe they also believe in ghosts. <laughs> how do you know if your house how do you know if your house is haunted? It isn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know. That's how you know. <laughs> That's a Jimmy Carr joke. I, I'm not trademarking that as my own. Don't worry. <laughs> Copyright, man. Copyright. Hey, you're robbing other people's jokes. You can say a lot of things about me, but one thing you, you would have to say is I'm authentic and original. And your action. Franco. I think we can just play a pure limp strategy here with the 10-5 offsuit in the small. Uh, it's one of those hands, man, where I think either or. I think if you're going to limp there, you're going to... It really depends how aggressive the big blind might be in terms of, like, is it worth limping this? Am I, am I going to get raised that often that i just going to have to limp fold a bunch? But at the same time, man, if you're playing that limp, limping strategy from the small blind, I assume you're supposed to have some limp calls, limp raises, and also limp folds. So... I assume that 10-5, even though not a, be, not a good hand overall, but I do think limping there is probably an okay play. Because as I said, man, you're supposed to have some limp folds, you're supposed to have some limp calls and limp raises, so that 10-5 is probably going to be a limp fold for me. I mean, like, the thing is, man, you still have decent equity with 10-5 there, blind v blind, you know, uh, in terms of going post-flop. If, if it goes, like, you know, limp and then check back, you get to realize your equity on the flop, so not, not, too, not the worst uh, situation, I would say. I would prefer to muck... The 10 deuce, 10 tree, and 10 four yeah. off suit, and start yeah. start calling. Definitely want to be completing there with 10 six because we can make a straight. The 10 five, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm indifferent with it. 
like I said yesterday and the day before, the things that have a deuce of three or four or five as our kicker, we don't have to play them. They're not going to be great. We want to get our opponent to fold things like that in the big. But if it's a limping strategy, I'm all for just, just completing. If we're not going to get to see the flop that often, I to think we're just putting in 50k for no reason there. Just let it go. Mm -hmm. Blinds yeah, have just I gone up, by the way. 60k is now the small blind. 120k is the big blind with 120k running big blind anti. And Anna's saying it's better to raise than limp. Well, not in this ICM scenario. I don't think so because you're going to be bloating the pot. And if you're called, you're out of position. It's just not a great scenario to be in. Table Trawler says, don't do it, James Corden. I hate that fat pussy. No, I said it. I don't think he's good at comedy at all. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, you didn't hold back there, miss. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> he's such a thief, right? I don't like him at all. Brilliant. <laughs> I like Ricky Gervais, though. A compromise, yeah? I do, th I, I do think he's, he's getting a bit stale in his later years, but uh, he has he's awesome. You can't take take his, his genius qualities away from him. Yeah, I could talk comedy all day and DJs and stuff, but we're here for poker, so I better keep it to the poker. Tomorrow I'm going to do comedy, all right? Yeah. Not today. Yeah, I don't like joke stealers. No room at Kings for joke stealers. Get out. Out. <laughs> now, with fives here, I don't like using things like this in our min raise folding range off seven bigs or eight and a half. Oh, no, sorry. The blinds have gone up. So seven big blinds total. I think this is a good opportunity to shove all in. Interesting. Yeah. <sighs> He's obviously done some homework there, Alan, because he's scratching his head on whether he's supposed to shove or not. Um, I don't think we get much better opportunities. We're clearly the short stack of the table. Blinds and anties are about to hit us, and for me, that's a mistake. Yeah, I can see that, Mitch. I can see that as well. I, I, I think with them pocket pairs, man, like, especially off that stack size, man, if you just add in an extra big blind or two to your stack, they're like, that's a 20 to 25% increase, man. Like, that's, that's quite a bit. That's quite a bit. I could get behind falling deuces or trees maybe in that spot. I think fours and fives, we got it. Like, yeah. I don't know. If, if we're able to fold deuces, trees and fours, then we have to start shoving fives and sixes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like the idea of fives being the, 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 the kind of bottom of the, of, the, of the jamming range there. I think that's fair. I don't know, man. It's close as well. It's, 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 again, this, this situation is going to be always so close, man. Well, it's, it's just it's seven big blinds and we're about to post two and then mm. another half a big blind in our small. Yes, we have another orbit then. Fives. Fives is... is if, if it's the bottom pair, then fives has to be a shove. I, I can get behind fold and deuce trees and fours. I'm standing with that for the moment. Mm -hmm. That's fair. There'd be some people disagreeing in the chat, but I, I think the superior play is the jam there, overfolding. Nook says, "Is Mike Matisau book says to shut?" Well, don't be reading Mike <laughs> Matisau's book. <laughs> the fact that he even has a book, man, is just comical. But yeah, times have changed. Yeah, times have changed. I don't want to. I don't want to compare him to a. Uh, to James Corden, but if, if the shoe fits, wear it. If I got it fits, huh? <laughs> <laughs> he did, um, he did, it does have, that book is meant to be great though, Check Raising the Devil, but, um, I don't want to touch on this too much, but isn't it, we're in an era where people are going to be writing the last books that are ever written, because pretty soon AI 
be able to write a better book for you than a human can. So it's kind of interesting much... that if you're reading, yeah. No, I was going to say, I don't know how much you've been using, uh, maybe chat GPT or anything like that in general, bro, but man, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a crazy, crazy piece of, uh, piece of uh, equipment to use. Like any of the social media posts that I do or anything like that on Instagram for, for the stream or anything like that, man. AI is just like generating all that kind of text. Like, and that's only like a, a very, very basic thing that it can do. Um, the, la the layers of, of, of the complexity that AI can do, man, just chat, chat, chat GPT alone. And it's only going to get better too, man. Like it's just, for example, I need to do um, some presentation for the microstakes team in Metagame on Thursday, man. And just researching information like that, man, inputting it into a presentation or a PowerPoint is just like it's literally a couple of clicks of a button. It just does all the work for you, man. It's insane. It just saves so much time is the point I'm trying to get across here. Yeah, it's incredible. And it's just, it's just going to get better. Mm -hmm. There's the AI... One of the creators of ChatGPT was just on the Joe Rogan, so that's the next podcast I'm going to listen to. But I've got some off time. Downtime, as they call it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Apocalypse makes a good point, though. AI will never be good as the human mind. Not, it's going to take a long time for it to be up to scratch for, like, commentating on poker hands or playing poker hands the way a human can there's just too many variables which is great to see that if you do play poker a lot then you're in an industry that's safe for now especially in the live realm i don't want to be commenting on online whatever happens there happens hmm. i heard a, an interesting world. quote that it's like uh what is this a ai won't replace you a person using ai will it's a good one it's that, that, that's been thrown around a lot lately the last couple of months, which I think is quite valid, especially right now when it's still kind of in um, not, not, not at its most superior stage of development, AI. So it's kind of true, man. It, it's like it won't replace you, but a person using it will. One of my favorite quotes, that's a good one as well, but it's like humans are the, the sex organs of the machine world. So <laughs> we're just going to get replaced eventually. <laughs> True. I mean, it, it will. I, I, I think, again, I don't want to be quoting Elon Musk, but I did see a brief interview where he was saying, like, you know, uh, throughout evolution of time, man, like, you know, whatever, there's always been, like, one species eventually dies out, you know, so maybe he wasn't exactly painting the picture of that in terms of um, that AI is going to kill all human race, but it definitely will... Um, how can I put it? It'll, it'll decrease the population of the human race, man, because there just won't be any need for certain people in certain jobs, certain industries, because automation from AI which can just do all that work, man, you know? So I'll be interested to see what way it pans out over the next 50 to 100 years. I won't be around to see it, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's uh, interesting times, for sure, in them kind of realms. Just have to stay on top of things. Apocalypse asked me, what, am I, what on earth am I reading? I'm attempting to read Poker Hands for your viewing pleasure, Apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, reading a book called Stolen Focus, how we are losing our life to our phones. Kind of ties in with what we were just talking about. But I don't mind having interesting conversations. we got to shove there through from the, the King Jack. I'll just, you won't ever hear me talking about religion or politics on this channel. Everything else is fair game. To a point. But it's... Uh, I actually think it's good that we touched on the AI thing because it is going to change the industry that is poker for the foreseeable. I mean, look at the technologies that's behind these solvers. And this so is Dennis thing, went for a shove... Sorry, I was just going to say he went for a shove for about 23 big blinds on the button, which I actually like because he doesn't want to get rejammed on. And them, those King Jack type holdings, King 10 suits on him, they're going to just play better as a rip because you're going to have so much equity when you're called. So you don't want to really want to be raised folding. Now, it did seem like a lot of blinds to shove, but once we're taking down the blinds and antis, he's totally fine. Yeah, I like it. What were you saying there, Alan? I was just going to mention the AI situation again, man, with um, the integration with GTO Wizard there the last, I don't know, maybe 
two or three months ago they started doing it and they're obviously introduced this fair play kind of um, situation as well, man, to potentially um, just cut out any potential cheating by using the AI. So I think like it's pretty swift, man. I haven't used the, uh, the Sims kind of situation with AI with GTO Wizards as of yet, but um, I saw videos of it, bro, and it's actually insane that like, you know, you could have the most complex Sim with like a thousand sizes, maybe a bit too far, but we'll say like 10 sizes for each street. Like this AI man just like automatically narrows down the optimal sizing, picks that size for each street, all in the space of like 10 seconds. Like cra cra yeah. crazy, 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 crazy. But the thing is now, I think with AI, with the GTO wizard from what they announced with the fair play situation, is that you cannot, there has to be a certain X amount of time in between each, uh, let's we'll say a sim that you want to solve. So if you do one sim, you can't do another one for X amount of time and then so on and so forth to cut out that kind of potential, you know, RTA kind of uh, situation in game. Yeah, that, that's fascinating stuff. There's a lot of terminology to take in there. Mm -hmm, you better be mm -hmm. writing this down, folks. Um, someone said that it wasn't 23 big blinds because the small blind, big blind were short. Yeah, I'll be sorry. I'll be conscious of that. Uh, my point still st stands the same. So around that 15 to 20 big blind zone, I don't know how much we want to be raised folding them kind of combos. We just want to be ripping if that is the effective stack. Obviously, that will change as we get past 20 bigs. So thank you for pointing that out tom pat says he loves the commentary feels like a joe rogan podcast but you see i have a co-host co so i have someone i'm bouncing ideas off and talking with instead of just talking to the chat which is great <laughs> but, uh, thank you for your comment asking are any irish players regularly taking trips to kings these days not really with the irish poker tour taking off around the country week in week out Fint and gavin doing a fantastic job there locking the irish players into the irish community who would have thunk it Fair play to him. Now, Pez defending in the big blind with a standard Queen Jack off suit here, Vittorio with the C bet with top pair on the button, 10 kicker. And Pez just going to be forced to let this one go. And Caelan said he heard, he heard Lenny is growing out his hair so one day he can fulfill his destiny and become our Lord and Savior. <laughs> Best of luck to Lenny. Lenny's been quiet so far, as has a few of the middling stacks. Vittorio with a mandatory open here in the cutoff. Ace Jack off suit. Ivan is in the house, says, Was that? Was that, Ivan? Nice to have you with us. Come on in, the water's lovely. You do a pretty good Aussie accent, mate. <laughs> Thanks. If I start doing impressions on here, Alan, I'll have about 10 different ones and then no one will know it when I'm serious anymore and <laughs> it'll become like a form of Tourette's and I'll be getting complaints left, right and center. I'm a serious man. Got to take this so seriously. But it is great to um, have some light-hearted humor on here also. You need it. The slot machine was won yesterday, yes, for 18k. And it was uh, epic timing because it was when a bluff got taken down. It was brilliant. And we heard the classical music in the background. That was epic, to be fair. <laughs> I believe that person who won that was last seen in Berlin. Gone missing. 
MIA. couldn't handle all the excitement <laughs> on a Monday night as well. It was a good Aye. start to your week. Oh, I'm hungover. I'll play the slot machines. Boom. 18 grand. People are expecting non-stop action because it's a final table and they're playing for so much money. But that's the whole reason it's going to be the opposite of what you're looking for. It's going to be, mm -hmm. I'm not going to call it te tedious, it's super exciting stuff. But it's a, it's a war of attrition. There's a, a whole procedure going on here. No one wants to get eliminated before another player. There are such significant pay jumps. So if you're new to watching that kind of situation, that is why you're going to see... A slow paced game it doesn't mean you won't have confrontations but players don't want to have these huge pots against each other and it's a unique final table in that there's no real runaway bride at the moment there is a lot of middling stacks there's one or two short stacks and there's a couple of big stacks so when that happens people have to be very cautious with every pot and every chip that they put across that line True. Well said. Like we see how much <laughs> it's evening out here. You got Pez, the two Romanians at the top, and then Vittorio just ten big blinds behind, and then Dennis, Martin, and Lenny all between twenty and thirty bigs. So this is anybody's game. And Babo and Luca with a bit of work to do, especially Luca playing a mere five big blinds now. Quaggy Skaggy making a very good point there, saying if a jump to 115 to 160 is a difference of five years' work in Rotterdam. There you go. Five years' wages could be blundered by making a bad decision. And players will have had huge scores, but this is an opportunity to have probably one of the biggest of most of these players' remaining lives. And... It's a huge moment, whether they've won this kind of money before or not. It's massive. And all the players remaining are so competitive. They want that ring and the title. It's not just about the money, as we talked about in depth yesterday and the day before. No skill says his average the average income in his country is twenty three k a year. Well, if you make thirty four thousand dollars or more, then you are in the top one percent of the incomes in the whole entire world. So try to remember that when next time there's no coffee downstairs or you stub your toe off a wall or whatever the case may be. <laughs> We've got it good. Table caller is saying farewell to you, you, Alan, and myself. Goodbye, table caller. Tutorial betting 125 here. King Queen. San Franco. Light enough peel, in my, in my opinion. We'll catch a piece of it. You like calling here, pre Alan? You do now. I do now, yeah. Um, it's kind of the same situation from previous examples, Dan, where it's like a min open, these offsuit kind of king X are kind of close. I probably will still defend pre because we're not exactly that shallow, so I don't really mind it. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't be defending any bigger than, you know, in, you know first a min open would say as an example. Yeah, that's fair. I would way prefer this if it was suited, but he has turned two pair... And he's just going to be trying to find a way to get all the money in, playing just 16 bigs behind. He does have to just check call, though. River is the eight, and now... I guess he just has to check again, or... The lead will be suspicious there. It would look very strong.
Nice turn card there for Gianfranco, now playing close to 3 million. Now we've seen Babo Minrays fold or Minrays get it through, win a pot with 11 bigs earlier. Now he's got 10 with the exact same hand, sevens. For me, Alan, I just like shoving this one. It's really interesting to see him shove this one, but earlier, one of the first hands of the FT decided to Minrays. Yeah, maybe realized he just maybe might have made a mistake potentially or realized when he made the fall that he might have just should have just went all in obviously has a change of heart here now man but again like that i'm sure we're both in agreement that probably jamming this like this is going to be the best play or the most optimal play i'd say lenny with a bit of a decision but ace 10 suited goes in the muck too much of a stack and the all-in coming from under the gun plus one plus they have to be super, super tight right now because Luca is playing five bigs and the blinds are about to hit him. And that is probably why we see Babo shoving that time. So Luca, Luca needing to pick up a hand here. He's only got a couple of... More hands before the blinds and antis hit him, and then he's going to be not pot committed, but not far from it. He's going to be pot committed with a lot of hands in the big blind. Fold around to the blinds. Martin going to complete with Queen Tree of Hearts. Flopping trips here with two black ladies on Queen Queen Jack. Piece of it for Dennis. Quickly going check, check. Turn is the seven of clubs. Two flush draws on board now. I think it's time for Martin to try extract some value from those draws. Perhaps a jack that Dennis checked back which we can clearly see is the case on this occasion. Look at this. Mm. Another, another <laughs> seven. It's not amazing for Dennis, but he will feel like he is going to have the best hand here the majority of the time, blind v. blind. I mean, it's a full house, Alan. Indeed, Miss. It is a full house. With, with the jack. Mm. 
does lose to any queen though, so I don't see him wanting to put too much money in. But he will feel like he's caught up here the majority of the time. But what's Martin would be forced to bet a draw here also. And looks like he went for half a million bet, half a million call. That's that hand pretty much self-explanatory. Nothing either player is going to do too differently there. Dennis with just a call coming turn seven. Yeah, what can he do is what Dennis says exactly. Never fallen, to be fair. Never, ever fallen there. It's just a matter of like trying to minimize the amount he can lose there. So that's going to be on the guy that has the queen in terms of whatever size he decides to use, bro. But yeah, probably never fallen there. He's so many missed draws there, and he could even have just a random bluff that's trying to get maybe even a Jack X type hand to fold, although that might be a bit ambitious. Anyways, it doesn't matter. We're going to be breaking down it. Like, it just has so many draws that he has to bet. Mm hmm. And I like the sizing there as well, Alan. Half a million getting close to max value. I'm a fan of it too. Babo getting a walk. With a strong hand in the ace jack off suit. Luca not able to shove the 7 6 off suit. Rates to have a better hand to commit himself with in the big blind. Seven six suited would be the lowest there for chip, maybe even six five suited into a full table with four bigs, and that's not taking ICM into consideration. So we would have to be a little bit tighter, even though we are the shortest stack. Would you shove the six seven if it was suited there in Lucas' shoes, Alan? I think so with four bigs, right? Yeah, I'm gonna play as well. I mean, even if it gets called. I mean, other than getting called from an overpair, like, you know, set, whatever, sevens plus, we'll say, or sixes plus, it's going to be in not, like, the worst shape against most hands, man. Um, and it has decent equity, so, yeah. I mean, for four bigs, bro, when you might still have some fold equity. Again, the only thing I'm probably a little bit concerned about is there's a bunch of players to get through, but at the same time, bro, with four bigs, with that sort of hand, I don't know how, much, I, I don't know how many better hands you can wait for, basically. Again, that would probably be the bottom because we don't want to have 5-6 mm. suit because we want people to fold the 5 combinations in their hand or the combinations that contain a 5 that's off suit or whatever the case may be. And we have a limited amount of fold equity, especially shoving into a full table. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A5 deuces the flop. Really nice flop here for Dennis. Not a fan of this open, by the way, from Gianfranco. I'm getting the impression that um, 
John Franco really doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting the impression he came to win this event and even though he lost a chunk of chips one of the last hands of last night, it would have been flying high after that bluff. The adrenaline mm -hmm. pumping through you after getting that one through. Yeah. It took me two or three hours to get asleep last night. I We finished it. Irish time was about 20 past two, I think. I watched my Kill Tony comedy show was live every... Monday night so that brought me up to 4 a.m. and I still couldn't get asleep for another hour after that so imagine what it was like for the players trying to get asleep yeah look man I mean for me personally like even when I do this commentary gig or whatever with yourself or whatever the situation may be my brain is like super super active man it's kind of the same thing when I I don't know finish up a stream bro where I might finish up at 10 p.m. maybe plan to go to bed at like 12 or something like that and uh, even at 12 bro you know, two hours after finishing up, I'm still, brain is still like, you know, really, really active. So for sure, understand, for sure, understand the, uh, the length of time it takes to get to sleep after, you know, basically doing comms for like 12 hours yesterday, man. I mean, what do you expect to happen really? <laughs> yeah. So I'm just trying to put it in perspective, like how long it must have took someone like John Franco to get asleep. Well, every player, but I'm just singling him out because he's involved in that and he was the one that mm -hmm. ran the biggest bluff yesterday. Yeah, it was and you're a good just one, going, you're, go, you're going to bed at, and all these hands are whir whirling through your head like someone's pressed play on a washing machine. And it's just, oh, I should have <laughs> bet smaller here. I should have bet bigger there. And then the opposite of that is, oh, I'm going to win everything tomorrow. I got that bluff through. It's like, it's... It's like you've given yourself bipolar sometimes. <laughs> true, true. And Gianfranco betting here. I don't mind a C bet because he's got some back doors and he might just get this one through the majority of the time, but a little bit spewy there. He's lost four big blinds or so that he didn't need to lose. And as for Dennis, really nice flop there. Takes that one down. Mm -hmm. Great hand to play for it all. Top pair and a flush draw. And ask for much more with eight tennis spades there. Now comes the moment for Luca. He's going to be posting his big blind, his big blind ante, and he's going to have two big blinds behind. So let's see what happens here. Lucas like, anyone for a walk? <laughs> oh wow, it's around to the small blind. Sticks him in. Oh my god, Luca waking up with pocket tens here. What a moment for Luca. Lol. Wow. <laughs> Just shy of a million in this pot. This is a nice hand to get Luca back in contention. Yes, he'll have still have less than 10 bigs, but savage to wake up with a hand as strong as pocket tens here with just four bigs total. It's never easy though, Vittorio, with some outs here now in the form of a straight draw. He could also hit a Jeffrey. Oh, this way. Turn is the six of spades. What a card here for Luca. 91% equity now to double up as we hit the river. Oh, oh my god! Oh wow! <laughs> the Jeffrey Dahmer hitting on the river there, eliminating Luka Bohovic in ninth place. And he had every other card covered. Sick! It's unfortunate. To say the least, Alan, that is very unfortunate. What a player. Great to commentate on his action mm -hmm. once again. 
Commiserations and, con and congratulations. He will take home 15,775 euro for his efforts and a 10 grand ticket to the World Series of Poker Europe main event later on this year. Uh, my last time. hand uh, was very short one. There was nothing to do. Like the small blind pushed and I had uh, four, four and a half babies total. So I found the premium for that spot, pocket tens, snap call and uh, yeah. Uh, unlucky run out, uh, like uh, he hits the jack on the river, but that's poker, what can you do? In the main event, uh, pretty pretty nice one. I mean, uh, I was unlucky at the start. I had five or six bullets plus five satellite tickets. So I maxed Slate Rage in the last level with 20 BBs and uh, then I hit the good run and I played good. And uh, the last three days were interesting and uh, we get to the final table. Was had a nice stack during the all day three. Got to the FT shortest. Didn't pick up any hand. And uh, yeah, how would I prepare? Like uh, like I usually do. Like uh, when I get my uh, my home, I play online and I uh, study a bunch. And uh, probably gonna take a week of rest before coming here just to to feel fresh and uh, hope for the best. He seems like a really nice guy, man. I was about to say, now viewers at home, there is a lot to be learned from that 20, 30 second clip there. There was so much mm -hmm. knowledge. It shows how hard they, they tried. He had five satellite tickets, but still fired five or six bullets. So it shows you can have right. a 16 grand pay jump there. Now, he did get the 10 grand ticket, so that is worth a lot. Worth its weight in gold, especially if you get a deep run or even a min cash. But... He, I knew it, Alan. He's going straight home. He's going to start studying and he's going to take a week to rest. That is a man to learn from. Yeah, and that's exactly why I kind of said that I said it was a nice guy, man. Like, it's just like what I meant really was what a, what a probably really organized professional um, in terms of his perspective on, on how to prep, how to warm up, how to probably even warm down as well after this kind of three, four and ten stays, which... Um, as I said, man, kind of the, what the players must be feeling with the adrenaline, the dopamine hits, all that kind of stuff, man. To wind down after this last three or four days, bro, you will need some time to recoup. So, again, like that, man, that's just the impression I got from Luca there. Like, he's just very, very efficient, prolific player, I'd say, no doubt. Yeah, and I was, about, I was actually just about to say the point that Neutral made. He didn't whine about the bad beat in the slightest. Well, that's kind of standard stuff at a professional level, but so, some guys mm -hmm. just can't take it too well. That is the spirit. Yeah. What a horrible river for him, has to be said. Yeah, it's like, I mean, when you wake up with like tens there with four and a half big blinds, bro, I mean, like, what more do you really want there? Uh, again, like, once it goes all in there, bro, it's just like out of your control. Just let the cards fall as they may. But yeah, obviously a very, very unfortunate river for Luca there. You're just so excited when you see that because you could wake mm -hmm. up with garbage in the big blind. You wake up with two tens, you're yes, woohoo. Here we go. Um, someone asking, it had to be an on spade. Yeah, the river had to be an on spade. Through, through, through. And Gianfranco here, raising to 250 with a real hand. Big slickens. So that means eight players remaining now, all guaranteed just shy of 20,000 euro is the current payout. 19,500 euro. So about a 325 here from Christian.
This, uh, this, this uh, turn card, well, the, the board is going to smack the perceived big blinds defending range more so than the opening range of Gianfranco from early position. So that's why we're seeing him bet here on the turn, Alan, I presume. Plus yeah, he I does agree. have a piece of it. Jan Franco with a mandatory turn call, I think, with the straight draw and the two overs. Plus, he could just have the best hand with Ace King. Check it, check it. And now it's Christian here, Alan, that has five and a half million. Sneaky Assassin has took the chip lead, I believe. Always good when you can win with King 3 against Ace King. Martin Min raising with Ace Jack. Takes down the blinds and antis. Vittorio in the hijack here with Ace Queen of Hearts, 28 bigs. Nine raise, 250. Raises 250. And Christian on the button here with Queen 10 of Clubs. All options on the table here for Christian. I think I prefer just calling in position the most. Tree betting this hand also totally fine. But with significant ICM considerations. Because he has the chip lead, he might just want to tree bet this one. And I totally understand that. But also totally fine to just see a flop on the button. Does go for a raise. Taking initiative in the hand. It's going to be a some bad news here, bro. Yeah, what do you think here? Do you just 4-bet jam here? If you're Vittorio, it plays so nice as a 4-bet jam. We are out of position. We can see a flop here because it's suited if we want which would you be leaning towards? 
I think the four bet jam is probably the best play here. I don't see any Martin call in here. Um, again, like that, man, if it was kind of more ICM consideration here, I just think you're going to get a bunch of folds here, man. But he does decide to call. Interesting. Yeah, man. It's the ICM. They're just they're still another short stack. I don't think mm. that that's a, a good enough reason to not jam, especially when it's the chip leader. Peace. And this is, yeah, this is an interesting one for Christian to continue on. He's got a lot of backdoor equity. He's got position, the betting lead. All the reasons for a bet. He might want to check back for pot control, but I think a small bet is probably better here. For that deny, the equity denial reasons. It does make me sad though, Alan, if you get jammed on here. It's like, no, you have to fold with having a lot of backdoor equity. Yeah, so the thing is, being out of position here, bro, as well, like, you want to be able to realize your equity fully by the river. So I can't imagine he's going to check call here. But again, I, I, I was wrong pre flop. I could be wrong here again. But at the same time, bro, check call in here, not improving on the turn. It's going to be a, a lot worse situation having to face another. Because we are, we are going to face a bet here a decent amount of time on the turn, um, I would think. I think with two overs and enough flush draw, what more do we want here with 22 bigs behind? I'd be not licking my chops and loving life, but I'm happy enough to get my chips in mm. here. There's 2.2 million in the pot. We only have 2.7 million behind. Uh, he's bet 550. It's just going to play better as a jam. Yeah, I agree. There's just too many advantages here to jamming over getting bombed off our hand if we miss max outs here. Not max outs, but that, a lot of outs. And he ace and he queen yeah, and he that, heart. That would, that would be my issue on the turn, man. That's why I'm saying, like, it's just when you're out of position. In, in position, I don't mind the flat here. Um, but out of position, man, yes. Yeah, like, if you check call here and then face another bet on the turn unimproved, you're just going to... Again, you probably still might have to call, but it just gets messy, man. It just gets messy. You know, you might get a bad price in the turn here, even though you still have a bunch of equity, and it's just like you feel like you're in no man's land as well, which is not ideal also. So I definitely just prefer the rip on the flop. In saying that, I still prefer the um, four-bet pre-flop, but obviously with that flop, we ain't going anywhere. Look at how much that pot just changes things. He's now tied for chip lead and Christian just seven bigs behind and Martin just two bigs behind this is such a fun final table to commentate on Dennis with 27 and then Lenny with 21 and then Gianfranco and Babo the only two players remaining with eighth left under 20 bigs Rob with a very funny comment there all in for tournament life on final table with a flush draw wow let's see if he's even around in five years with comments like that let's see if you're still around in five minutes oof <laughs> Ban hammer. I will give him a chance. It's fantastic, though. You, I'm not getting back into technology and AI, but like, if you're just learning the game, huh. when we were learning, we didn't have all these things. You just go onto Twitch and see these players playing for 160,000 euro, listening to two commentators. These really int intricate, detailed spots, and there's so much to be gained and learned from. Like, yes, it's really nice. I'd be asking myself why that is a shove on the flop instead of questioning it and saying just with a flush draw when you do the maths and you do your homework you realize you're just printing way more in that particular spot than calling mm -hmm. someone does need to check if lenny's okay lenny's just chilling lenny is the dude he's happy out for now Looks to still be breeding anyway. Still breeding and believing. So we are going to go on a break after one more hand. Such a fun first two hours of this final table. So much more action. Trilling action in store for you fans out there.
It is nice with that ace queen of hearts as well. I don't. I would prefer to just jam pre, but he did get the additional value of 550k from the C bet. Lenny is awake. Hello, Lenny. Ace King of Clubs. <laughs> the shark in the water has awoken. Those teeth look dangerous. Not venom to kill 10 blokes his size. He's going to raise to 245. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear is right. <laughs> Someone get out. I'm going to have to get a bell to start doing into the mic, but I'll get kicked off permanently if I start doing that. But this is action alert. Martin with the two ladies, Lenny with the ace king of clubs. I predict a classic race is in store. Don't see this one going any other way. It's funny because people were crying out for Lenny to play a hand and... <laughs> Asking you shall receive eventually. Yeah, be careful what you wish for. Lenny is going to have about five million chips, or he'll be the next to do an interview. Martin has Lenny covered, and he would become our table captain if he's to win this fifth. This is a huge flip for this tournament. Fact. And a massive moment in both of these players' poker career. And he's just going to think about this for a moment before shoving. I mean, this is just always going in, Dan. Is there ever a possibility to any flats here, or is there ever any benefit to it? I, I assume the suited combos might flat sometimes for some form of deception, but man, no. this just has no. to be uh, just going like it has to go in, yeah. Yeah. Not, not this time. Mm -hmm. It's all in and call, folks. Biggest pot of this final table so far. 5.2 million in the middle, up for grabs. Huge money on the line. How much equity this is worth, we'll find out later. <laughs> but it's a lot. Six three three is the flop. One club in it for Lenny. It's a 70-30 in Martin's favor as we hit the turn. Turn is the seven of diamonds. Lenny needing an ace or a king on the river. He's going to be eliminated in eighth place. It doesn't arrive. G G to the scrappy underdog Lenny came behind many times yesterday it wasn't to be at this final table he should be delighted with that result and I'm sure we will see Lenny again soon and a massive massive takedown there for the pocket queens that's going to bring us to our first break looks like Lenny is going to do a short interview we'll be right back hold on to your seats hold tight this FT is now seven-handed and we'll see you all back here in a few moments
think it was yesterday it was like less uh, 16 people I believe I had tens under the gun five people at the table I opened big blind gems for 26 blinds like nines I'm always folding decks I'm always calling and tens is like if the player is good enough probably should go for it so I took it, it was against Ace Queen, we had a flip and I won the flip and then after I had a good stack. So that was like the best, the best. yeah, the nicer hand. Uh, it's actually funny because I took some break from online poker, I'm studying a lot now and traveling around. So next week I will mostly focus on like, yeah, learn uh, more studying poker, like getting ranges in there and yeah. I mean, I'm already studying quite a lot for live poker, so I'm, I think I'm ready for it, but I, I will definitely prepare myself because it's it's gonna be the biggest buy I ever played, so it's fun to gonna play it. Fun. Sweaty turn guard. Open, looking for a six, eight, ten, or a king to eliminate Timothy Adams, and it's the king of hearts on the river. One of the best players in the world, Timothy Adams, fresh off of his 100k victory here just a couple of days ago, comes up short. Embrace it, event number 11, fifth place for 159,000 euros. Appreciate it, chat. Really do. You guys have been incredibly kind throughout this series. Glad you're all enjoying the coverage. Once again, if you haven't already, please do hit that like button. Before I bust, will you, will you tell me if I was dead there? Really I helps us spread the word and reach a wider audience. As Nikki B says, yeah, before I bust, will you please uh, give me that info? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sean Deeb, gonna look him up. 7 5 of diamonds. Domination Nation. Huh? Domination Nation. Spot. Well, you sucked out on me in the same spot earlier, so I hope I have revenge him. I'll tell you another day. No, I can't tell you when I'm playing with open, right? And Nikki P. I feel like no matter what, I'm, I'm just dead anyway. I don't know if I'm supposed to call. Hands deep in rough shape. 4.4 in the middle. Oh no. 5 4 3. Deep out flopping Nikki P. 6 would chop it. A deuce or an ace would win it for Nick Petrangelo. One to come. Eight clubs on the turn. Changes nothing. Hand 126 here. Will we be down to three? River card is the eight of hearts. And Deeb eliminates Nick Petrangelo in fourth place. 220,000 euros for his efforts one of the best players in the world upswing coach and now up to over 27 million in total live earnings sean deeb two away they come to you for advice now How the from concerned? joining How the six-time <laughs> bracelet <laughs> winners club Ice Cold Spear says it's hard to kill Dee, but not gonna lie, yes, my boy get it done. And Paul Flat getting right back on the horse. Two very playable hands back to back. Kardashians in the hole for him. Twenty big blinds in the chip lead. Eight hundred. Comes with the min this time. Ivanuk gets out of the way. Oh wow. Oh. It's a cruel game sometimes. It really it is. is. This entire final table has just been so cruel. Ben Heath came in one of nine, out in seventh, I believe. Out in sixth, rather. Colin. Julian Martini announces himself, and Paul Barr just gets the click call with the Cowboys. Going to win this four out of five times, and he's going to have a huge chip lead. 
Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> Queen, Jack, 10. Middle set for the Frenchman, but he's not out of dodge yet. Ace or a nine would give Paul a straight. King would give him a bigger set. And obviously running spades also working for him. Wow. Ace, King, nine, Oh, it could be down to two million. Six at game. Really unfortunate for him. Unless he can find a miracle river. Ace nine or king oh, needed. Nine ball corner pocket. And the Triton <laughs> boss man extends his arm as a token of GG's to Julian Martini. Fifth place. Get some GG's in the chat for a true legend Thank of you. the game 107k and now the triton head huncho chip leader with four left looking for brace at number one absolutely really unfortunate run out is the hope that kills you as we say but a valiant effort from martini out in fourth place V blind Sam Grafton five cards away from being up to eight million in chips and number 99 of this final table are you ready for me no you're too professional you're too yeah no I want to I want to see a seven right in the door too much Nikki P being honest and he wants to see a seven right in the door if Squiddy can hold here it's going to have over 30 big blinds, needs to fade a seven. And now needs to fade a six or a jack. Seven would give him the straight. Adam's going from three to seven outs. <laughs> Ten on the turn. Now giving Adam some chop outs. Queen of Spades on the river. And Sam Grafton, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, gambling around. Now up to eight million in chips, looking for his first bracelet. Okay, Guys, so we are at the button with nice ace jack of clubs, playing 510 no limit hold'em with around 1200 behind. High jack opens for 30. Cut off folds. I need you guys to write into chat what would you do differently on the river? And we decide to 3 bet to 100. Small blind folds. Big blind folds. An original razor decides to flat our 3 bet. We go heads up to the flop, which is king of clubs, four of clubs, and two of hearts. Opponent checks to us. We flopped a nuts flush draw with one over. I think we need to see bet for 75. Opponent quickly calls. I think the opponent could have pair of kings. Turn is jack of hearts, which is giving us second pair. Opponent checks again. I think we need to bet bigger, so I go for 210. We need our opponent to fold all draws and pairs weaker than kings. Opponent calls. And the river is queen of clubs, so we have the nuts, guys. Opponent checks. And now we have a decision, bet small for value or bet big trying to polarize our bet. Please help me decide in the chat type 1 for betting third of the pot or type 2 for betting 55% of the pot or type 3 for overbet shove. I decided to go all in for crazy overbet. At this point, I am afraid that the opponent might know exactly where we are. Opponent fold and show us top two pair. Next time I need to bet smaller. Aya. <laughs> Hmm. 
What's up? Good morning. Are you ready for today? Yeah. See you at Kings. And we are right back. Seven players remaining now. Hand 40, the final table of this main circuit event. Live from the King's Resort in Rosvedov. Blinds have just gone up. Small blind is now 80k. Big blind is 160k with 160k running big blind ante. That's 80, 160, 160. Oreo opening up the action here to 325 ace club from under the gun. It's interesting to see what might happen this hand man. I don't know if this is ever considered a flat call from the small blind here. Not too sure from the under the gun range, but can see some merits to it. You know what? I think it might be the best option. I don't really want to be tree betting here. 
jamming mm. is a bit too much, especially against an under the gun open. We could just fold, but I think there is the most merit in calling off this stack depth. Plus, mm -hmm. it looks very strong from the small brand. Maybe just a bit too too good of a hand to fold, Pre. Yeah. So all things considered, I like the defend. I'm with you on that. Blinds have gone up, so we're going to have to see the updated chip counts because things are getting very even, Stevens, around here, Al. Indeed, bro. And what a chunky, sexy payout at the moment. 26,900 euro. All players have guaranteed themselves and that 10 grand ticket. But they don't want to give you that. They want more. Always. You want that W at this late stage. A long way to go yet, of course. Vittorio is just going to check it down. Is that, that checked down the whole way to the river? Um, I think there was a small bet there on the turn, no? If there was, fair enough. I just wasn't sure because obviously checking back top pair there, 25. even though you were very, very bad. He, he did. He checked it down all three streets because the raise was to 325 and there was only 875 in the pot. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So that's way too passive there from Vic. Way, way too passive. Check back all the way. Yeah, definitely a bet in the river, man. I think, like, I, I understand the flop check back and the turn check back on the queen, uh, especially from a small brain call caller. I, I, I understand the... I understand, like, the fact that he might not have went for more than two streets, but, man, once that checks back down to the river there when you're in position, you have to go for a bet with Ace-2 there. I get, I get the kicker issue, but, like, man, you have to bet just for one street there. You'd be surprised what might call. And if you get falls, and so what? It's just, like, you still have to bet that hand there. It's, like, not, not even up for the bet, in my opinion. Check flop, bet turn, and then check river, I think, is the best because we get, we get that value from our opponent having a hand that contains a queen after the flop goes check, check. And I think that, that if you break down what their calling range there is from the small, it's going to contain those hands like king, queen, queen, jack suited, queen, ten suited maybe, queen, queen, nine is a little bit of a stretch, but all those combos... I, th I think even like double check and back flop and turn, man, to, to, to you know, even, even get called by sometimes something worse. Um, I'm not saying that that might happen, um, but I think it's way more likely that you'll get called by any pair if you check it down to the river with the ace-2 as an example. I, get, I, 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 I definitely agree. Bet and turn to check back river, or if you check back flop, check back turn, you have to go for value on the river. You just have to. Yeah. We've got action. Jean Franco finds himself with 10 big blinds, forced to shove the king queen at diamonds from the hijack standard stuff. And this is going to be a super standard rejam here from Dennis on the button. Jean Franco very unlucky to run into the top of Dennis's range here. Bing bang boom. He is all in the fella, all in the other fella. And we could be losing Jan Franco. He's not going to have too much equity to survive here. Raw saying GTO, 3 TO is the commentator. Yeah, I think I might get bugged out for a little bit, man. Oh. <laughs> for a little bit. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa, indeed. Oh dear. Now, right, here's my thoughts on this. With two all ins in front of us, you make an argument for folding. Because the 10 big, the lead jam for about 15. Turbo half are stacked here, but Jack's going to play very well against these all, just all in and the lead jam lane. The only thing is with the ice cream considerations, it could be what we here to be a very tight fold because we have over five million here it might be better to just let this one go i yeah, would definitely uh, be folding uh, eights nines and tens um but again the jacks plus thing alan do we just want to go for it here 
I mean, I, I don't know how many times this spot is ever going to come up, bro, where Fold and Jax is going to be a good play. I don't think I would get away from this, man. I think if you do have the 8s, 9s, and 10s, it's kind of the cusp of like one or the other. But I don't, I don't think we can fold Jax, no. I don't think so. Neutral says you call with Jack. I think Jack's plus here. Now, if it was for any more, I think I'm just letting Jack's go. I would like that made. Mate, this is a huge pot. Made, no. This is, a massive, this is pot. massive. Seven million and change in this pot. Vittorio. And the other thing is, this is so nice for Vittorio because he's getting a fake flip here in a, in a way because they're blocking each other's hands. So he's mm, still he's king, getting. Yeah. A fake flip, not the right terminology there, but you get me. There's extra outs gone. So it's 41% equity. Oh, what a spot this is for Vittorio and his Jeffries. Gianfranco with 15% e equity to stay in the tournament. Dennis with 25% to stay in this tournament. This could be a double elimination, the first hand back or second hand back. Oh, it's the king of kings. Oh, dear. Nasty. And now he needs a Jeffrey. And it doesn't arrive. Negative. That's very sad. It looked like Vittorio was going to get through. Oh, what a painful situation. We lose Gianfranco in seventh place, and it has to be said, he's going to be very disappointed with that finish, considering how well he was playing yesterday. A bit reckless at times, but <laughs> some spicy, entertaining <laughs> action from him nonetheless. And that's what we love on this channel. So, kudos to him. Put his balls out on the table yesterday in a few spots, and I love it. Um, great to see him get such a nice result. And yes, he will be very disappointed, but maybe with a score of nearly 40K, including a 10K ticket, we'll be very happy eventually. Yeah, yeah, it's one of those things, man, that, like, I don't think anyone can get away from their hand there. I think Jack's in that spot, man, given the formations. I know ICM is potentially still a thing as well with some of these stack sides, but I think the fact that Vittorio had uh, 18 big blinds behind, man, I think he should be pretty happy enough to just kind of gamble that there and just, like, again, as I always say, just let the cards fall as they may, man. But, yeah, again, a 6-6 sick, sick turn, man, given, like, if, if the ace or the queen come, we know... Then you say fair enough, but like the two outer with the king man with you know four players blocking that king out, <laughs> just like out of all cards, you know that's just kind of made it a little bit more um, thicker, I suppose. No. Well, once I seen the flop, I was like Vittorio's day, because if Matt, he eliminates two players there, he's going to have about ten million in chips. <laughs> now, what a difference a turn makes! Like now he's playing two point mm -hmm. eight million, one of the shortest stacks. Um, I am I'm gonna put that one into a calculator. So that was hand forty one. I'm gonna remind myself about that to do that. Uh because I reckon if you put that into an ICM calculator it would probably say you need to be tighter than tens and jacks might fall into the category of folding. Obviously we stack off a of Queens plus. In in this lineup in this format, I think I'm happy to call fifteen bigs to eliminate two players there with Jacks. It's for about half our stack. If it was for my tournament, I would just fold. Yeah, I get that. I get that. And I, I can probably stand by that too as well, bro. Um, I do think the big data point or the big variable there was the fact that Vittorio still had st a, a, a pretty healthy stack behind, man, with the 18 big blinds. Now, I know it may not sound that losing half your stack and whatnot, but that's a big thing to take into account, man. If you're still in the tournament and you have an opportunity to literally triple up there or close to it, um, I think it's a no-brainer with Jax, man. As I said, if he didn't have the stack behind way more closer of, an, of a decision. And like I said, I'd probably lean towards Folden because, you know, there's a pay jump at stake there with John Franco potentially being knocked out. We've got more action going on here. Uh, yeah, the more I think about it, it's the 10 big blind shove from John Franco. He can have all the small pairs, all the suited wheels, all the suited connectors, all the, the picture cards. And then the, the button's jamming range doesn't need to be crushing the shoving range from the cutoff or the hijack or wherever he was. So therefore, Jack's is going to be making decent money against the both of those ranges. They've already got two pay jumps and there's not much shorter stacks to worry about. And I think if you're going it for a YOLO and I'm going to win this tournament, we call. If you really want to knit it up, I'm not saying it's nitty to fold there. It could be theoretically 
and in practice, totally fine to fold jacks and stack off with queens plus. I'm stacking off with jacks there. It's just a golden opportunity to have 10 million chips. You're at a very tough final table. It's not a 250 buy-in here where you, there's going to be a lot more recreational. So you need to take every edge you can. Um, there is people that could argue and say, no, you have to be tighter there. I'm definitely folding ace-queen off suit. Ace-queen suited. I'm calling with jacks because we beat more combinations. Um that aren't pairs so therefore also what i said stands as well they can be blocking each other and therefore we're getting really good equity to win and eliminate two players that's my thoughts on it i'll be back in just a moment alan i'm tending to my turkey <laughs> no bother mate i'll take over for uh, the the main comments for a little bit no issue at all but yeah still an interesting hand guys in fairness i love the fact that we can you know talk about a hand like that in depth like that and also for you guys to witness the all in it's um it's a really, really nice combination of stuff from, from an entertaining standpoint. It's probably going to be pretty open, easy open jam here for Babo here. Or Babo, I should say. Especially in these formations, guys, take down the blinds, take down the big blind ante. Literally, probably increase your stack by 20 to 30 percent here. I don't see any merit to not just ship it in the middle here. There we go. Not too sure what Pez is thinking about here. I get maybe the consideration here, but pretty sure this is a pretty clear fold, I guess. Stuff like King Jack would be interesting here versus Queen 10. And maybe even some Queen Jack suit. It would be on the cusp, in my opinion, of potentially calling here. Um, can't imagine Queen 10 off is going to be a call here, but as I said, I'm trying to think of what would be the bottom threshold here. I assume Queen Jack suit and maybe King Jack off would be a lot closer here than a uh, queen 10 off for obvious reasons. So Pez, uh, <laughs> Pez seems to think otherwise. But I like the fact he was thinking about it at least. Show shows that he's very aware about how many kind of close spots are in this exact situation, you know, in terms of what he calls. Another guy, I mean, personally myself, I would have mucked it a lot more quicker, but obviously Pez is a lot more experienced, a lot better player than myself at this format, so I'm sure he was uh, thinking about something for a good reason. But Babo picks up uh, the blinds and antis, guys. As I said, him picking up that hand, or picking up them chips there, Probably increase the stack to close to 10 big blinds, if not over 10 big blinds. And he did start the hand with 7 big blinds. So that's a huge increase in terms of percentages. And like that, he can live to fight another orbit if he decides to fold. Pez here with a pretty nice looking hand to Queen Jack suited here on the button. Going to be coming in for a raise, one would imagine. I think Martin might look this up for a small min raise here. Which more or less is just slightly over min. Just decide to defend. Well, this is uh, quite the interesting flop to say the least. At the same time, I can't imagine Martin going too crazy on this flop, but obviously Pez has a bunch of equity here, so 
be interesting to see what he does. Pretty standard size in here from Pez. As I said, I can't imagine Martin doing anything else. I just check calling here. A lot of bad turn cards. You don't want to overinvest with these like really, really marginal kind of top pair weak kicker hands. We're back out. Nice one, mate. It's good to have an oven once again. <laughs> <laughs> and he does find the Riz. Wow. So this is the problem with this, Dan, in fairness, that if you do raise these hands and you face a three bet on this flop, which I wouldn't be surprised if Pez does. Now, Pez being in position here, he can just call, but out of position, I imagine Pez will just, you know, just be shipping this, I would assume. He can obviously call it given the fact he's in position now, but I'm not a big fan of Martin ra raising this hand because there's so many bad turn cards. Um, and as I said, if you get three bet here, I mean, are you ever in that good of shape? I doubt it. Um, so the problem is when you raise these top pair hands and face a three bet, when you don't have any good backdoors, you kind of just force the fold, guys. Um, and that's really going to be, depend on what Pez is going to do here. I really don't like Martin's raise here. Yeah, agreed. It's just too draw heavy of a board. Now I understand he just wants to get it over with here and he is playing over 7 million and he has Pez covered, but all of those reasons are not a good enough reason to not just check call. The, the other thing I'll add to that as well, Dan, is that usually when people are c-betting these boards, they're not like c-betting that wide. You know, they're a little bit more selective in what they do c-bet, so... If that range is a lot more condensed and it doesn't have that many air hands, so to speak, that it is C-bet in this flop, then 10-5 just prefers to call even more, again, because the C-bet in range is a lot more polarized. So, again, check raising this top pair hand with, like, really bad backdoors, it doesn't make any sense. And this is the thing now. So what do you do on this turn? Do you just check to check fold? Do you check to check call? Because, again, like that, man, you could be already behind here. And if you're, if you're not already behind, you're, you're, you're marginally ahead against some of these kind of, you know, combo draws or these really high equity draws. Um, that's what I'm saying, man. There's like so many bad turn cards here, and this is a prime example. So we'll see what he does either way. Yeah. Um, I think we want to be checking back the majority of our over pairs on 8, 7, 10, unless we're sub-20 bigs deep and we're just trying to get it all in on the flop. Uh, yeah, this just, is crazy, man. This is not. This is a stutter step here from Martin. He's repping. He's trying to get his opponent to fold. Exactly a, a kind of hand like he has. Maybe not queen jack of diamonds, but a pair, a combo draw here because this, this is huge. And I think you made a very good point there, Alan. That when we see when our opponent see bets these boards, they tend to have the nutted part of their range, or at least a combo draw. Yeah, it's, and, uh, it's, 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 it's one of those things, man, that, like, I, I, like I, look, whatever about check raising the flop for some sort of protection, mergey sort of um, situation, okay, whatever. I, do, I, I would never do check raise his hand in this exact situation. But, man, when this ace comes in the turn here, and you're just, like, bombing this, you're, you're essentially turning this 10x into a bluff here, um, in my opinion, because... I was going to say, this is a six buff for Pez. It might work. Yeah. The, the only thing yeah, I'd say on top of that, bro, is just like the how 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 the range looks like for Martin to overbet this turn or to be very very polarized on this turn. It is very very strong. Only problem is is the combo he's deciding to do it with. I'm not a fan of it, and I'm sure you feel the same, bro. Again, think about all the other hands you're going to decide to check raise the flop here to be extremely polar on this turn. Ten five of spades is never going to fit into that category, you know. Some nine x of diamonds, some ace high diamonds makes the most sense here. You know, something like that. Wow. Mad hand. Oh, my word. Martin can breathe a sigh of relief getting that one through. Um, I think you made a very good point there that he's essentially after turning this 10 into a bluff. Yeah. 
Yeah, Terrible such an amount of equity to uh, such such an amount of equity to uh, fold on the turn there, man, as well with the queen jack. Uh, but I, I I I get the fold because again, you might not get paid on many rivers. Like if a flush completes or the nine comes, how often are you going to get paid there? You know, ah, it's close. One thing we, we didn't talk about there, is there ever a merit to just check? So what I said was we've to, we check back the majority of our over pairs there on the board, maybe even jacks, and that has an inside straight draw. Could we decide to maybe check back the queen, queen, queen jack of diamonds for deception, pot control, and if we hit, we're going to get paid the majority of the time because we just don't rate to have... If we're betting there, we're going to have the noted part of our range, but we're bloating the pot. So is it ever a reason for just checking back with a hand as strong as Queen Jack of Diamonds, or is that just stupid because it's our board and we want to get value and build a pot for when we hit? Well, it's interesting that you say it's our boards. I mean, obviously we have a bunch of equity on that board with that specific combo, but in terms of like equity distribution there, it's, it's probably a better board for the big blind in one way because it's going to have potentially maybe some more offsuit combos. I'm stretching that a little bit, but that board in particular, man, kind of hits both the ranges. So it's not like we have a range advantage on that board from the imposition standpoint. Um, in saying that, C betting that hand all the time, I don't think it's a mistake, but definitely checking back sometimes is going to be fine. Again, for deception, want to realize equity, avoid the situation of potentially getting check raised and, you know, facing turn and river bets but look man having that much equity betting or checking is never going to be a mistake um obviously facing a check raise there you have to call the flop but that when he bombs that turn man with that hand it's just like pandora's box is open there realistically in terms of um being in a tough spot with uh which, which pez was on the turn man it's disgusting to um have to fold that much equity but when he bets yeah 1.8 i think he only had one in 1.8 behind so if he calls and misses he's just he's put in over half of the stack and missed the max out it's just horrible and as you said if he does hit he's probably not going to get paid mm -hmm, mm -hmm. especially at that point especially at that point in terms of sizes you know check raising the flop bomb and the turn it's like the thing is as well man like you know the, the, he has a lot of strong hands on that board as well, Pez, you know. Um, I, I think it's a, it's a very, very crazy move with the 10-5. I would never do it. I think a lot of people wouldn't do it. Um, but in saying that, bro, it's just a combo, man. It's just, it's just better to check call them hands because you have so many other better hands to check, raise the flop, and then bomb the turn. You know, just 10-5 of spades on that two-tone texture where it was diamonds and, you know, one heart. It's just not the correct combo, man. And I'm not, I, I, I have no problem in deviating from what theory or, or, or what, you know, what's optimal or what it might suggest. But in that situation, man, 10-5 ten, ten of spades is always going to be a call on that flop. At, like, only a call, I would say. Yeah, it's expert analysis. I also think uh, it's totally fine to check back the Queen Jack at Diamond sometimes. But we, we, the only reason for us to check back is if we think we're going to get check raised. We block a lot of the combinations that would check raise us with containing diamonds, straight draws. And if we're check raised, it looks very strong because as we said multiple times there, we have to be very strong to bet the 8, 7, 10, 2 diamond flop, especially out when we are in position. But that, mm -hmm. that board smacks the perceived big blind defending range more so, more so than in our opening range. So a very interesting hand to dissect there. Mm -hmm. um, it look, really, he had me fooled. It was almost like he had a set there, the way he played it. Like eights, sevens, or tens. Tens might bump it up pre, but if they don't, it's it's very risky behavior, but it's paid off, and he's got a massive stack now. It must be buzzing, all momentum shifting in his direction. It's kind of one of those hands, man, that if, um, <laughs> if he goes on to like win the tournament or you know finish in the top two or top three or something like that, I have no doubt he's going to think back, yeah, me making that play had a massive impact in getting me to where I am today, <laughs> I, I would assume. Uh, it's been an exhilarating final table so far. Um, yeah, but he's he's really pulling himself apart from the rest of the pack with with these. Ha that hand was massive in terms of uh, the amount of chips out there and how much he's he's picked up by getting his opponent. Like, yeah, we can say okay, it was, this is overkill. I really don't like how he played the hand, but he got his opponent to fold, like having nearly maximum outs on the flop. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm 
Oh, this is six situation. So Babo's all in. Christian. Now, Alan, right? So we talked about some spots where you can fold, raise, fold the ten bigs, but we know how strong Jack Ten and Queen Jack suited are. And this is sub ten bigs. He's already put in. It's only a million more to call. Yes, it's a, over a third of his stack or in or around. Um, I don't think he gets away from this one here. I think we have to pay the man. We're going to be, have decent equity against Ace Queen and Ace King. We're flipping against all the lower pairs, and say la vie. Yeah, I, I I agree, bro. I I'm very very much aware how how good Jack Ten plays against basically any three bet jamming range here. Yeah, I I, I I the thing is I'm not sure what it's like to call it off when you're getting this price. Um, obviously like. Open jamming it is going to be fine. Three bet jamming it is going to be very good play. Other thing is calling it when you're facing a three bet jam. I'm a little bit unsure uh, in terms of whether it's a good or a bad play, but yeah, it's definitely going to play well against most of the uh, three bet range. I just don't know about calling it off. That's the other downside. Or that's, the un that's what I'm unsure about, I should say. Excuse me. I personally think that when we are scanning stacks, we should know whether we're raised calling certain players and raise folding to others vice versa etc etc and that that one is just on the threshold of um having too much equity now having said that that's just you're only saying that that's how much equity they have you don't know their range is going to be condensed towards the higher part but i still think there's enough hands that rejam now with six left they've got three pay jumps these guys you know they've played for Many days on end, they play many tournaments in their life, and I think that's a good spot to try gamble there. I don't like the word gamble because we don't want to be gambling in ICM situations, but I would find it very difficult to fold Jack 10 suited in that spot. Yeah, and I can totally understand why, bro. I can totally understand why. And it's just the playability against like the range that's going to be three bet jamming there. It's always going to be in relatively decent shape. As I said, the only hands that's going to be in bad shape is ace jack and ace 10 suited or something like that that decides to three bet. And of course, in like queens plus. Against the rest of it, bro. Flipping most of the time, to be fair, no? Yeah, and okay, we lose. We still have over 2 million. We win, we're up near 5. It's a, it's a big difference. And look at this. Pairs galore. Nines for Martin. And Dennis. And Martin flying high here, so he's going to be fueled with momentum. But it is Dennis with the superior pair. You're getting a bit tongue twistery today. Pick up a penguin. <laughs> <laughs> Real Rusty is in the house. Didier is back. It's great. We've got the same name, same faces. Well, I can't see your faces, but you can't see mine either. So I was always told I had a face for radio. <laughs> Jokes on them. Didn't make it to radio. Just made it to the Twitch channel for the King's Resort. Yeah, love it. There's an air of excitement about today, for sure. Now, Martin faced with a 3-bet to 1 million. Also, with them hands like Jack-10 suited, um, the blinds are going to go up and not down. And it's these spots where you don't call off that suddenly you find yourself short when it's like, well, if I gambled there and I lost at least, you know, if I won. I don't know, the risk, towards re the risk versus reward there with the Jack-10, it's not like, it's not eliminating us from the tournament. The losing a million doesn't affect us that much. Oof, so look what's going on here, bro. Able. Oh, my God, Martin is going <laughs> to get all of Dennis's chips here. Whoa! The check back. That shouldn't happen, man. In God an damn. instant. What is going on? Oh, my God. Somebody's Maybe. phone is going, is it going off at the complete wrong time. I was, I was just going to say there, I can maybe get behind check and behind queens with a diamond um, at, at, a, at a frequency, we'll say, you know, on this board texture itself. It's the speed he done it at, Alan, that made me yeah, shot yeah, yeah. and have that reaction. And now look, at, look how much he's sizing up here, Martin. One and a half mil. Oh, my God. This sets up a jam so nicely on the river. A diamond will save Dennis or a lady. That's it. Four diamonds. Oh, it's the ten of clubs. I don't see how Dennis gets away from this once he checks back the flop. Now, he does block some draws he would want his opponent to have here, but missed diamonds. Any ace of diamonds is going to continue barreling here. 
There's other hands. There's loads. I, I would like Martin to have taken a little bit more time for that decision as well. Like, the thing is, man, if you're bluffing in this spot, surely you would take a little bit longer to think about it. When somebody makes a decision like that to, you know, shove in two million chips here in this exact situation, this deep in the tournament, it's like, it, it makes it look like an easy decision, man, no? You know, he bet the turn quite quick, quickly as well. And, you know, spent maybe 10, 10 to 12 seconds for a decision on the river too, to bet. I, I'm sure you'll agree that if somebody's bluffing, if you're bluffing in the spot or I'm bluffing in the spot, I'd probably take a little bit longer, you know? You hit the nail on the head there, Alan. You're killing it, I'm telling you. Um, I, I totally agree. We, we have to take more time. Some people have made up their mind already, but this isn't... I mean, these are expert players. They might have time and tells or looking for time and tells on each other, but oh, I'd be so stubborn... Some players just act very fast in general. Martin has shown to be one of those, but this is exactly a situation like you just explained there, Adam, where you want to take more time. If you're going to bluff with it, uh, anything that contains a misdraw here, you're going to take a little bit more time than that. I also feel, though, the way Dennis has played this hand and checked back the flop, he's going to be forced to pay the man here. There's 7.725 million in the middle, and it's just 2 million to call. It does represent over half of Dennis's stack, but how does he get away from this? Um, the, the, the only way that Dennis might be able to get away from this man if he ever thinks Martin is capable of bluffing in this spot now you have to ask the question what is Martin capable of bluffing in this spot you know we saw a lot of passive plays man with a lot of these things on the river on the turn where you and I might mutually agree where we would bluff here or we would bet the turn and maybe give up the river or bet the turn and always bet the river but that hasn't happened a lot in some of these spots as well man now we were right sometimes we were wrong sometimes fair enough but I think in this exact spot man for Martin to maybe find these bluffs here might be a little bit intuitive with all the variables in play with the ICM and the pay jumps and all that jazz uh, it's, 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 it's a close one with Queens here, man, but I think if Dennis zooms out and think, I, I, if he really asks Martin, if, 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 sorry, let me, if he really asks himself the question, is Martin capable of bluffing here? And if the answer is yes or no, then you can base your decision on that, but I don't blame the man for calling here. Oh, no! <laughs> the way he dumps it in. He knew he was beat. He knew, he knew. That's the problem. That's the problem oh. I have, man, because... Like, this is the thing, man, and this all stems from your intuition and your past experience playing and, like, not becoming biased and all that jazz. I think in that spot, man, it's pretty difficult to find a lot of bluffs in this exact situation, deep in a tournament, and all that, uh, and all them kind of other variables, as I mentioned already. Um, as I said, bro, I don't blame him for calling there, but you know, three and a half million chips he lost in that pot, man, and that's, that was only post-flop. Pre-flop is whatever, but, yeah, big, big pot there. Do you think he just got married to the two ladies? Ah, uh, it's again like that, man. When you check back the flop, you know, if you see about the flop there, you know, if you get raised, then it's a little bit more closer in what you do continue on turns and rivers, you know, because the ranges are going to be a lot more narrow, a lot more condensed, and you know, it's either going to be a lot less bluffs and a lot less value combos, but as I said, a lot more condensed nonetheless. When you check back queens there, you can never really fall turn and river. Definitely not the turn and definitely not the river on that specific run out. But at the same time, bro, you have to ask yourself the question, is Martin going to be capable enough of bluffing on this river here? And as I said, bro, not if the answer is yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the big part, man. Like, he acted so quickly. And like, as I said already, bro, when that happens, I think most people just have an easy decision. So look, guys, time and tells are a thing. Body language is a thing. Like, there is tells in, in live poker. And that was a very, very good example of it, in my opinion. He looked, yes, yeah, <laughs> knocking it out of the park, Alan. Brilliant analysis. Just enthralled by everything you're saying there about these hands. Um, the Queen's there as well. We block some draws. I know I keep talking about blockers, but I, I, the three bet pre as well, that eliminates almost all of the 10x out of Martin's range. Maybe he continues with the suited varieties, but maybe even not. Like, it's not great spot. The three bet was chunky as well. It was two a million. Yeah, I agree, bro. I agree. And if he has a 10x hand, he's definitely thinking longer than five seconds there on the river. Maybe it was 10 seconds, but it, it was almost instant. Also, it has to be said that both players played way, way too fast. Like Speedy Gonzalez on that flop. It just went check, check. Like, yeah. Martin checked, and 
the Queens just checked back without even thinking. Yeah, it was a weird one on the flop, bro. It was a weird one on the flop. And as I said already, it was just like, when you, when, when you check back there versus betting on the flop, you, you, I think you would get a lot more information about the hand if you just decided to bet the flop. You know, Flush would have completed on the turn, probably would have went check, check. I assume Martin would have just check called the flop when he basically has the nuts. You know, so yes. don't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't see any mirrors in check raising. So should just see bet the flop, check, check, turn, and then reevaluate on the river in terms of sizing. And again, like that, man, ask yourself the question, is Martin going to be capable of bluffing here given the pre-flop situation, the flop situation, turn, river, etc. Very, very important to replay the hand in your head and really try and break down what Martin is capable of doing. Yeah, that's just, it's fantastic stuff there, though, for Martin. Now he's playing over 15 million. Huge. And as for the Queens, it is horrible, but it, we we really have to feel like he could have got away from it there, just the way it played out. So what you're saying is, in a normal situation, you wouldn't be falling there, but because of the, how fast Martin acted, and he didn't... I also think this could be a bit too much now from what I'm saying here, but I feel like if we're going to bluff... Um, we're gonna we're gonna bet bet all in there more so than betting two million. It just seemed very milky. Now, not to say that we don't use that size in any way, two million into seven on the river, but when the stack to pot ratio is less than that, that's way less than one to one. I feel like we just move all in if we're bluffing. No, I agree, I agree, I agree. And that's the thing, like you have to when when you're bluffing. And when you're value betting, man, the, 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 the threshold has to be the same in terms of sizing. You know, there's absolutely no point picking, you know, a certain size with your value and then a completely different size with your bluffs. You know, it's, it's, it's not going to work well because any decent player is going to figure that out immediately and know how to readjust. You know, it's very, very important to keep the same size for both parts of your range. Well, look what's happening here. I was on about Giraffe Ganger earlier. He had about 100 bigs when he was six-handed, and everyone had 20 or below, and that's exactly... I told you a runaway bride is going to emerge, and, it, and he has. It's Martin. All other five players, Alan, are 20 big blinds and below. He can steamroll this FT from here. Mm -hmm, he mm -hmm. really, really doesn't want to double up one of these players, though. Yeah, he's in a really good position, and, bro. Really, really good. Yeah, for the for the rest of the five players remaining, they none of them want it. It's very nitty nitty gritty out there because nobody wants to bust before the other. There's such significant pay jumps, and they they just want Martin to keep eliminating players. Really, for sure, I can see the benefit. I think I handed mob this. I handed mobbed everyone yesterday, but. It's a new day, so I'll hand him of him again. Might have, might have had a big score over the over last night. <laughs> <laughs> I do have some one or two sick stories from friends who I won't reveal the names of, but they have uh, <laughs> they have one. Oh no, I have one in particular where a friend of mine won two live events in the same weekend, but still was down from playing high stake cash games and losing his balls in the casino on both nights. What? And I mean, it was big enough results. We're talking the guts of 50 grand between the two. The two. He won both the main event and the side event and still was down for the weekend. I don't think I, that story can easily be beaten. No, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty sad. <laughs> that's pretty sad. That's what, a, what a legend. Yeah, defo. Total live earnings. For Martin, I, it's all the, all the players were in around. They, none of them had more than 500k. So this guy is at 287,988 dollars. So no slouch. Just no, might want to take a little bit more time with his decisions. It ain't no turbo. It's one hour blinds. You've got all the time you need. I see. I see that online as well, bro. At times where they make these extremely like snappy decisions at times and uh it's just again it's the same situation bro like they're making it, it, they're painting the picture of they have a very easy decision so when that's usually the case man they're quite strong meanwhile back at the ranch here alan this is a mm -hmm. dicey situation for pez because this is also less than 10 bigs and now it's dennis with the jack 10 suited and pez is going to most likely be forced to fold this because the ace do suit just not going to play well in this situation mm-hmm mm-hmm 
But again, this looks like a super standard fold. But if you've loads of chips, if you've Martin's stack here, this is sub 10 bigs with the opportunity to eliminate a player. You can call for the 960. But maybe it just falls falls into the min raising min raise folding category. You don't really want to be giving away those chips. Yeah, I think I just yeah, put, put that in the bin, bin the more I think about it. But it is getting close. A blind or two mm -hmm. less, we're, we're kind of made it simple as. I like that. I don't Pez know anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's. I was just going to say briefly there that like I'm sure Pez is very, very aware of this exact situation as well, man. In terms of what's kind of going to be closer with one combo versus another, but yeah. I like this Pez guy, but he's he has had no luck there since going from five million at the start of the day. Really, he's just been folding a lot. He looks like he's in pain here, though. <laughs> Lou says, does Alan do coaching? Loving the analysis. I'm sure. He'd have to find the time. He barely has the time to find for me to be on the stream for three days. So you're going to have to get in line, I would say. I am... Um coaching two guys at the moment to be fair man but like that's the, like the thing is and, and i don't want to say that i'm too busy but like there is times where i look at the schedule man on a week by week basis and i'm like jesus like where, where where do i have time to myself like i have these small like three four hour gaps man where it's just like afternoon off and that's it there's no like days off anymore it's afternoons off <laughs> well i will continue to be uh, seeking out your commentating abilities so bear that in mind alan <laughs> yeah, 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 no bother, miss. <laughs> Obviously, there's one gobshite in the chat there saying, why is this stream so bad? Um, well, you're the first and the only person who's given out about it all weekend, so uh, save your breath for cooling your porridge. <laughs> Goldilocks. <laughs> That's the polite response. Can I just add to that as well, Dan? If Lou is uh, still watching there, just like I do stream on Twitch, bro. So if I can't do any coaching in future with yourself, then just check out the Twitch channel, man. I do stream there probably 15 to 20 hours each week. So if you want to learn about cash games, man, then I do that a lot on the Twitch channel where I play 200 and 500 and else. So check it out, bro, if you want. Yeah. I did mention your channel yesterday and the day before, but I actually didn't mention it today. Alan F. Poker over there, he's growing the channel. Even up to 70 people tuning in while the W Coop is going on, which just shows is a testament to how much quality is and knowledge is to be gained from the, the cash game realm. He brings something different to the table, and I can't recommend it enough. And that's coming from me. I was finding my off days tuning in to watch him play, and I'm not... I'm not too fond of cash. I way prefer tournaments. So that'll show you how interesting I found it. Appreciate the kind words, bro. Well, they were well earned. King, 6-3, <laughs> flop here. Dennis, again, defending from the small blind here, not a fan. Uh, not off that stack side, surely, yeah? Same situation again, bro. Just like kind of compound domino effect situation here. This might end up being, but yeah. Yeah, because it looks great on paper, Alan, but then you, you're going to be putting money in on a draw a lot of the time. Now, actually, I will say because he's sub 10 bigs, he can check jam a lot or just get it in. It's actually nearly worse when you've got 20 or 25 bigs here because you're, you're, ho you're going to catch a piece of it and then be forced to see a turn. So yeah, the domino effect, the compound mistakes. But here, I actually don't mind it as much, but I still think we're just going to find better spots. And it's not even about finding the better spots. We're going to get barreled off our hands so frequently. Yeah, that's the, that, but that's, that's the big issue, man, because you can check call for one, but like when you kind of know that you're going to be facing a double barrel quite often, then, yeah, call and flop kind of feels a lot worse. But I definitely agree, man. It's, it's, it's going to get a dicey on the river here. Dennis checking again, I presume. I think the flop went check, check, and now the turn sees. sees exactly what I just said. He's caught a piece of it, forced to put in an extra quarter of a milling. Millie hoping he's good on the river if it goes check, check. Wow. Ah, man, come on. <laughs> 
Don't be too happy with himself there, um, no. Well, I think it was just in case he had a six, but I would still way prefer, even if he wanted to bet a quarter of a million again. I, uh, I do. Shaggy, he says every Twitch stream he goes into has so many ads. Well, the only way to get rid of the ads is to like, subscribe, and follow the channel. Yeah, I've had a couple of guys and mention that as well, man. In terms of like the ads, the, the revenue from the ads. They, 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 I mean, look, just subscribe for two or three euro, man, or whatever it is, and you won't have to worry about that. Yeah, per month as well. And I mean, I couldn't even watch my Kill Tony last night uh, because uh, it won't allow me to watch YouTube anymore if I'm using ad blocker. I got rid of the ad blocker. It still wouldn't let me refresh. So every video I'm watching now on YouTube has ads. But uh, I, I have my own reasons for not being too fond of YouTube, even though it is a quality streaming service, of course. And if you do like our channel, give us a like, subscribe, and a follow. We're trying to get to 20,000 viewers by the end of the year. Yeah, to be honest with you, man, I, I've had the, um, the YouTube Red or the YouTube Premium the last, probably last couple of months, man, to be honest with you. It's like 10 euro where you can get rid of all the ads, but you can download videos and whatever else. And there's a few other perks as well. I really, really like it, man. To be honest, I do spend a lot of time, well, not a lot of time, but, you know, if I want to watch something that's an hour long where, you know, you don't have to worry about ads popping up every whatever 10 to 15 minutes gets rid of all that kind of situation man for for 10 euro and it's actually very very useful in one way too because if you're flying somewhere where you want to kill an hour couple of hours just download a load of videos on youtube for free bro and you can just watch them in hd on the plane that's what i was doing the last couple of months if i did have to go anywhere yeah maybe i will uh, stop being cheap and invest the 10 euro in the premium <laughs> Tr treat myself i um but with everyone asking how they can learn and get better, like this is on every weekend if you want to learn more about live poker. You know, there's so many other options available, but King's Resort is where it's at. It's the biggest poker room and resort in Europe for something for everyone in the audience. And it's basically nonstop action 365 days of the year. So you can't go wrong. We're here every weekend. Also, you've got Alan's midweek streams. Be sure to give him a like, subscribe, and a follow. If you like the cash games, he's playing more deep stacked, so not so much tournaments, but there is so much to be gained from it. I already said this. And then there's all the training sites. There's so many free videos. There's loads of great content on our YouTube channel for the Kings. We've even got a TikTok channel. If, you just, if your attention span only wants to see one-minute videos, then we've got you covered. If you want to find out more information about the resort, head over to the website, www.kingsresort.com. Buy yourself some merch and then so you buy the merch and then you'll you'll find it easier to learn how to play poker. <laughs> you'll already be dressed for the part. Many, many plugs there, mate. <laughs> yeah. I'm a walking billboard sitting down. <laughs> yeah, enough plugs done now, I think, for the moment. Martin betting 375 here on the pair board. Backdoor spade working for him. And for Pez, he's just having a nightmare of a day here, Alan. Yeah, not a, it's, 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 it's when it rains, it pours, bro, kind of that situation. And the thing is with MTT pokers, man, if you're uh, kind of on the wrong end of distribution, your uh, stack can definitely start depleting pretty swiftly. But uh, Ace-King is going to be ahead here a good amount of the time. So I don't mind betting yeah. here. I don't mind checking. I think I want to see a turn though, and it might slow Martin down, even though we don't have a spade in our hand. This is just sick because Martin could have easily just tree bet this one pre. Mm -hmm. Turn is the eight of spades. You can go on to call me crazy now, but what the guy was saying yesterday when there was uh, Eagle kept limping. If we're to limp with a hand like Ace King, knowing Martin is likely to bump it up, it's a great way for us to get our chips in pre. Maybe Ace King off suit, not the right combo to do that with, but the, the sentiment remains the same. Are we, um, are we betting this, Jack, here? Are we checking back in position? Because I, 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 the last thing I would... Go ahead, sorry. You're just saying we can go all in. There's 1.8 million in the pot. We have the Ace of Spades. Uh, we get our opponent to probably fold worse, but there is a lot of... Um, I presume he would just bet if he had a piece of this board on 966 with all his over pairs, maybe even a 9, maybe with some spades. So Martin in pole position to just take this one down. Is that what you think as well? Yeah, I, I just... Um, 
I mean, I, th th what I would ask myself on the turn here is, that, is it, does Ace Jack still have some showdown value here? And I think when Pez check calls the flop here most of the time in these formations, I doubt it does. So would prefer betting for that reason. Um, at the same time, I can maybe see some mirrors to check him back here because if we bet this and somehow get jammed on or, or face a raise, whatever the case may be, then it's obviously a bit of a disaster. But, you know, given what Pez's range looks like under the gun here, bro, I really don't mind just trying to turn this ace-jack with the ace of spades into a bluff here all the time. Because if you get a fold here from a better hand, like ace-king, then it's a massive win. So, well played, uh, Martin. Yeah, I don't really understand the bet at 750. Just jam. We have all the chips. Stack pot ratio is one to one. Just put it in. Yeah, I agree. And isn't it mad, Alan, that he took longer to act there than he did when he had the full house? Kind of, kind of proves proves my point even more that when somebody snap makes a decision, they have a very easy decision, you know. And that's a prime example of it. There, he took his time with the ace of spades. There, it's not like he just ripped it with the, if he, as if he had like you know ace x of spades. You know, different. It's, it's a prime example of it there, then. So, well pointed out there. Also, it really does look like if any time we can fold out ace queen or ace king on a pair of board there, when we just have all the equity, it doesn't even matter. But I'm saying that's such a win for the ace jack to not have to go to Maybe. showdown. Yeah. I don't know what else consists of his check calling range on the flop apart from ace queen, ace king. He doesn't really have any pairs, so he's very, very capped. I can't really think of many other hands. Something like Jack Queen might even see better ourselves because we've got some back doors. What I imagine there is what, what uh, Martin is cold calling in the cutoff there isn't going to be that light of a, of a range. So I, I might just end up like, even with my over pairs there, just like check and flop with my entire range um, and just seeing what Martin does as the imposition player. Um, in saying mm, that, what, 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 okay. what, 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 he, what he check calls there on the flop, man, is probably not going to be like ace-jack or ace-queen without a spade. Ace-king without a spade, as it's still ahead of some, some hands that he might bet on the turn there. But um, either way, interesting, uh, interesting spot on the turn between bet and check. I... I wouldn't have thought that. I would have thought he would have just bet all his pairs because he's out of position and he's so short in chips. He doesn't have much more than 10 bigs to start the hand. So uh, unless he's going for a check jam and once he goes into ch if he's going to check with an over pair or just a nine in his hand, then he would check jam that. Yeah, I can see the merits of that too. Um, again, like that under the gun range, I don't know how much nine X he's going to have there or something like that. So yeah, it's kind of I mean, he can't do much more than what he did, Pez, in terms of check calling the flop and then obviously just check folding the turn. I, I would probably play it the same way as he did. Yeah, we just, because we have the, the top ace in our range, then I think it's okay to see a turn because we might get to showdown and win against a, a lighter ace X, like an ace, just whatever ace X he happens to have. But it is mm -hmm. ambitious because if we think we're just going to get barreled off our hand, we could just check fold. It does seem a little bit tight. So I think he played the hand as well as he could, given how yeah, much I chips agree. he had behind. Mm -hmm. It was a horrible turn anyway. We're seeing a few short stacks now, Adam, with Martin bullying as much as he wants here with 100 bigs. Six sack to have to take him out. Yeah. Dennis, seven bigs under the gun, six-handed. Close. That's the low jack. Seven bigs.
Queen 9 suited plus for chip, so nice fold there. See, I would definitely be shoving Queen 9 suited even with the ICM considerations where you're one of the shortest mm -hmm. stacks. Although there's about three of them that are very short now, so they really don't want to bust before each other. Yeah, agreed. Lou says, do any online players play with chips when they are online? Strange question, but it helps me think. I think it's so funny you asked that question. I want to reveal something here now. I've got these four. I was given a cup for Christmas by my sister, a godfather cup, and it's four. Four little, um, I suppose they are poker chips. It's a tea, a tea holder, like or underneath you, whatever you call it, a coaster. <laughs> uh, so it's just four coasters and I'm always riffling with them in my hand not always but they're in my hand right now for example they were right beside me and I picked them up when I seen that question yeah I'd be guilty of doing that myself man to be honest with you if, if I had like you know 10 to 15 chips beside me or something like that I'd be uh, I would be ruffling them the whole time but if I don't have them it doesn't bother me but yeah when I'm playing live very very seldom that I do um, I, I, I am always ruffling my chips. Always, always, always. Well, three of the top French players, Riyad Farhat, Clement Cure, and um, Dory Melhers, they all play with their hands off the table. And there's definitely reasons for that. I've, there must be tells that they're picking up that they talk to me about with each other. Don't want to be giving away their secrets because I don't know the actual answer, but I've noticed that all three of those players that are in the same crew keep their hands off the table. Riyad sometimes riffles the chips, but Clement Cure and Dorian Melhers, they wait until they're making their decision and they keep their hands on their lap and then they move their hand to their chips and put them in the pot where you'll see most players continuously riffling time and time again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've also flip, seen play players like Patrick Antonius with his hands off the table. Top, top tier players. They're must be something to it the speed they riffle their chips or don't riffle them with i guess the less information you're giving away the better dennis with pocket sixes pez with ace queen big moment for both players here very similar in stacks two and a half million in the pot up for grabs in this one yeah no skill says bonomo does it as well yeah there's a there's loads you could name but they obviously have their reasons for doing that some players play with glasses some players don't etc etc the list of those things go on and on it's, i guess it's a lot got to do with the individual but we are addicted to repetitive behaviors otherwise we won't be playing the great game of no limit hold them it's a True flip that. queen jack nine is the flop pez with a bit of luck on this one so far dennis gonna need a six or he will be eliminated Eight of heart, river is a couple of comments coming in there. Unlucky for Dennis, really nice run. Unlucky, congratulations and commiserations. He will take home 36,200 euro for his efforts and the 10 grand ticket. Of course, that means five players remaining now. <laughs> oh, there are a lot of uh, hands which are memorable in this way. Uh, for example, the Ace King, it was uh, one of the biggest hands where I had the triple up. So uh, it was a push. I just. Uh, push all in with ace king and we get one call so it was a chance to triple up or go or bust and this time it worked out so it was one of the greatest hands here yeah. uh, it's not so much time to prepare <laughs> it's depending you're already prepared or you have a couple of weeks um, so i will just uh, review some strategy and uh, to do my best uh, to be at the final table one more time it will be uh, the greatest experience for sure yeah it's uh, it was very great experience to play like three long days so it's really tough 
physically and uh, probably mentally as well. So it's really important to take a rest and to take a pause and uh, even after the day one, for example, to have enough energy at the last uh, days. It's one of the uh, topics. And then uh, that we have a really tough spots if you play with strong players, so they put you in tough situations and you need to be prepared for it. And uh, maybe I will review the one or another hand after it and check if it was uh, done correctly on my side, yeah. Another good interview there. Unlucky for Dennis. Five players remaining. It's going to be very tough to beat that man. Pez now back to 13 bigs. Christian with the kings in the hijack. Two black kings. Martin is going to three bet with the ace four of diamonds in the cutoff. Three betting to just over a million. Music to Christian's ear, Dan, what do you think? <laughs> Absolutely. 650 for him to call. Now, Alan, do we set the trap and just call, or is it too risky? I, I, I can get behind both with the way the chips are, though. I just think there's more merit to shoving this one and try to play for it all. doesn't want to find himself in some sticky situation. Although, when, after I just said that, now I want to just flat. I think, <laughs> I if, I was, um, I think if I was in position here, I would be more inclined to flat, potentially. Being out of position is a little bit more ah, not so nice, I suppose. It's not like it's a big difference, but it will make a difference in the hand and how it plays out, usually. So I would be a little bit kind of more skeptical when I'm out of position to just four bet. And if I was in position, would just call a lot more happily, I'd say. Yeah, I like that. like those thoughts there. We just, um, we just want to try to get it all in here and... These stacks are, until I see the other stacks, they're very similar, but there's just too much ICM at play here. You don't want to see an ace on the, de the desk. I know that might seem results orientated, but uh, Martin's going to be able to put maximum amount of pressure. What if you're facing a really horrible board for Kings? And that, that will happen at times as well, bro. That's the thing. Because look at that, like ace four still has 27% equity here. You know, 25 will say on average. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it, it still has decent equity against Kings, man. This always makes my stomach churn when I know that these are the equities in these kind of spots, you know? Well, you're dealing with a 12, 12 and a half grand pay jump between fifth and fourth. And True. Christian now back to five mil. Now, the blinds have just gone up as well. 100, 200, 200. So this is going to put significant pressure on the shorter stacks if they didn't have enough pressure to deal with before.
all the way around to the small blind for Vittorio. They fire one of the shortest tracks by remaining seven big and all in. So, on this block goes there. Okay, we've got action. Tez going to have to call this one off the line. A lot of these, this is the work for the short track is done. They've got to stage them. We're really going to have to go for it here. If you want to have a stack to contend for this title. It is all in and call. Three point four million in the middle, massive spot for both players involved. It is Queen Jack ten, Vittorio three to one favourite. Still a lot of outs to dodge though. Turn is the king of hearts. River is the deuce of hearts. Poor Pez loses another one. Vittorio, big moment there for him. He's now playing 17 big blinds. Apocalypse, my informant has just Told me James Ryan and Mac Hansen are major doubts for the weekend for Ireland. Woohoo! I don't know about James Lowe either. He's uh, a bit crippled. Something happened to his eye, I think. We want to sort it out. We need him. We need them all. That Mac Hansen lad. Definitely the all. Jeez, we'll be doing well to get past the All Blacks. Now Pez shoving four and a half bigs. This actually <laughs> might be enough to get through. But when we already have 400k invested. Hmm. What do you think about this, Alan? It is 680 to call here. I think uh, Jack Four, the, the Robbie, is just going to play horribly. Yeah, it's one of those things, man, where like I just don't think you can call there. Although you are getting a good price, and you might have the correct equity against some parts of Parasu's Ridge, but yeah, overall, man, not going to be a... Uh, not going to be calling there with Jack for off, even though the price might be reasonable. Yeah, just going to be mucking. Again, like that, man, as we said, countless times today already, so many better spots, so many better hands. Yeah, my my sentiments exactly. Quaggy Skaggy says James Ryan is seriously important. Yes, 
It is like a chessboard, though. We have a lot of reinforcements. There are a few pawns, pawns in the game. And there's a lot of up-and-comers who are going to be amazing players in a couple of years. Epoch says he needs to win 35% to break even. And that's without taking uh, ICM into consideration. So then it just becomes a clear fold. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Having said that, I'd be calling for four or 500k more. The odds just change significantly. Red Misty says, don't panic, lads. The squad is good enough. Well... <laughs> you've got to, the pawns if you're always going to have a few injuries and then if you have a few injuries on top of your few injuries then it's like you've sacrificed all your pawns and you're just left with the remainder thank god that fight didn't escalate more when they tried to injure Sexton otherwise I'd be going looking for the boys myself <laughs> I, I want to be bringing my own army I don't want Action to be army. starting a fight with some rugby, Scottish rugby players but uh Jesus, they, they really went to tangle there. Anyways, no skill just says this is his favorite stage of an MTT. Yeah, there's so much to be learned from this this spot, these spots. Every hand just changes the dynamic so much, depending on what happens, of course. And the big blinds. And the antis worked so much. I do believe if we can get past the All Blacks, we will win the whole thing. It'll just give us an unbelievable boost of confidence, and then the injuries might be sorted by then also. But uh, they always did say I was a dreamer. And a steamer. <laughs> I'll be a steamer tomorrow, mate, when it's all said and done. Fact. But if to crown yet another champion at the King's Resort live from Rosvedov first... Lou asks, how many poker players do I think play chess? Um, I used to love chess. I had medals for chess when I was young. And then when I try to play chess now, it's not that it seems boring to me. It's just I don't want to relearn the game. I just want to concentrate on poker. It's a bit sad because I do really enjoy the game. But for me, it just doesn't have the same kick as no limit yeah. all them. can definitely share that same experience, bro. I do love the strategy behind it. I think it's a fantastic game, but every time I see someone playing it now, I'm like, they're like, come on, you have to play me. I'm just, I, I just don't really want to. I did try, watch some videos. I was going to learn. I'm like, I could just apply this time to getting better at poker. And again, I shared the exact same expression. <laughs> I like poker, stand-up comedy, DJing, uh, UFC, big fan of the UFC. I'm partying every now and again when I get the opportunity. And I don't really want to take on too much other hobbies. It's hard enough doing diet and exercise and trying to sleep right all the time. And you're just, True. as my mother says, burning candles at both ends. You have nothing left for yourself. Your cup is too full. And then you're just, your poker is going to suffer. Like we were speaking about yesterday, Alan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very much so. So if I start playing chess for no money on top of that and doing the commentating, there's nothing left. No, sir. So I don't know. I think most player, poker players are interested in chess, though, because there is a lot of similarities in the strategy and how intricate of a game it is. But I don't know. I couldn't say what percentage still play it. Or a lot of players yeah, transfer from one to the other. Martin betting 800k here on the river as a bluff and Christian somewhat of a mandatory bluff catcher. Default. Does pair the, yeah, it does 
pair the river of the pairs the five on the river, but I just I don't think it's anywhere near a good enough reason to fold. We beat so many draws that miss. And that's a big pot for Christian. That really separates him from the other three players and puts him in second place comfortably. I think he just said I put you on a five, but I called. Imagine. <laughs> nice set on the river. Or maybe he was saying he wasn't. He never thought about raising. That would make more sense. No. Guys, a big, really nice chance to jam here. I was going to say as well, Alan, if you've seen hands like Ace 9 off, uh, raising off 11 and 10 big points back, that, when we do, do them things, it allows us to raise hands to stack us off of them similar stack sizes. Hey, has had 11 picks here or not eight. Would make an argument to win raise calling it off only if you're balancing your range and if you've been raising and holding off similar sacrifices. It does take it down though. Yeah, it does just take it down. The all black are always dangerous and miss the silver best players and it could be trouble. Yeah, it's going to be a very tough task. Irregardless, Martin in the put off been raising with the A7 off the two. He's going to be staying very active as he should. And Pez in the big line here, a queen, five of heart. Off from here, he wants to defend off 10 bigs to start the hand. I think queen, five, two, it might be good enough here. The problem is he's just going to be getting barreled off his hand a lot of the time. Is going to commit the 200k additional. King nine seven is the flop. 
And Martin just going to take it down with a seabed. Falls all the way around to the small blind and Pez going to shove eight and a half bigs here with King Jack off suit. Is this ever a call, Dan? I was about to say this is going to be given careful consideration. Eight and a half bigs total. Mm. I think it's a fold, bro. I would, uh, mm. I'd be calling about six bigs there. I think eight and a half just kind of prices us out. And I prefer, I probably would call like king seven suited plus there. King six, king six suited plus is what I'm going to say. And the off suit combos in on, yeah. Yeah, the off suited maybe king eight, king nine definitely. Yeah, um, yeah. King eight is right around that it's just he doesn't want to lose that two million chips there because he's really separated himself from the other three players so he wants to just continue to let them knock each other out or continue to let martin take down pot after pot mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i would rather just protect my chips there yeah i can get behind that too Just a little bit better of a hand, though. I'm calling with the king. If if we're calling with king six suited, then king seven off is probably a call. I I just think I'd rather have an eight or a nine as my kicker. Um, so maybe king six suited is even a little bit too. It's it's in or around that area. Hmm. I can see where you're coming from. Just such massive pay jumps here as well. And it's nice to see Martin hasn't got too out of line. He's protecting onto his chips well. Holding onto his chips well even. And Vittorio flopping very nice here. Two over cards, nut flush draw. Interesting call here, no? Don't really understand it. I was about to comment there. Um, mm -hmm. I guess he's just hoping to turn some additional equity and then apply a lot of pressure. He's a very strange player, Martin. <laughs> At times, though, I always think he's going to do something else and he does the complete opposite. Yeah, I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of calling it up. Yeah, for one big blind, he probably thinks if the turn goes check, check, or if he picks up some equity, he can lead. He's not just calling there to not do anything on Turner River. Do you know what I mean? Of so course. then you can actually make an argument for it, make, making it okay. Like, he's not calling mm -hmm. thinking Jack High's ahead. Yeah, I, know I just you know think this already, by the way. Yeah, no, I was just going to briefly say that, like, I mean, would rather just float here if I had the nine of clubs or the jack of clubs. The fact that we don't have either of them, yeah, just, just going to fall, man. Again, like that, man, it's just one of those things of breaking it down in a way. Like, as that, if you're constructing your range properly on the flap, then you shouldn't be worried about being over, overly exploited on turns and rivers. Check call on this. You're going to have to overfold turns a bunch. And if not overfold turns, then definitely potentially have to overfold rivers, uh, potentially. 
Yeah, see, Martin has all the chips, so he knows if he catches a piece of it, he can just bet turn jam river. I still totally agree with you. He doesn't have a club in his hand, just let it go. Mm hmm. He just wants to keep accumulating chips. He doesn't want to be giving them away. Like, I know that goes without saying, but especially when he's got an overwhelming chip lead. Yeah. Nice pick up for Vittorio, nonetheless. Uh, Vittorio could elect to open the suited connectors there, the 9 10 of hearts, but decides to let it go. I think that's totally fine considering you got to cut off the button, the small and the big to get through. He's just won a nice pot. Just let them do damage to each other. MJ is in the house, says, Good evening, guys. Good evening, MJ. You're just in time, buddy. Come on in. The wood is lovely. Five remaining. Playing for 160,000 euro up top. And the circuit ring. No skill says in 2007 you always float. Well, it's better to float in position than out of position. He says save yourself from getting weird by folding flop. Yeah, things can just get a bit squirrely on turning river. Again, you're out of position. I don't mind floating in position. Oh, way preferred. M. Jello is in the house, says good evening. Support Italian. Back once again with the Renegade Master. So the average stack at the moment is about 27 big blinds. But it's a little bit irrelevant considering most of the chips in play belong to Martin. And the other chunk here, Christian. Playing over 30 bigs, the rest paling in comparison. Martin on the button here with a very strong ace-queen off suit. Look at those towers of chips in front of Martin. Babo. Under 10 bigs now. Needs to get something going for him soon. Vittorio playing. 20 bigs to start the hand. Jack 5 suited. I think it's okay to see a flop here getting 4.5 to 1 on our money initially. But... Because he's going to have such significant pressure put upon him, don't mind just letting this one go. He doesn't want to bust before one of the other players. Martin raises to 400 in the cutoff. Jack 9. Off suit.
I was just going to ask here, Darren, was that probably going to be a fold with the Queen Six there? I, I'm not sure what the bottom of the calling range would be. Maybe like, again, some kind of King Eight, King Nine that might be the bottom of it there. What do you think? we just seen Jack Five suited fold uh, against the button open there, the previous hand. So the bottom of the range to defend there. Yeah, something around the area of what you're suggesting. Again, for the reason Martin is just going to be applying maximum pressure to us on flop, turn and river as he should be. Jabba Solo is back in the house. Hello, Jabba. No sign of hand solo just yet. You better watch out. Better watch out for those bounty hunters. Christian going to defend with King Jack. Ten four deuce. And Martin can really just continue to keep C betting these ones. It doesn't really matter, Alan. Yeah, it's just one of those check, things. Check raised often. It's his world. I mean, they all just have to live in it for the time being. <laughs> True. And he had backdoor straight draw to go with his king high, but again, he's going to be under significant pressure on a lot of turns and rivers. Just decides to let it go now. Yeah, I think that's fine, bro. Backdoor heart maybe might continue. It's not about whether you think King High is going to be best on this flop. It's about how often you're going to get to showdown to find out. Now Babo finally has a hand. He can comfortably shove Ace Jack off to a big. Nichols. In she goes and up she flew. And when you get these kind of situations, or well, not so much Christian because he is way above the other tree, but the other tree, they just start swapping around blinds and antis with each other for a while because neither can call off. Neither one of them can call off too late. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They all end up hovering around that ten big blind zone until one of them gives gives way. Really is the war. Hearing mixed reports about this injury list for Saturday. It's so funny how much you hear different things from different people. I'll believe it when I see it, or I'll believe it when I won't see them on the pitch. Take your pick. Vittorio raising to 400k here with Queen Jack off suit. Uh, 
Sometimes Alan there with that A7 against, see they're only five handed, but them hands can become good ones to rejam because you still have yep. ball equity and you have the ace blocker. I'm not saying he definitely should have rejammed that one because it was, but he would call it under the gun. We are five handed, as I just said, but it just becomes squirrely. It's like, well, I rejammed this one. I've got nine bigs. It's, it's, a, it's just around that threshold again. Yeah, it's close, bro. It is close. But I, I, do, I do strongly agree. Like, them blocker hands to value. You're probably going to get more folds having that in your hands. Um, but yeah, it's still close, bro. It is still close. But I like the idea that you mentioned. But you see now, both players with under 10 bigs. Vittorio has separated himself as well. He's 22 bigs. Christian with 28 and then Martin with the rest of the chips in play. So this is a really interesting stuff here because no, neither player wants to bust before the other and they're both almost identical in stacks. And then for the other three, they're waiting for one of them to bust. Cat and mouse, bro. The cat and the mouse. The early bird gets the worm, but it's the second mouse that gets the cheese. <laughs> Through that. That's my wisdom for today, folks. <laughs> I love that expression. <laughs> Me too. What's going on here? This is spicy AF. Mario. <laughs> <laughs> you don't do this into the chip leader. Wow. Torio's eating his porridge this morning there. Three betting to 1.4 mil. Happy to have that. every hand. Yeah. But you see them moves, Alan. There's them ballsy moves that propel you to second in chips and separate you from the other few players remaining. Men and the boys, no? Sorry, he's in second place. Well, the men from the boys, yeah, but he's going to get away with that one because he hasn't done one of them in a long time. It's against the chip leader, and he deserves to get maximum credit there. Yeah, I like it. I like it though. It's just, as you said, ballsy. <laughs> it's not like, I don't know what I find it myself, man, but when I see it in practice and given there was a, uh, the situation with the chip leader raising, you can definitely find some, some raggy air hands like that at, at some, some of the time. But I think Vittorio is just well capable of finding that way just any time, to be fair. He just assesses the situation quite accurately and just executes. Yeah, and then the next time it makes the chip leader think about raising a little bit tighter on the button because he just got three bet and well you know how the dynamics go Vittorio mm -hmm. in the small here facing the open from Christian and now you see he just lets that one go but if you just keep letting your big blinds and antis be pounded on you are losing out on so much chips like so you have to take a spot here and there and risk it mm -hmm. for sure I agree strongly and at least when you've got a six deuce off suit with that stack size as well, very unlikely that you're going to be going to see a flop. So if you get jammed on, so be it. You're going to take it down a majority of the time. It's just mm -hmm. interesting that he chose, chose that time to do it. He'd had enough. Took a stand. And it's great to see. Also got to get maximum credit there because he's not supposed to be tree betting light when there's two stacks under 10 bigs. Might make it work more often, though. No? Yeah, but you see, you get away with one, you might try to get away with two and three. <laughs> <laughs> this is this. Push the boat. <laughs> Lou said they're glued to the chair watching this, but they're off for a bit. No hassle. Enjoy your stroll. Look at the shove on the button here, Dan. Is it a bit wide? Um... This is a show from the small with 9.5 off suit for five and a half bigs. So.
what do I think of this? I think it's oh uh, five and a half bigs. It's okay for Chip Allen. <laughs> Believe it or not, it's nine four off plus five and a half bigs. Blind v blind. I think he's had enough too. You know, he can't just survive another round. Hmm. I might let this go. I think it's okay to shove nine six off suit, for example, here. But the nine five might be just. You want to go with a pip or two tighter than what Chip would suggest. He is the shortest stack, so. And I'm not too fond of it, really, but I, I understand why he did shove. And it is really bad news on the ace eight four here, Christian. Mm -hmm. Top pair, and now Pez going to need big help here, and it just doesn't arrive. Pez. Had a really disappointing final table, but it just shows how well he played. He still managed to get into fifth place. He was our favourite to take down this event at the start, Alan. So, nice result for him. Disappointing finish, but he, he'll be happy enough. He's all smiles as he leaves the table. GG, sir. Commiserations and congratulations. Fifth place well, will take home four, 47,000 euro, which is a really nice payout for him. I was going to say there, Dan, just like that's my pick on out the window because <laughs> I did pick I did pick Pez and now he's after getting knocked out. So thankfully, thankfully, he didn't put money on it. <laughs> well, we can always do a side bet between ourselves the next time. Damn right. Does mean that four players remaining now. I, I'm going back and forth in my head there about the 9-5 offsuit. If you're to put it into a calculator, it would probably say it to be a bit tighter, but he's had no luck. He's not going to have too many opportunities where he gets to shove in the small, and he has just about enough that he has enough fold equity that his opponent can fold certain hands in the big blind. So he is just very unlucky to run into an ace X type hand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I would personally fold the 9-4 off and the 9-5 off and go with 9-6 off plus. Yeah, that's why I asked, man, because I was curious in that regard because I was thinking like the 9-6 off myself. Um, and when I seen the all-in with the 9-5, I was like, ah, not the biggest fan of that. But as I said, man, and you kind of more or less said it as well, that you know, you're still going to get a decent amount of folds. But I suppose when you get called, man, you're never too happy about that. that that's the other downside. Yeah. The other, it's really close because Babo had a very similar stack to him as well. I thought you 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 initially said it came the shove came from the button and that would be way too light in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. We'd have to be a hell of a lot tighter on the button. Yeah, yeah, I that's what I was. Wouldn't that's... even be shoving. Nine six on the button. It says on the button here for five and a half bigs for chip, it will be nine seven suited plus. That almost seems a bit too tight, <laughs> but past me, yeah. Get your points gambled in the chat, folks. Apocalypse is warning you. Time is running out with four players remaining. Got to get in on this myself. No. I'm going to pick one. I have, a, I have a bunch of uh, channel points here, so I'm going to pick one myself. Let's go <laughs> with... Uh, going to go with Vittorio. Going to go with Vittorio. Going a little for, bit different. Go for a gamble, are we? Hi. Yeah, I don't think you get to... Um, you don't get to bet on Martin anyway. <laughs> but Christian is up now over the 7 million mark. A contender has emerged. Indeed, indeed.
got to rejam this if for Babo. We've got the extra pay jump. We are now guaranteed a really chunky 59,500 euro. I think he should be rejamming that one. I get it like that, man. I Even assume though, Martin is going to be getting very, very out of line here when he's opening this button, for the most part, anyways. I assume. I, I, I think he has to somewhat worry about getting rejammed in the small blind, but like, again, I can't imagine AS4 being in that bad of shape for what Martin should be opening on the button here. Like, very, very wide range most of the time. Our work is done for the most part as well, so we're by far the shortest stack now. I think that's a small mistake. Maybe not even small because it's Martin as well. He's just got your what you said is totally right there. He's going to be opening so wide on the button. And as we've said many times, he can have some fold equity there. He doesn't have to be getting called off. And there we go. Vittorio with another three bet. He has had enough, Alan. He's putting in 1.6 million here, just leaving himself with 2.9 behind. Telling you, man. I picked the right guy. Telling you. Mm -hmm. Vittorio just going to complete here in the small blind. I think this is totally fine. Christian wants to be bumping this one up with a hand as strong as King Queen. So the raise to 6.75. Vittorio might just let this go. It is a suited king, but it is only a three kicker. Whoa. He's having none this of it then. <laughs> <laughs> this is the third option I was about to mention. I just thought he was going to fold or call. I actually thought he was going to fold, but now he's 3-bet to 1.6. I think, given the dynamic that's going on in this table, I would be inclined to shove this if I was sitting there in Christian's shoes. Easy for me to say that when I'm sitting at home. It just seems like a really nice one to do it with. I don't know if we want to just call here, Alan, for 9.25 more. It just plays better as a jam, but we are in position. What do you make of this yourself? I mean, I really, really like this, um, this tree bet here. It's really, really nice. Um, in saying that, bro, given you're in position here with the king-queen, I'd probably like appeal here because even versus this kind of situation or versus this range, king-queen is probably not going to be too, too, doing too badly. Now, again, being in position here is the big thing, whether you call or fold or even four bet jam. I think being in position here, man, is, uh, is the big variable to probably just end up calling here mostly. Ah, interesting. Wow. Getting maximum credit for the third time now, Vittorio. Vittorio. 
Yeah, because that tree boat has been happening a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's the third tree bed he's done. Do you think calling there with the King Queen down is the best play? Or do you like just folding there, given the, the, the situation how it panned out? I think it's too tight e either way. King Queen is just one of my favourite hands. And we are in position 925 more to see a flop. I like it. I also thought that when we bump it up and they come over the top there, shoving seems to me... Hold on, see, I'm, I'm, I'm forming this opinion because I can see the cards. So I've seen the two tree bets have been super light. So that's why I'm thinking, okay, I'm going all in with my king queen here. They don't know that. They don't have that information. And for them, it could easily be that Vittorio's just woken up a couple of times, which is more than capable of happening a uh, large percentage of the time. So that's why I would like to jam the king queen. But I think it's a bit too too tight to just fold it for 9.25 more. I would like to see appeal. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that very, very much so. Because we, we keep all the bluffs in there and we dominate a lot of those combos. So the more I think about it, I'm with you. I think flatting is the superior play. I, I also thought, like, you know, if we just jam here, we're going to take down... 1.6 million extra here, uncontested. But if we're called, we're in a lot of trouble. Martin takes down another one. <coughs> Quaggy Skaggy says, The big issue is the shorty and ICM can't jam just in case. He has the goods. I get you completely, though. I'm shoving it in a 1080 bounty. <laughs> yeah, the 1080 bounty is not going to have half of 160,000 euro up top. Me and you both, buddy. Stiggy says live players barely have limp traps at an FT. Online players do. You know what? That is actually a good point. It is. They haven't shown a propensity to just be limping in the small and then coming over the top so it does did look extremely strong yeah but again like that man that king queen is still doing all right even against that some sort of range now i get that probably li live players ain't limp trapping that much in that situation but you can't we've saw vittorio do some crazy things i know we can see the cards but surely to god the guys in, at the table understand that vittorio is more than capable of finding a bluff here or a raise here or whatever the case may be I, I, I do think if that was out of position, I'd probably just prefer to four bet jam. But in position there, guys, I do feel like calling. Um, and just see what happens post slop. It's not, a good, it's not going to be a bad mistake at all. It's, it's probably going to be a, the, the correct move most of the time, if not all the time. Sticky says he four bets King Queen off after the limp trap. Mm -hmm. it's, it's easy to say what you're going to do, boys, when you're not sitting in that chair playing for the half of a price of a house in Ireland. Through that. <laughs> a 
I think, yo, yeah, there is other hands that we want to jam, all our pairs, and maybe even suited wheels, etc. But with that king queen, I just think we dominate so much of the bluffing range. And we're going to outflop a lot of strong hands as well. Also, yeah. Vittorio just check raising there, or sorry, limp raising. Um, there is other hands where he just wants to limp, and then when it's raised to 675, we just shove. I think it was 25 bigs or just under over the top and avoid that situation so it just polarizes his range to nuts and air yeah agree mate and some of his nut nut hands like the, the big the bigger pairs and stuff they might just call ah no they're just gonna tree bet and try to get more money in but the more you break it down it does seem like he's gonna have a lot of those bluffy type hands that he wants to try just take down the pot pre with mm -hmm. plus maybe he's probably getting a bit um a bit ambitious after getting the first two true he's like i'm going i'm going for three three is the magic number he re he really went for the, the 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 three the three three bets like that man in the space of five hands like like out of nowhere with like six two off king seven off and then limp limp raises the king three suited blind be blind i mean credit where it's due bro no credit where it's due in terms of aggression yeah, 100%. I think you picked the right guy there. Well, obviously, you're not allowed to pick Martin. <laughs> and the next hand is going to be the last hand before an 18-minute break. I've got some turkey I need to attend to. Definitely have some turkey to, 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 to attend to myself. Maybe not turkey, but definitely have some grub to... <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be ready just on time good timing Air fire. I would say no because of the oven ah that's right I remember you mentioned it last night that's right the oven is back back in action get all the grub you can into Alan to propel us over the finish line Oh, it's badly needed, a lot of bro. Action to go. I'm going to, going to keep, keep the carbs to a minimum. Start falling asleep in front of the monitor, yeah? <laughs> Carb overload. Not again. Well, we got through 12 hours yesterday and a long stream the night before, so we're, we're, we're running well, we're doing well. We could just run well at the felt now. Everything will be gravy. Yes, sir. Um, don't like this check back by Babo. We want to shove here all day with the ace in our hand. Sub ten bigs. Like that's such a massive loss there, Dan. Surely, like checking back the checking back or whatever pre flop, and then just having to fold the ace three there when he could have just took down the the, the blinds and antis. Like massive mistake it's, there, in my opinion. But yeah, yeah, it's a big mistake. But he, you can see around the rings around his eyes. He looks very fatigued, and. He's up against it now when we get back after the break. Okay, folks, we are going to go get some grub, get some dinner, whatever the case may be. We'll be right back. Stay tuned for lots more live action, live from the King's Resort in Razvodov. Back in a few moments. Yeah, I want to keep the first leg alive <laughs> and make a pressure for uh, mid stacks. Yeah, yeah, I was preparing myself for this tournament. I was watching the streams uh, yesterday and the day before and make some notes. And one uh, my friend helping me, be, uh, helping me with this. So I know the players. Uh, seed number one is very good, uh, very aggressive player and the other are solid. <laughs> Uh, I think I will be watching the last year and the before, how people play their um, bots, uh, what's their strategy, uh, how it's going, because, uh, because it's a very long structure. And I don't know, I know uh, in the VSOP in Vegas, uh, they are waiting for a hand, but I don't think so it will be like here, because uh, many, many qualifications from the final table will be there and I think it will be a very good tournament and very easy field from start. <laughs> the average stack creeping 
ever closer to a million. Je to tam 400, kde si stovky, 100 tisíc. 4, 5? Milión. Milión spolu. How much? Milión together. Milión. Okay. Exactly. Plus 50. 36 players remaining now. Thomas raises to 50k. Mexi calling in the hijack with the Jack Nine of Clubs. Giuseppe not wanting to see a flop with the King Seven off suit. We go heads up to the flop. Mexi in position on Ace 10 4, two hearts. Thomas flopping a set. That's 50k and a quick call from Mexi. Turn giving him a world of outs. The eight of clubs. And oh boy, we've got action. And from Thomas, I don't want to be going too small here with two flush draws on board. I want to bet something like 150. Bets 125. Mexi with the open ender and the flush draw. You can see above his head his eight outs. Looks like he's going for a raise here. A raise to 350. Sweet music to Thomas's ears. All in. Call. Thomas moves all in. Maxi quickly calling. This pot spiraling out of control, out of nowhere. 2.2 million in this pot, ladies and gentlemen. That is 110 big blinds as we are going to see the river. Maxi is going to have over 3 million if he hits. Thomas is going to have 2.2 if he can hold. What a moment for both players here. The river is a brick, the tree of diamonds. Sit back down, Thomas. Mexi going to lose a massive chunk of his stack. Thomas now going to be playing 110 big blinds. What a difference a hand can make. Well, you know what, Apocalypse? You can't say that wasn't an action turn. We want action on this channel, and we've had non-stop action for this first hour of play. We are only live 60 minutes and look at all the hands we've got to witness if i call is is rob allowed to raise after or no no he makes it come out <coughs> It's 800, 800. <laughs> this time you try, yeah? In peace, wrong. I'm saying four? 3.9. Rob doesn't like limps.
If I call, is, is Rob allowed to race after or no? No? Because he makes it how much no, for the race? Is. I am. He is it. What's 38? Because, because of 100, it's not 39. <laughs> it's possible or not possible? Impossible. Impossible. <laughs> Impossible. Impossible. <laughs> right. <laughs> I wanted to play. Eight hundred donation. Twenty-nine. Three. Yeah. Alright. Oh. Oh, yeah, right. Show down as well, yeah. Oh, you got the note push off. Good luck. That one? I flop set of sevens. Can't your stack make it more easy? Empty. Okay. You don't need to count. You have more. So we have nine. Only now and Umen. What about this? Okay, well, yeah. Nice. Blind v blind. Sam Grafton, five cards away from being up to eight million in chips and number 99 of this final table. Are you rooting for me? No. You're too professional. You're too yeah, no, I want, to, I want to see a seven right in the door. Too much. Nicky P being honest, saying he wants to see a seven right in the door. If Squiddy can hold here, it's going to have over 30 big blinds, needs to fade a seven, and now needs to fade a six or a jack. Seven would give him the straight. Adam's going from three to seven outs. I wish you called the Kings. Ten on the turn. Now giving Adam some chop outs. Queen of Spades on the river. And Sam Grafton, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, gambling around. Now up to eight million in chips, looking for his first bracelet. Okay, to win 3.5, Oh my Chips. days. Uh, oh Check. no. Let's have a little look and see how many likes we're at on YouTube. 54 
Uh, $6,800. Is that the same jacket? <laughs> I'm just checking, is it the same jacket? Hang on, hang on. Hang on. I have to concede this one. Yeah, chat saying 7k. Yeah. Alright, 19. 19 euros. I don't think you knew it was Louis Vuitton, did you? I know I didn't, I just saw it was a leather jacket. I'm not a fashion kind of guy. Fashion ace there. 8 3 deuce on the flop. Espen flopping top pair. Ivan was second pair. As Henry's going to step out for just a few seconds, he's going to go spend his 10 euros. He's just won. How much is that? 32. Always 32. Small enough to determine the aggression. 8 3 deuce with two diamonds. Lupu with the four high backdoor flush draw. Goat with the five high backdoor flush draw. Goat, of course, rocking the gut shot as well. Does not come in, but the jack of diamonds does roll off on the turn. Eswin has made two pair. Ivan has also made two pair. And Goat is the man stepping out here. 4,400 in there. He's going to rep that turned flush. That's 3.3k. Goodbye. 60% of that jacket. It's called LV Chic Leather Blouson. Sounds <laughs> awesome. Sounds a little too expensive for me as Esmond, of course, makes the call. Whereas Malika probably spending her winnings from last night. She was a big winner last night. She will hopefully be joining a little later on. <laughs> Similarly to last night, she was not here at the beginning. She rocked up halfway through, crushed some souls. <laughs> And then sailed off into the sun. We might see her see her later on this evening. Played very well last night. Ran very well too, of course. <laughs> oh my days! Oh no! Ivan makes a boat. Espen makes a boat. There is no way this doesn't go in. <laughs> Running case jacks. <laughs> and Goge is in there with six high. 10k is the bet, boys and girls. Esmin with the stone cold nuts. Ivan with the second nuts. I can't believe this has run out the way it has. Esmin Classic Beef is dreaming of Vegas and the beeping mirage right now. Mr. Colvin coming back into the booth. What timing, Henry? We've got boat over boat over six high. Goge in there firing for 10k with six high. And it's come running jacks, Henry. What do you think about that? Disgusting run out. There's the all-in from Espen. Ivan snap rejams. Wow. Nuts against second nuts. And I'm bluffing with five six. Wow. Truly incredible. Yeah, what is going on? Is the Elkie still standing? In these <laughs> games, come on. No more needles, mate. You won your 29 euros. Must be nice. Indeed, KML. Hundred and twenty two thousand euro pop.
what's up? Good morning. Are you ready for today? Yeah. See you at Kings. So welcome back to the action, guys. I think Dan just maybe a slight bit delay here. No stress at all. No happy, more than happy to continue coverage while he comes back from the break. As he always says, I'll scratch your back and I'll scratch mine. So vice versa right now, guys. Welcome back to the action. We are four-handed here at the moment. Four-handed here with the WSOP circuit main event. Down to the final four. Down to the final four. Let's see what Babo decides to do here. With the 5 4 suited, gets out of the way. <coughs> Vittorio now with the Queen 9 in the small blind. Ooh, Christian waking up with a big slick here in the big blind. We shall see what happens here, guys. I imagine Vittorio is probably going to limp call here most of the time, I guess. Might end up limp folding, depending on the size him, but it'll be interesting to see what happens here nonetheless. There is the raise from Christian. Little over 3x here. I do think like Vittorio might end up falling here, but he does decide to call. <laughs> Apocalypse says Ace King Suit is such a bad drawing hand. It is when you miss, bro, but when you hit, it's like Vegas. 
and the effing mirage. <laughs> we do see Vittorio hitting the second pair here, which puts him into a 3 to 1 favourite at the moment. But obviously, Christian has two overs and a lot of backdoor draws, so we'll see what happens. He does decide to check back, which I'm a fan of. Ace King is still going to be ahead here a decent amount of the time, and that's quite the interesting turn card. I think Vittorio can be pretty confident most of the time that when Christian checks back this flop, his 9 is going to be good here a lot of the time. I'm not going to say all the time because it won't be, but the vast majority of the time his 9x is going to be good. I'd like to see a small size in here from Vittorio. Yeah, seems good. Seems good. Obviously, Christian, very, very standard call here. Nothing else to do. Last thing you want to do is raise here, balloon the pot with a hand that just doesn't justify it. When actually, the funny part is we can still be ahead here sometimes. What the river brings, guys. Be interested to see if Vittorio feels he could potentially value bet here again. But he might feel it's a bit on the thinner side. I would not mind another small bet here. I think the queen kicker is quite relevant here in terms of hand strength with the nine here. And the thing is as well, I don't think Christian checks back that many jack X on the flop here. So we will be pretty confident that Vittorio has the best hand here a lot of the time. So usually when that's the case, guys, going for another small bet on the river here is not going to be a mistake. He does find the bet. Yeah, very, very small bet here. And the thing is, I don't think Vittorio ever picks this with a bluff. Or sorry, with a bluff. So if it's never a bluff here, guys, or it's just some thin value with something like this, 9x, maybe some ace-8 or king-8 would be another good example here. Um... I know Christian's getting <laughs> very good odds here, but at the same time, guys, I don't think he's ever going to be ahead that often. I just think with Vittorio, if he was ever bluffing here, he would never pick this size on the river. I don't think anyways. I think if Christian thinks about this long enough that, as I said, given that Vittorio bets here on the river, yeah, I like the fold. I mean, you don't beat much here, even though you are getting an amazing price, you just don't beat much there, ever. Very well played for Vittorio there also. Pretty standard open here for Vittorio. Pretty standard fold here for Christian too. It's probably up there for one of the, or sorry, I should say it's probably bottom of the calling range here for Martin. These sort of offsuit, offsuit connected hands. Stuff like 5, 6, 4, 5 in the same kind of category of the hand strength. And uh, quite an interesting flop for both players here. Obviously have the same hand. 
Vittorio has some backdoor flush draw outs for extra equity. He does decide to check it back, interestingly enough. I like that check back as well, because if we bet and get raised here, we don't want to start piling in money with these sort of hands on this sort of texture, especially with this combo of 7-6 of spades. And again, like that, guys, this block bet on the turn here is very, very similar to the Queen-9 hand that we just played originally. Same situation, flop checks through, small bet on the turn. Finally played by both. And both rivered the straight. <laughs> Watch the money go in, guys, to only see a split. <laughs> I'd like to see either another small bet here from Martin. I don't think we can go too big here. So maybe something around 800 to a million. I think it's a good size in here. The thing is, if you want worse to call here, yeah. So he goes for a milli. Yeah, and he calls as well. So finally played by both. I thought, um, I thought Vittorio might end up raising the river there. I'm surprised he didn't, but it is a flush completing river, so... Obviously, Martin can still have some flushes there, so it's probably fine either way. Never fear, Action Man Dan is back and here. There he is. How are you, Al? What's going on, my man? Um, the turkey wasn't cooked in time, and I didn't have the heart <laughs> to let it go another two hours, so I had to make some adjustments to the oven. You did the right thing, bro. <laughs> well, yeah, needed fuel to get us over the finish line. Where would I be without you? I'm not used to having this luxury of taking an extra five minutes, so it's awesome. <laughs> goes a long way, bro. Sometimes the extra five goes a long way. Well, yeah, I'm used to like 12 to 15 minute breaks, but that one was 19 minutes, and it certainly wasn't long enough to eat a Sunday dinner. Sunday dinner on a <laughs> Tuesday. <laughs> I only missed a couple of hands. Did I miss anything noteworthy? Yeah, there was actually a... Uh... Well, we'll tear this. We'll see this hand first. I'll give you a review then in a moment. Yeah, no hassle at all. Babo in with the best of it here. Nine nine is the flop. Martin could. Easily get a chop out of this one. Turns a 10. Chop it up, boys. What's that saying? Everybody loves a chop pot, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> we're not, no, we're not, we, I don't know what you're talking about. Never heard that in my life. We don't, <laughs> we don't associate ourselves with that now. No, but um, there was one interesting hand, bro. Um, I think it was like blind v blind, Vittorio limped the queen nine, and uh, I forget who was in the big blind, but they had ace-king suited either way, bro, on the isolate, uh, Vittorio calls, flop came like, jack eight, sorry, jack nine, four, something like that, uh, flop went check, check, uh, eight of diamonds on the turn, which gave um, Christian the two, obviously the two overs on the flush draw, but I really liked Vittorio's bet on the turn, man, he went for a block size on the turn with the queen nine. And uh, obviously, Ace King has to call with the flush draw, the two overs, etc. But I think the river was a brick again, man. And I really liked Vittorio's bet size, and he bet like, I don't know, 500k into maybe 3 million or something like that. And um, we do have a call here. Other than that, yeah, we, we, Christian decided to fall the river, but I, I, I really like the two sizes by uh, Vittorio, both turn and river in that, in that hand exactly. He's impressed us about four or five times now, Alan. Mm -hmm, and he's set mm -hmm. to eliminate Babo here at 62% of the time. Four in the window, but an eight. Also, Babo now, four to one favorite. 
to double up back up to almost 10 big blinds <laughs> until the turn no <laughs> <laughs> well it's good for you he's your boy <laughs> oh my god no. he hits the river <laughs> brilliant brilliant hand <laughs> wow Yeah, that seems like uh, Vittorio is... Maybe someone's had a chat with him on one of the breaks or something. He's really upped his game. Mm-hmm. Goes back Roller to what I was saying earlier there. about... Yeah, having, having a team behind it. Yeah, well, uh, that was a bad run out for him. He would have eliminated a player, got the guts of a 20 grand pay jump. Well, from 60K all the way to 73 and a half. 13 and a half. 14,000. But the river keeps Babo around. Some big page on snow, Dan. Oh, it's big boy poker. Kitty game down the street. Just going to say raw it. Asked, <laughs> so Raw asked, my turkey have a crispy two and a half inch crust. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> No, they were just the legs this time. The big, massive legs. They are about, um, I think two, two legs is about 1.2 kilo, like including the bones. Like, they're huge. <laughs> Turkey for days. Well, <laughs> not when you've only got a few minutes. Aye. I've given myself indigestion on this channel more times. <laughs> Didn't even have time to go for the start. Saved after the head was popping. Very sweet thing today. Big bowl of ice cream will be had. Mhm. Mm <laughs> and I dare talk it off the most diet yesterday. Out the window, miss. <laughs> kind of hard, yeah. I'm talking about this. I'm not going to be too deep into it. I'm kind of hard when I'm streaming. It's like the reward system. You run down after two hours and you're going to pick whatever you can find and run back up. Yeah, I think if I was doing this the whole time, man, or, or, or consistently most weekends, like, like like yourself, I would be meal prepping like hell at the weekends, man, just to have it, just to, you know, just for convenience sake, because, you know, I know we got the dinner break for like 25 to 30 minutes there last night, was it, you know, good enough time to uh, prep some food if you needed to do it, but I do think, man, if I was in your situation, like, I'd be smart about my uh, choices for food on these kind of 10 to 15 minute breaks because yeah, there's, not a lot, there's not a lot you can do in 10 or 15 minutes. There is some things, but when you want to actually make a good quality meal, I don't think that's a big enough time frame, um, in my opinion anyways. Yeah, no, the, uh, the air fryer is your friend, but to a point, it's so easy to just throw something processed in there. I'm with you mm -hmm. all the way on that one. When it gets around to this time, um, I just start squirreling. So I just grab nuts, fruit, berries, uh, pineapple especially and pistachios you get some green tea and I go up and I try not to go back downstairs to eat chocolate and cake yeah I was a little bit guilty of that myself to. last night yeah. I think I was a little bit guilty of that not sure Do you uh, see any merit for raising for min off the ish jack suit there, Dan, off that whatever 13, 14 big blind stack? I thought it was 12, but because, uh, yeah, he's yeah. just picked up two and a half there, so he would have had 11 and a half. But because uh, it's suited, you could raise call. Mm. Probably doesn't want to lose chips. It's better to just take the blinds and antis down because Christian has almost identical chip stack as him. That we might top, yeah. but maybe if you're not. I'm not saying you're throwing caution to the wind with the ICM, but look, as I keep saying, a lot of your work is done here. Uh, obviously, the biggest pay jumps are about to come, but I mean, in terms mm -hmm. of your ICM, you're, if you're one of the shortest stacks, you don't want to be busting before the other fella, but it's, it might be a great opportunity to just raise call with a hand as strong as Ace Jack there. Yeah, I can see the merit to it.
<laughs> no skills says Dave's hot chicken totally wrecked once me on it once he was on a dinner break. <laughs> <laughs> being, re being wrecked by more carb carby meals at these hotels and places and buffets, mm. whatever. Takeaways, dominoes late at night, what they all add up sitting at the table and you can't even think straight let alone sit straight Vittorio raising the minimum here with the Kings and Babo oh my god he's picked oh, ill timing missed timing big time missed big timing step here from Babo good timing here for your man Vittorio seven million in this pot this is a huge pot for this tournament Vittorio looking cool as a cucumber. His work is done. There's nothing he can do. He is the one standing up and away when it's Babo, the one at risk. No. <laughs> Eight, four, four. And now Babo, 33% equity to double up. Oh Jeez. no, it's the 10 of clubs on the turn. How unlucky for Vittorio. He stands up and stretches. Can... Brilliant. There's nothing he can do. Can't get lucky on the river. And Babo fist bumping now. <laughs> I really feel for Vittorio there. Well, that puts a dent in my odds. Is there any justification, Dan, for potentially shoving the Queen 7 there against Vittorio there? I mean, I assume he's going to be open and wide, so, but again, is, is it better to shove, like, a King 7, A7 there versus Queen 7 in terms of blockers? I assume so, no? I would just like to see a flop there for 250 more. Agreed. It seemed like he was a, he's a bit impatient, wanted to get something going. Um, I missed one or two hands there, so I don't know. It's not like Vittorio's opening every hand. Yeah, I think if we haven't been reshoving combos like that, then we don't just start doing that out of nowhere. Um, yeah. You can do this. Like, I've seen top stake regs do this online. Rejam there. I think I have 13 bigs, though. I just want to see a flop. And I, I, do, I'm, I'm, I do think, yeah, the, the blocker is probably better, the King-7 or the A-7. And if we're unsuited, the A-7 or King-7, I might rejam. But the, when we can just see a flop and get it in, because there's just so much more playability when we hit a flush draw. We can just check jam. We get all that extra value from the C-Bet. Yeah, yeah, agreed. And Babo now, geez, he finds himself with a nice stack here with over 7 million facing the open from Martin. When you put it this way, Alan, he's only 20 big blinds behind Martin now. That's true. Going There's through. not much in it then. No, it always evens out. It doesn't always even out, but it, it has a tendency to do this when mm -hmm. the average stack is between that 20 to 30 big blind zone. It's fair to say the players are very evenly matched. They all have their different attributes and skills that they're bringing to the table. And I think that was a good shove from the ace 10. You're rarely ever going to get called. You're going to take it down pre and no reason to. Some people will say that that's way too many blinds to be shoving there, but it's just sub 30. And those kind of hands, we don't really want to be tree. It's nearly just too strong to tree bet fold. Not not that we we're, going, we're going to call off, but we just want to take that move away from that four bet ripping uh, away from our opponent. Agreed. Thank 
So Christian now in the small blind with 12 bigs, think he wants to just be jamming this one. Martin's going to wake up here with the Jeffries. Is going to call Christian making a standard jam with King Eight off 13 bigs. Martin going to pick him off here, and this is a big moment for the tournament once more with four remaining, 6.7 million in the pot. King needed a Kings for Christian, or he could be eliminated. It's King on the desk. Oof. Horrible. It's Bad Beat City, <laughs> three hands in a row almost. At least two anyway. But the last two all-ins, the turn is the ace of hearts. It ain't over yet. Martin now with 25% equity as we hit the river, picking up a flush draw. Oh, it's the ace of spades. So that <laughs> this is such a disheartening situation for Martin. Both players have doubled up now. Things are becoming very even, Stevens, and we've got a hell of a four-handed affair on our hands. So funny, Alan. We could easily just be heads up right now. It's gone the yeah, other way. Man. Martin's hating this. Martin is getting... His tail is being chased hard here. See that he's got 25% of the chips in play. It's going to be almost even between the four now. Watch this. Okay, sorry. Well, Vittorio now 14, but the other two, 27. Just eight big blinds separating the four, and they're swapping around the blinds and antis like crazy. So there's really not much in it at all. I yep. forgot Vittorio took that hit, so he is the clear short stack now with 14 bigs. Wow. Well, Exciting stuff since I got back from the break. Damn right. Christian raising to 500k here on the button, pocket eights. Now Martin, just with 8.6 million. Look how close this is now, Babo at seven and a half.
Babo is going to defend with the Queen 9. Flop is 10, 7, 4. It's going to go check, check. Sorry. Babo checking, Christian. I think he wants to be betting this one more than checking, Alan. What do you think? Yeah, defo, man. I mean, I don't mind checking back some of the time. I don't mind betting. But I think in this situation where, again, chips are just worth everything, bro, I'd probably be betting this way more often for that reason. Um, in saying that, there might be some merits to checking back here because if you get check raised, having eights here, even though you have eights with a heart, again, again, mate, it's like these chips are worth a bit at the moment. Um, but, yeah, overall versus the big blinds, Want to take down the pot, man? Just bet your hand. Deny equity. Still get called by worse like 4x, 5s, 6s, 7x. Although maybe 4s and 5s. Or maybe 5s and 6s is already 3 bets pre-flop. Um, but definitely like betting there. Definitely like betting most of the time. Just take down the pot. On to the next hand. Yeah, I agree. I think we also block any straight draws that might decide to check raises. Stuff like that. Yep. We also have a heart in our hand, which is nice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Defo. Christian with ace king suited. What a hand to pick up here, four handed. Mm hmm. Vittorio in the big blind, think he just wants to be re-jamming this one. Standard stuff will re-jam, is of course going to get snap called. And your buddy's at risk for the third time here. Well, sorry, the first time he wasn't at risk. <laughs> at risk now though, <laughs> definitely. Flop is queen seven seven. Vittorio needing help and needing a quick. He is a four to one dog here as we hit the turn. Turn does give him a diamond. Always a surprise around the corner at Kings. Is there another another twist in the tail to be had here as we hit the river? Almost seven million in the pot. River is the nine of spades. He cannot do it. Vittorio has been eliminated in fourth place. What a run for the youngster. Oh. I don't know, he's nah. not that young, but young enough. He's ran out of the building, it looks like. Bit strange. Oh. Yeah, he's not, he's not happy, and I don't blame him. That king's costing him <laughs> serious amount of cheddar, Alan. Like, yeah. I don't know how much. We can work it out later. I don't want to. I don't want to disclose that kind of information. It could be. It's, it's, it's 50 a, G's we're dealing with. Yeah, I was. I was just going to say it's. It's worth a bit. That's enough in itself. Just to say that. <laughs> he smashed the glass on the way out, man. <laughs> oh no. I think now. So we're going to go on, on a five-minute break here. These guys are just going to um, take a tiny little breather before three-handed play will commence. Don't go anywhere. This has just been exhilarating. 11 million playing close to 9, playing close to close to 7.2, playing 8.6 with the chip leader out in front with 45 bigs with 11.2 million. I will see you all in a few moments. Venus. 
Yeah, uh, first of all, I'm really sorry for my for what I've done. I was very out of myself. And no, it's the first time because it's uh, quite the biggest final table of my life, so it's, uh, it's very bad. Uh, it's, uh, it's difficult to accept because I think I played good poker and so when, when you go showdown, you're very favorite and you, and you lost in such a situation. It's, difficult to control but <laughs> I apologize and <laughs> uh, yeah I, I have just a good on, a good end to reshov and I just reshoved and <laughs> it went wrong <laughs> ah for sure the the no the, the end that I've lost with the kings versus queen eight or queen seven suited I think and uh, that was very important because uh, if I win this, that end, I'm uh, chief, chief leader, close to chief leader, and uh, we are three left instead of four. So it's a pay jump, chief leading, and very important end. So that's the most important, I think. Most <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I play professionally, so I, um, I used to study in a, in a group. And uh, now I'm studying by myself, uh, doing yeah my thing, my stuff, and yeah it's going good. I like my my life. I like this this game, but sometimes could be very very cruel, and we accept it. <laughs> All in, All in cold. Five away. I mean, it's being pretty fast paced. From either you know? being down to four. As a spectacle. As you have. Don't give him all, but don't fucking tell him. Oh, wow. I mean, I had naked sixes. Like, sixes? The worst. I mean, the way my range plays is like Bob, the worst pair. And it's just like. Yeah. Are they going to deal the turn? I mean, it's just like a Nazi spot. Sure. That was such a lot. Sweaty turn card. Open. Looking for a six. 8, 10, or a king to eliminate Timothy Adams. And it's the king of hearts on the river. One of the best players in the world, Timothy Adams, fresh off of his 100K victory here just a couple of days ago, comes up short. Embrace at event number 11, fifth place for 159,000 euros. The guy was opening from UTG, I think, and I was thinking about to tribet him or calling. But when I uh, will tribet him and uh, he will be shoving me, it will be very tough spot to fall or call, I don't know. So I decided just to call. 
and because I know nobody over me behind me is very aggressive and will be stealing the pot and I can pay, uh, play in the position but the guy <laughs> next to me was squeezing and uh, the original razor was folding but the price was very good because I was calling like one to four and I know uh, how he plays so I decided to call and uh, because I know when he not uh, hit, uh, he will be not aggressive, so I can uh, easily go to showdown with the uh, Pokey Knights. And ta da da, <laughs> I hit the set. <laughs> so it was very, very easy to play. Uh, flop came, check, check. Uh, then, uh, then I uh, bet because uh, there was an opening flash. So I want to protect my hand and uh, take a value. And River come 10, uh, make a full house for me, so it helped me very much. And I was thinking uh, what he can have and what he can call. So I decided to back big, like a uh, missed flash draw, and maybe make a hero call with Ace King or some uh, smaller pair. And lucky for me, he got the Queens. I think Dan might be going for a uh, round two with the turkey guys, so <laughs> got to uh, chime in until he comes back. Triander here guys, the WSP C main event final table. Final three players guys. Very, very exciting. Remaining couple of hours left. Well, depending, could be over sooner than that, but either way, an exciting time to be watching this stream. we got Martin now coming in for a raise with a 10-5 suitors. Going to be defended by Christian in the big blind. Yep, we're back. There we <laughs> go. We're there he a is. Bit of a bit of a bit of a lull from that uh, <laughs> that, that that exit strategy. Hmm. Definitely uh, questionable, no. <laughs> yeah, I've I've had tantrums myself. There's one that can still be found online somewhere, but I'm not about to tell people where it can be found. I don't, I uh, I don't blame you one bit. Sto storming. I don't even know if you've seen it, Alan. I, 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 Liv Bree was commentating on an old UK and Ireland poker tour, and I got a, a series of... You're, uh, the, basically, what happened was my version of events. I made a very bad rejam ICM-wise, and then tried to make someone fold a very strong hand where they just didn't. I rejammed A6 for way too many blinds. Uh, it's the short story. And then I shoved all in for a spectrum of like 13, 14 bigs with like Queen Jack suited, I think it was. And the button hasn't seen that I've moved all in. So he's gone to raise. But because he said whatever he was doing, he has essentially eliminated me from my biggest final table er, er, ever at the age of 21. And he, he had King Jack. He had me dominated. And he was definitely folding to be all in. But he tried to say he was going to call anyway. And I said, no, he wasn't. He was folding and it stormed off. <laughs> there. <laughs> there you go. You're calling me the turkey whisperer. Oh, jeez. It's raw. I don't know if... Yeah, I, 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 
I was um, joking with the chat before you came back that um, I said Dan must be gone for a round two with the turkey, so I said I'll chime in. <laughs> <laughs> I went down to bring the leftovers downstairs to the dogs. <laughs> the turkey whisperer, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll never forget the turkey has tryptophan, which is converted to 5-HTP, which is what gives us serotonin, which is what makes us happy, so it is one of the best meats you could eat. Dropping Talk knowledge again, Alan. Non-poker knowledge that can be used to make you play better poker. <laughs> what a win, win, world we live in. Yeah. <laughs> Turkey Whisper is brilliant. One, one dude almost broke his steer, steering wheel on break after he went out with the thirty dollar rebuy. I'll never give someone the satisfaction of me raging. <laughs> it's kind of one of the big things with online, actually, man. That like you know, if you do break a mouse, or you do break a monitor. It's in your own bedroom. It's in your own four walls. Nobody's gonna know. Nobody's supposed to know, but sometimes they know. <laughs> sometimes it's a uh, click a house, or click a mouse, lose a house. Instead of winning one, um, I've had more true, true. mouses mouses fail on me. I've uh, oh, if I had a euro for every time I've misclicked, because if you're a mass multi-tabler, it's going to happen way more than it should. Mm -hmm. We'll leave it at that. here all right on the turn here cold check there is a hard so he did he figured there after he's coming out i had to steal from there though he clearly didn't mean to wasn't near out for break breaking glass off someone's face <laughs> He's probably just wiped what was nearest to him. Martin is going to raise here to 800k. Just take that down. I'm still laughing at the turkey whisperer, man. <laughs> the Christian here with the ASA, guys. Comes in for a raise. Comes in for oh, a raise from men. What's going on there? I've refreshed the page. Blue with the mic. Eating all the turkey. Let's go. There you go. <laughs> Do you have any, you want to know where the broken glass finished in the turkey? <laughs> Brilliant. 
Oh, he's a glass act. <laughs> Chad, it's funny, bro, no? Brilliant. I love it. I love this time of the evening. The madness ensues. It's not even anywhere close to midnight where it usually starts kicking off. <laughs> but at the rate these players are playing, I don't think we're going to be around to midnight tonight. Medicinal turkey. What an epic final table. This has been really, really enjoyable to commentate on. There's been so much in interesting spots. A lot of closely contended stacks that just maneuvering their way around all the different situations makes me want to consider even playing a tournament myself. <laughs> You're crazy. <laughs> Don't do it, man. Don't do it. Dun, dun, dun. Martin betting 400k here, flopping the joint, the bottom, the arse end of it, as we call it in Ireland, but still a straight nonetheless. <laughs> So the current payout now, Alan, is €73,450. A lot of coin. A lot of coin. A lot of coin with three remaining. I'm not sure what the strategy here is for all three players involved. Martin's still the chip leader, but not by much. There's not much in it between the three, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We've lost gorgeous George. Martin back to 13 and a half million now. And the players must be buzzing. But as I always say, decision fatigue starts to set in. You can only make so many good decisions in a day. They need to remain composed. They're in the championship rounds. Not quite the final hurdle. They're not heads up yet. But surely they've That's got what I'm that telling glory. myself too. <laughs> yeah, they've got the title <laughs> in their sights. You can nearly reach out and grab it at this stage. What an amazing achievement for all three remaining players. Babo. Babo has he became the new Lenny, didn't he? He came back up from the from the damsel in distress time and time again. Very well done. Christian going to complete with King Nine. So what's your strategy here? I know that you are the cash expert, not the tournament expert, but how much, uh, how more aggressive are you getting here three-handed? Are you just going to try play smallish pots? And if you're Martin, are you just applying maximum pressure? Between Christian and Babbo, they're playing very similar stacks, so the, neither of them want to bust before the other. And Martin with a nearly two-to-one chip lead if he wins this pot. It's um, 
It's an interesting dynamic, man, because obviously second and third are relatively close to the chips. And if Martin loses one big pot, i.e. doubles up one of the guys in second or third, then it's literally a swap in places in terms of chip stacks. So Martin, like, yeah, okay, probably a two-to-one chip lead on average here. But at the same time, bro, lose a couple of pots, it's not going to be too difficult for the other guys to catch up on you. So I'm not going to say get out of line. Obviously, time your... I mean, you've been saying this anyway the last two or three, two or three days, man, that of course he might have the stack. Yeah, okay, you can push it around. But be smart about it. Don't overinvest. Don't do things that you probably shouldn't need to do. And just take your time, bro. Look, hour-long blinds. Only thing is, I'll say, you're in the blinds every single hand or every, what, basically every second or third hand. You're paying a small blind or, or a big blind. So, again, like that, you've got to be aggressive. Three max, man, six max, all them sort of variables. You're just in the blinds so often. So you need to be fighting and fighting and fighting. Um, in terms of, like, that blind v. blind situation, man, Again, that's going to come up super, super frequently. So you need to be playing it very, very well. Um, and I think, I, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I do think a lot of guys that play MTTs, they usually say when it kind of gets to shorthanded and then when it gets to heads up that they always kind of say, well, my shorthanded game isn't good or my heads up game isn't good. So we're going to find out if that's going to be the case here for these three remaining players. Very, very cool. It's a very, very cool situation to see. And again, like that, bro, they're playing for a lot of coin, a lot of coin up top. So the pressure is on them. Yeah, I think that's uh, all valid points. Very well put. Um, I'm trying to see who I think is the better player out of the three. They've both had their flaws, or all three have had their flaws, and all three have shown they've done really interesting things at different times that the other player mightn't do. So they all bring something different to the table. Babo seems, yeah, I think it's safe to say out of the three remaining players, he is the most likely to go off on one. Mm, can see that too. Christian has played a very tight solid game even a good example of that is the king queen off suit hand where he gave credit to vittorio mm. i think babo might have shoved there uh or at least seen a flop i think martin would have done the same yeah yeah i can see that too and then martin we've seen is just it's taking too much time but again maybe someone's had a word with martin telling them what we were saying earlier about him t mm. just making his decision. He seems to have slowed down his thought process in a good way. You know, you know what's interesting about this hand with the 10-9 here? I don't even know if I like check calling this. I know we have a straight no. draw with us and a monotone texture. It's like, what are we really hoping for? Like it has to be like a... Yeah, yeah, I, t I feel the same, bro. I feel the same. And again, like that, preserving your stack. One big blind here, two big blinds there. Man, compound effect, domino effect, whatever way you want to phrase it. They start adding up. I do think we should check for all this flop. I know we've ousted it straight, but it has to be a non-spade turn, and that's just not going to happen that often. Now we have to bluff here, but again, Christian betting this flop, bro, a lot of the time he's going to have at least a one-spade hand, I think anyways. Yeah, and then, so this is again the compound mistake. Does Babo find himself coming to the river one of the worst hands he can have? Yes, he has a pair of nines, but is he going to just turn it into a bluff here? And try to rep a flush or does he just give up there's nearly two million in the pot and he probably knows he can't win a showdown so look see he's reaching for chips you could call me mystic action dan because i predict these things he's going, going I, for the I, full I, pot i will say that if you do check call this flop and the turn goes check check you have a mandatory bluff on this river like it's like the fact if you if you if he decided to check this nine hoping that he's ever going to win he's deluded do you know what I mean? It's like you have to bet this river once you check call the flop. I'm not a strong advocate of check calling the flop in the first way on this specific texture. But if you do, turn goes check, check. You have absolutely no choice but to bluff this river. Um, and this size I like, it's extremely polar. It's extremely polar. And it makes this, these, these hands like 7x or 7 of spades, 8 of spades, even the 10 of spades in a relatively tough spot. Well played. Yes, really, really nice bluff to get through. And that's a great pot to take down for Babo. We'll give him momentum. I was just going to say there as well, from Martin's perspective, psychologically, like he's barely lost. He's had the chip lead for most of this final table. Mm. So if I was to give him 
a compliment or an attribute. He's really good at holding on to his chips. Now, yeah, he's had true. the deck hit, hit him in the face multiple times. Let's get that straight. But he is. He's showing... He stays away from other spots. He shies away and then applies... He'll, he'll let one spot go so he can apply maximum pressure in another. Where Babo more likely to go, you know what? F this. I'm, go, I'm going for it here. I'm going with my read. <laughs> and Christian just playing relatively tight, solid game. It was Vittorio that was impressing the most there with his uh, sexy tree bets, etc. We haven't really seen Babo do much of that or Christian. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Speaking of three bets, Babo going for this one here with the Ace Queen off suit. And this is a big hand for Martin, especially three handed. Do we just four bet rip here? Three handed like this, Dan, it's a strong ass hand. It's a strong ass hand. Now, whether you should do it or not, I think we should. I think this is just like, again, three handed broad. These Ace X suited are. Ah, it's. I think the fact that we're in position, man, is kind of similar to that king-queen hand. That maybe if you were out of position here, and he does decide to just rip it. Yeah. I don't blame him. I, I don't predict, blame him. I did predict he was going a four-bet rip. rip. It's just such a strong hand. He could mm -hmm. have opted to just see a flop in position. But these, these suited wheels and the ace-9, ace-10 plus going to play well as a four-bet rip. Very adamant that he has the best hand there. The big smirk from him. 15 and a half million in this pot. 964 is the flop. And exactly what we just said, Alan, or a few hands ago, that if Martin gives away half his stack here, he finds himself in a short stack situation with 20 big blinds. And that is exactly what has just happened. Do you um do you think that's always a jam, Dan, or do you think sometimes we can call? Or is it just always going to be a four-bet jam? Some, I don't think it's always a four-bet jam. It depends. Mm. Uh, someone like Babo hasn't really been out of line that much. He's more likely to get his chips in in a different situation that we've seen. Um, I do think... I haven't seen Babo do that many like three bets. It's hard for me to answer that question because the players for most of this final table have been extremely short stack and it's gone all Martin's way until now. Now all mm. momentum shifting in Babo's direction. Obviously Babo is accomplished enough to know he's going to have to start tree betting like tree handed when the button is the new under the gun. There is only three remaining. Um, so every hand you're going to be posting blinds and antis, so you're going to have to adjust your tree betting range. That was, that's what makes it a sexy four bet rip there with Ace 10 suited. Because mm -hmm. we unblock some combinations that our opponent can have that's going to just raise fold. If we run into the top of the range that has us dominated, it's usually going to be Ace Queen, Ace Jack, or Ace King. We're going to be in a flip situation, and the rest of the time he's just going to fold. Also, they're going to have hands like Ace Deuce, Ace Three, Ace Four. Ace five, the, all the suited and unsuited combinations of those hands. So I do really like the shove from the ace ten suited. A little bit deeper, we could probably peel. I think we can peel anyway. Yeah. But you're just putting in a nice chunk of your stack. Yes, you're in position, but if you can just take that down pre, it seems like it's the optimal play to four bet rip. Yeah, I can get behind that too strongly, bro. And I do. I think once you said it that way, that if you do. If you do call, you're probably putting in too much money. Whereas if you're going to get if you're going to get more folds than than, than calls, then I think that's self-explanatory and what we should do with the S10 suited there. So I really like that breakdown, bro. In terms of like the pre-flop kind of ranges and what that looks like. As I said, if you're going to get a fold, if you jam most of the time, then yeah, obviously that's the superior player just to rip it in. Yeah, it just. Like I just said, so Babo, they have Babo and Christian haven't had too many of these spots where they've been able to show us how light they could be tree betting. So, but it still stands the same that 
they, they all know each other's game very well at this late stage, right? Mm -hmm. So, if it's the first tree bet we've ever seen Babo do, we might give him respect. We're not going to fall, but we might just flat play cautiously. If you're going for the title there, I think we YOLO rip it. It's a profitable jam no matter what. If you think you're going to significantly outplay your opponent post-flop, then I think we can just call. Um, I will say, I think the ace-10 offsuit and ace-9 offsuit. Mm, I think ace-10 maybe better than the ace-9. We just The offsuit combinations we are actually a better 4-bet rip, so if we were going to choose yeah. a combo of the ace-10, the suit variety is better to flatten position. Mm -hmm. Um that would be my understanding of it. Uh, if you if you construct a three bet folding range for Babo in the small blind, it will just show how much we're printing with a four bet rip. It just sucks what's just happened to Martin there. Mm -hmm. he, you can mm -hmm. see it on his face. It's worth a lot of money, and he's had it all his own way for the most part at this FT. So for to see him just hand over all of his chips there, well, a good chunk of his chips there, it's very disheartening. Yeah, I was just going to jokingly say as well, bro, that would you rather run better at the start and then finish in the and be guaranteed a top three? Or would you rather like manage to just sneak your way into the top five or six like that or something like that? I think like if you manage to just run well for the length of time that Martin did, that he managed to still... I mean, it's not over. I'm not saying it is, FYI. But um, yeah, obviously Babo in a very commanding ship lead right now versus the other two well, players. Hold on. It's... This is very, very noteworthy. He is now playing 15 million chips. It is not so long ago that we seen him all in for about one and a half mil. I think he 2.3 yep. mil with the King 8 offsuit. Mm -hmm. Look mm -hmm. at what's happened here. That's a complete 360, bro. Yeah, he cracked the Kings. Then he had another double up. Then he's just got four bet ripped and he's snapped it off. He's run really well here. Christian is just letting the boys go at it. There's such a massive pay jump between third and second. I don't blame him. Not that he's had any choice. He hasn't had the cards. Um, Red Misty asking, are we both from the Midlands? You must have bus. Either I sound like I'm from Galway or you sound like you're from the Midlands. It's one or the other. So Red Misty, I am from the Midlands. I'm originally from Dublin. I done a stint in Berlin and Glasgow. Then I get people saying I sound like I was from Limerick. I lived in Galway for 10 years, uh, so I am multi -culty. Alan, on the other hand, is Galway <laughs> true and true. Been there, born and bred his whole life. Exactly that. <laughs> How many times have we answered that one? A good few. Quite a few, yeah. Over the last three days, bro, at least probably three or four times. But again, I'm happy to, I'm happy to uh, answer it regardless. I sure did get used to us sooner or later. We're not just <laughs> for Christmas. No, sir. No skill says Babo might feel like he's being gifted this run and start to lean on him, or maybe uh, it's best to let the two similar stacks battle it out. No, I, I don't think I don't think Babo wants to be slowing down at all here. He can really he obviously does not want to give away some of those chips that he just accumulated. But looking at Christian and Martin there, he can leverage both of these stacks. It is no harm, though, to let one of them bust the other or to chip away at each other. Mm -hmm. oh, Red Misty says he's from Athlone. Nice. Close enough. You're in, in the middle. You're in the Midlands. You're in the middle of the two of us. You're not, you're not going to get more middle than that, mate. <laughs> 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 it's mad how this chat knows everything, bro, in terms of like um, how, how it you know, relates to what we're saying in terms of like asking where we're from the Midlands and then mentions here, whatever. Uh, I've lived in Glasgow for six months. I knew you were a, Gla a, a Glaswegian. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit scary. People can find out anything about people these days. You weren't too far off indeed, lads, so nearly 2.2. As long as you're not calling us English, as you know already. Mm -hmm. Johan, the man, is just in time. He's in the chat. Hello, Johan. Hope you are well, my friend. Five of diamonds hits the river here, Martin, with the best of it. He already had the best of it, but has a pair now. So it's Christian looking to try to take this away. He's going to have more of these two pairs on this river. He can rep this board is what I'm trying to say from the big blind. 
See, 25 is the bet, Alan. A little bit under half pot. Mm. Really nice call there from Martin. Very nice. Like He's called with fifth pair on the board. That needs to get some respect. Wow, and Martin back over seven million now. Christian's like, how did you call me there if there's four over cards? Yeah. <laughs> heart. Yes, heart, 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 heart. Yes, Tony smile. Smile. <laughs> And again, Alan, he acted very fast there, called him pretty quick on the river. True. So blinds have gone up 150, 300, 300. These players are animals. They've been playing for four days now. <laughs> what a game, huh? <laughs> yeah. How bad do you want it? Hungry. Hungry for the power. So Christian is going to complete with the 8-7 suited. here for Martin Christian checking I actually I think I prefer a C, uh, like a like a lead here from Christian with a lot of backdoor equity see the, pro the, the the problem is when you don't bet that you just have to check fold I mean yeah again at the, at these stack sizes you kind of have to if, like, if, again if I'm playing a cash game man 100 big blinds different story different strategies etc but um I think when you have this kind of 19, 20 big blind stack, check call in there isn't really going to be that beneficial for your, for your stack or for your, uh, yeah, just your overall well-being in this tournament with three players left when there's, again, so much money up top. Yeah, I think that's a mistake because there's enough hands that we're just going to check fold with when we complete from the small on the queen five deuce there. We've got backdoor straight draw working for us, backdoor club draw working for us. So I think it... I don't, I, I've been using the word mandatory too much on this channel the last couple of days, but it mm. is falling into that category in my mind. I, I, I would think, as a simplification in one way, that if you do have these limp pots, man, that like, if the big blind checks back, like literally just flicking in one big blind to uh, get a call, or to just get a fall, because again, the big blind's range, man, is like so, so wide that like, even just flicking in one big blind there, you're going to get a ton of folds. At a frequency, a pretty high frequency. So I agree, man. That's 7-8 with the back doors. It's a good, uh, good hand to uh, just try and get folds. Yeah. And if we don't get a fold immediately, we're going to have a lot of barrels when we hit some extra equity on the turn. Exactly. And possibly even if we miss, we can get our opponents to fold some hands depending on what the river is. So... Again, I just think he needs to think about that for a little bit longer before just check folding. It's just amazing what we can see when we're able to see the cards and when you're sitting there, it's just a different ball game. Yeah. Like, I presume if Christian reviewed this final table, which he might do, um, and he sees that hand, he'd be like, whoa, I, don't, I can't believe I checked there. It's just cognitive dis dissonance. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing as well, man. It's like they've just been playing for, as you said, the last three days. We don't know how well they're sleeping. We don't know how well they're recovering. So, yeah, I mean, again, we're six hours into the stream, bro. They're obviously maybe a little bit longer in terms of playing. So, yeah, there might be some of these minute details that they may miss on where obviously us seeing the cards and the, just, you know, being experienced players also, we're probably not going to miss them. Um, but yeah, 
I'm not going to say he should or shouldn't have bet there, but I do think betting overall is probably a better play there, especially given it was a limp pot. Yeah. I think that's all good info. Babo with a flush draw here. Opportunity for Christian to get some money in here. Just 15 bigs with a top pair, albeit with a bad kicker. But it is Babo who's going to lead. Say what you want about Babo. He's a very tricky player to, to figure out. This lead will look strong into two players. No, no, Christian. Christian's no, fired. no, 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 no. He's misreading Christian. hands, man. It's something, something's going on. <laughs> it's just the nerves as well. He mightn't be showing it physically, but he is wearing shades. Can't really get a good look at him. He's been one of these players at the table, Alan, at this final table. He, he's been somewhat of a ghost. Not in every situation, but if we, 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 we seem to have been commentating on the other eight players while they've been at this FT more so than Christian. He's really just mm -hmm. stayed away from a lot of spots and let the others grind away at each other. So he's already netted the guts of €100,000 for himself. Not a yeah, good enough still, reason to fall top pair there, yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah. you're going, yeah, yeah, but yeah, still. Was, <laughs> yeah, but still. It's just like, that was on the tip of my tongue, man, obviously. But yeah, you just cannot be falling top pair in that spot, man. Again, it's a limped pot, man. Like, if he has, he can, he can lead out, like, a lot of straight draws, a lot of flush draws. Just flick in the call and see what happens on the turn. It's not like you're asked I mean, to put in, like, your entire stack on the flop. You know, it's, a, it's, a, it's, 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 what, maybe one, one and a half big blinds of a bet that, uh, who was it? Uh, Martin, was it the best, or was it, was it the chip leader? I think it was a chip leader, yeah. But either way, either way, cannot be, um, cannot be for the top <laughs> pair of those. It's just criminal. Like, Babo had four high. Yes, okay, the flush draw, but he had four high. Exactly. Also, when the king four falls there, I like call him with the ace-10 to see a turn. Because you're in position as well, bro. You get, you, you get to realize your equity by the river a lot of the time, unless Bado or Babo decides to bet the turn again, which he might. But again, you don't know that. You have to call and see a turn for that for you to find out, you know? And I, as I said, you're in position. So definitely would like a call there too. I agree. Players are just running on fumes. It's very uh, obvious. Ross says, Babo ain't babooing around with the big stack. <laughs> <laughs> The difference between third and second, nearly 25,000 euro. I remember someone earlier saying that that's how much a year's wages was in, um, I think it was Antwerp. So just yeah, surviving one more bust out there, you're making an extra year's wages for a lot of people. So much money. I was just thinking there, actually, I wonder, did any of these three guys manage to satellite in or did they just buy in directly or anything like that? Because that'd be interesting to know as well if that's a possibility to see. Yeah, it's a good point. Um, I can't, I didn't Google Babo or Hendon Mobham, obviously, because I don't want to make an idiot of myself. <laughs> but uh, we know Martin has a few hundred K basically whether they satellite it or not doesn't matter the more money they've made in their career in my opinion Alan because it's like they just played a satellite and won a ticket it's not like they're recreational that just won a ticket and True. they're playing for the biggest opportunity of their life 
So I think that needs to be taken into consideration. There's people at this resort who have won up to 10 tickets. I think someone informed me in the chat there that one of the French guys had... Uh, Dorian had like 13 tickets for the 10k last year. Something I, crazy. I, I, I remember. I remember hearing that as well. I don't know. Is it maybe you that said it to me or, or something like that? But yeah, I do remember that being mentioned. Crazy. Okay, we've all in and call here. Things escalated quickly. Yeah, so basically what I'm saying is that many tickets, it's just, that's that's another day at the office for a lot. Just so subs, just because they sat like into uh, 1700 doesn't mean they're not able to play the game well. You see that in EPTs all the time. Oh yeah, well he's actually a satellite qualifier and it's some sicko. Ace 9-9, nine, nine on the flop. And Martin in trouble here, needing help on this Turner River. He would still be left with eight bigs. Christian's eights looking hot as we hit the river. King or a queen needed for Martin. 8.8 .8 million in this pot. Very fitting if the eights hold. And they do. Eight, eight, eight for 8.8 .8 million. And poor Martin has gone from 15 million chips to two and a half. Sad times. Oh dear. It's not like he's blown up. He's missed a few spots, Alan. We've caught, we've criticised a few questionable missed sea bets or whatever. He's just had a bad run of cards there the last hour or so. I mean, lost a couple of flips there too as well, man. I mean, running the ace-10 into the ace-queen was probably the killer one, I guess. Well, the, I mean, there was maybe one or two examples before that, but um, yeah, yeah obviously, massive. it's maybe coming back. Uh, coming back from the break, the last break, man, Martin has just been like, yeah, pretty pretty brutal run for Martin, unfortunately. But at the same time, bro, I don't know if he did that much wrong. You know what I mean? Just kind of ran bad with no. distribution. Okay, this is important to note. I was sure I had found this out earlier. So Christian only has total live earnings of 24k. So that would be confirming that he is the least experienced. Well, I don't know about Babo. But when they're playing for this kind of money, it is very possible that the satellite is in. And that would, that would uh, confirm some of the inexperience we were seeing in some of the hands we're commentating on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Queen seven four is the flop. And Martin with the best of it, Babo shoving on him for five bigs behind. Don't mind the peel here, Pre. If we hit, we hit. If we don't, we don't. It's the chance to bounce back to five mil. Turn is the eight of diamonds. River is the tree of spades. Sit back down, Martin. It's a pretty big chip up there for Martin, no? Back up to like what? 15 big blinds, 16 big blinds. Yeah, 16 of those says the graphics. Nice. Yeah. yeah, because the big blind is so huge and you've got the big blind ante in there. All the extra juice that was in the middle before they got it in. It's mad, Alan. He gets like one more big hand and he's back to nearly 15 mil with about 12, whatever. Just a pot or two. He suddenly he's back to where he was. That just, just shows how volatile this short-handed no limit hold'em action can be. And that's what you play all the time. So you're well adverse to it. You know all about it. I love it. <laughs> Queen 
That's exactly why I keep coming back for more. <laughs> Chasing the dragon. Exactly that. I keep saying it, that's the third time I've said it once each day that you're well adversed, and it's versed I'm trying to say. Goddamn vocabulary. Close enough. <laughs> yeah, too many big words like marmalade. <laughs> Brilliant. Babo just going to shove on Martin. But again, even with these three players, I have seen so much reckless play in my 18 months of commentating for Kings. Players have just had enough. They're getting it in willy-nilly, doing all sorts of crazy things, just showing time and time again their impatience towards still being in this event, even though there's so much money up for grabs. Neither three of these players have shown that they really are. They can, they can tell all three of them are tired. They're making bigger mistakes than maybe earlier, and there's just so much money on the line. But they are still remaining calm. And they're not just going to stack off too light. <laughs> I'm going to eat my words now in a minute, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, it's interesting you mentioned that as well, bro, because I remember when I did the German, Pokers Day, German Poker Day a couple of months ago. Um, and like that, obviously, we're both aware that it's obviously quite, um, quite a long stint of a stream because it's only one day. But I do remember when that was heads up yeah. that it was kind of the same situation in terms of, um, you know, 12, 13 hours into playing. And this guy, I remember somebody had queens in the final hand and he opens on the button and the guy just rips like 10-8 off. And he just says, I just want to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, your man <laughs> called the queens. <laughs> well, the birds are probably chirping because that is the latest one that they do at the Kings. I will tell you mm -hmm. now, I went through two flasks, flasks of coffee with one of those German poker days, and I put five Jeez. spoons in a flask. So that was 10 spoons as yeah, from 9 a.m. Till, till, till 9, 9 p.m. till 9 a.m., say. And I think I had other, I had a can of Coke and some other sugars as well. Like So it was a lot of caffeine to get through that one, Alan. Yeah, it's tough going, man. It's tough going. Bring back Pistol Pete. He's uh, he. I think he was one that made the final table in the German poker days before. For Pete's sake. <laughs> the bottom guy says Martin is the best player at the table. Yeah, it does seem that way. He has the most in caches, but that I can't. I don't know about Babo. Babo's no no slouch either. But I have so much now that I am. Um, I think I think I did hand him Mob Christian at the, the, earlier yesterday or the start of, of today, but I'd forgotten that he only had 24k in caches. So, what what a thrilling result for him, no matter what happens. He is clearly up against it if that's the most success he's had. But as I said, sometimes these players, he's he wouldn't really be showing me now that he's using these cash game sizes. Um, uh, some of the top regs, they they just astound me i'm like how the hell does he have no caches and then i get it revealed that he's a sicko it's not the case with christian so i love us i love a new a new dude getting his biggest score for the first time the scrappy underdog as i like to call them and it's awesome to see and it grows the game so well goes and tells mm -hmm. his friends and then suddenly 10 new players are playing poker yeah word him out bro Better than foot and mouth, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's come to, is it? <laughs> <laughs> the toilet humour, yeah. No, not quite yet, no. Bad. Bad, Dan. It's bad. <laughs> bad, man. I <laughs> said, Jesus, these jokes. Oh my God. I wouldn't call them jokes now. That was just <laughs> cringe worthy. <laughs> so, something. You know, 
If, they, if, they're, if they're the best jokes we have, then better sign off. You'd know, you'd know when we're three days into comedy, huh? <laughs> yeah, give us a break, man. Jeez. I'll be going to do comedy tomorrow night, and I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully, I'm well rested by then. I will tell you, I'm buzzing after doing these three days. I'm feeling very confident now going into tomorrow, which is great. Nice. If after doing nearly 30 hours with yourself, 10 minutes should be nothing to it. <laughs> You'd hope so. <laughs> yeah, I'd hope so. And 121, Martin Shoving, and this is going to get called by Christian. It's just going to be too far up in his range. He is asking for a count. He's entitled to ask for a count, but this does show his uh, lack of experience in these situations because this is going to be a snap. Agreed. Yeah, I didn't really like his 7-8 clubs, uh, blind me blind, and that, that King 4 as well was, can't be folding top pair there. Yeah, like AS9 here, bro, I'm sure you'd agree, it's just like miles ahead of like what Martin is going to be shoving this turn here, you know. Um, yeah, just a very easy call. Does call, and... A big moment here for Christian. A lot of money at stake. The guts of a year's wages for a lot of people. 25,000 euro in the difference. 8 million in this pot. And is there to be another twist in this tale? Is Martin going to double back up to 8 million? Or is he going to be out in third place having the chip lead for most of this final table? Good luck. Queen five deuce is the flop, and that is a really, really nice flop for Christian. Burn is a tree of hearts, and Martin needing a Jeffrey or a seven on the river, or he will be eliminated. It doesn't Martin. arrive. G G Martin played a stormer at this final table. A couple of hands not going his way, and that is the difference between. Getting that first place finish, if them four bet rips just don't go your way, it's amazing how much one hand can change everything in these tournaments. We are going to go on the shortest of breaks here as we get this heads up battle ready for your viewing pleasure. We're going to put a ribbon on this thing and one of these remaining players is going to be your circuit main event champion. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. Big fan of all of these five players have done so much for the game already in their own respective ways. Absolutely. I think uh, Sean Deeve is the main man to go on and challenge Phil Helmuth's 17 bracelets. Yeah, I've got a bet. Oh, you have? Yeah, yeah. What's the bet? Oh, hold that thought. Hold that thought, guys. A thousand percent in the eight game. Daniel, comes a call. 
okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, actually, let me think about it. Two point three in the middle. Oh, Ace in the window, oh, a seven four. Couple of diamonds saying well, with the jack of diamonds in hand. Came with the three point three X pre. Gonna continue for small. <coughs> Don't really see Daniel doing much other than just call here. 3.5 in the middle, Pourquoi? Jack of Hearts on the turn, would you believe? He has turned a set of Jacks and Daniel Negreanu in rough shape here at this stack to pot ratio. What a sick turn card. Henry celebrating that one like never I'm before. <laughs> not celebrating, pal, I'm just sickened at how tournament poker works. Check, check, on the turn. Five of hearts on the river. Backdoor hearts getting there. Daniel has the ace of hearts, though. So I think if we see a bet from Foix, Daniel might well have to pay this one off. Sick, sick turn. Running hearts. Especially with the ace of hearts in hand. The Granu likely to hero hit. 2.8. 2.8. Just hoping that Paul's turning a hand like King Queen, King Ten with the King of Hearts, Queen of Hearts into a bluff. Does make the call, chip lead pot, sang up to 11 million in chips. Dean Eggs down to 15 bigs. Nothing he can do, blind v blind for that run out. We like that turn just a little bit, right? <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna give up. <laughs> I'll tell you who loved that turn. Sean Deep, ladies and gentlemen. Sean Deep loved that turn. Do apologize, Pourquoi, up to second in chips. 36 bigs, 32% of all the chips in play. <laughs>
the background saying he's going to shove over the top of this three bet. On. Does announce all in. And Orpin with a snap fold. Sean Deeb picks up a monster pot without even having to sweat five. Up to 14 million in chips. I see, yeah, yeah. It's history about to be made here. Yeah, uh, the guy was opening from UTG, I think. And I was thinking about to tribute him or calling. But when I uh, will tribute him and uh, he will be shoving me, it will be very tough spot to fall or call, I don't know. So I decided just to call. And because I know nobody over me, behind me is very aggressive and will be stealing the pot. And I can pay, uh, play in the position. But the guy <laughs> next to me was squeezing and uh, the original razor was folding but the price was very good because i was calling like one to four and i know uh, how he plays so i decided to call and uh, because i know when he not uh, hit uh, he will be not aggressive so i can uh, easily go to showdown with the uh, pocket knights and ta -da -da, <laughs> i hit the set <laughs> so it was very very easy to play uh, flop came check check uh, then uh, then I uh, bet because uh, there was an opening flash, so I want to protect my hand and uh, take a value. And River come 10, uh, make a full house for me, so it helped me very much. And I was thinking uh, what he can have and what he can call. So I decided to back big, like a uh, missed flash draw, and maybe make a hero call with Ace King or some uh, smaller pair. And lucky for me, he got the Queens. All right, folks, we are back, and we are looking at a very even Stevens heads-up match. 
52% of the chips in play for Christian after eliminating Martin in third place and Babo hanging around with 48% of the chips in play with 44 big blinds. This is very even. Stevens, nearly 60 Gs, the difference between first and second. And there's a small matter of playing for the title, the glory and the circuit main event ring for the World Series of Poker circuit events. Let's see which one of these players is going to be crowned your champion at the King's Resort, live from Rosvodov. I hope you're all still with us, baby. This one could go on for a while yet, or it could be a very volatile, quick affair. We're about to find out. Hope you've enjoyed the show so far over the last three days. Next weekend, we have the Millionaire Wolf. That's going to be a big one. Then the following week after that, we've got the Dutch Classics. The week after that, I take my annual leave and I won't be in the boot for a few weeks. The World Series of Poker Europe main event coverage will be taking place. Be sure to check us out on all the usual social media platforms that I have mentioned several times over the last few days. We've got a great sale on with some items of, with up to 50% off. On the merchandise store if you want to find out additional information about the resort itself head over to the website www.kingsresort.com so look at those beautiful graphics in the background they're awesome i love that midnight blue we've got a TikTok channel if you like short clips of certain hands we've got new videos on our youtube channel every week be sure to give us a like subscribe and a follow on there Giving the biggest, hugest round of applause for all the moderators and everyone making the chat so much fun and entertainment the last few days. The Action Army on Twitch was on fire and it was just awesome. Gave me and Alan so much content to talk about. And I hope to God you've learned a lot about your notepad. Well, and wealth of knowledge being dropped, knowledge bombs. Okay, heads up battle has meant now for Christian. He's going to be out of his depth here because I don't think, I don't know much about Babo either, but these guys won't have played this. I don't think a lot of players at the FT would have played a 60,000 euro heads up battle, but with Christian, only 24k in cashes. Let's see how he handles some of these deep stack spots in a heads up scenario. Bag Babo betting 600k here. Christian can't beat much here with his pair of fours. It looks like he's going to pay the man. He does pay the man, and that will give him some confidence there. With three over cards to his pair of four, still finds the call. Got to remember, in a heads-up scenario, it's so, so difficult to make a hand. You've got to capitalize on every opportunity. So first hand, first blood goes to Christian. Lou. The thing that's great about this chat as well, Lou was new to the channel and really has taken it all in. It says, thank you, moderator. It's been a great show. You're more than welcome, Lou. And I hope you're enjoying your GTO wizard. And I'm sure we will see you back in the chat box soon. Negatoro says, yep, great show. Thank you for your comment also. We like to have fun here. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. What's your favorite homing sound? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> It's the last time I'm going to thank you as well, Alan. Thanks a million for joining us yet again. Pleasure, bro. Awesome, My pleasure, Alan. as always. <laughs> it's better be called awesome, Alan, than awful, Alan. So. <laughs> True that, sir. Yeah, there's people freaking out in the chat. When are we back or when is this? It's every single weekend there is someone in the boot for Kings, so don't worry about that. Mostly myself, and then when I want to go... Explore the <laughs> get Alan to help me out in the commentary if there you can. A little adventure. And then for the bigger events, we get the two of us together, which is always great. Bouncing Love off it. ideas. God knows what stakes you'll be playing when you're back in the booth the next time, Alan. Wish you the best of luck and every success. Well, as, as long as I'm not, not moving down in stakes. <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah. I said, not that I don't talk to you every day anyway. True. <clears throat> so, Christian flopping is set here on the 874. Babo going to continue for 1.2 million. Turn is the nine of diamonds. I see Babo going to reach for chips here. He's looked at his chips and then looked at his opponent. That's usually indicates that he is going to go for another bet. <coughs> mm, I'm not the biggest fan of this. I just think our hand has shriveled up significantly on this turn. You just want to check here, Alan, yeah? Try to get the showdown. Yeah, I just don't think this like it's 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 not like this needs that much that much protection, man. Like again, if you're ahead of some of his range, just check call. You know, if he's bluffing, let him bluff, and if he's not, then reevaluate on rivers. It's uh, it's a definitely um a mistake you're betting this king seven again on the turn because you're really targeting such a small portion of um Christian's range here. That's going to be worse. That might call stuff like four five. You know, six, seven, maybe nine, six, stuff like that that we'll call. But even like that, man, it's such a small, small portion of like worst hands that we'll call here. Mm. Yeah, uh, I don't know how much I like a raise here. It does provide some protection, but we just fold out all the worst hands. Unless he thinks he can get external value from a straight draw and a flush draw, a combo draw, something to that effect. I prefer yeah. to just call and let him let him bet it, basically bet for pot on the river. Just the way the, the stacks are set up, Alan, the stack to pot ratio. What? What? Babo has moved all in for 9.2 million. I don't understand this at all. This is an absolute blow up from Babo. Wow. That's 60k blow up, man. Fuck. Well, wow. call it wow. as we see it. That is a blunder and a half. Jeez. It just seems like Babo wanted to get out of here or something. I don't know what that achieves. And Christian Serge. Year of Romania is going to take this one down. 27 million chips are all his. The circuit ring, 160,000 euro and all the glory that goes with it. Congratulations. Sick. Well, that was a very quick one, Alan. <laughs> Ridiculously quick, bro. It couldn't have gone any quicker, literally. Bing, bang, boom. Just like that, it is all over. I'm, I'm not quite as speechless as that 7-5 hand, but it's close. Johan says, thanks, no. Alan and Dan. You are more than welcome, Johan, and everyone else in the chat. Brilliant moderators help us make this mm -hmm. channel what it is. It has doubled in over a year. 
and it's just continuing to grow. I think it's time to say our goodbyes, Alan. We've done it. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> Crazy long three days, bro, but I loved every bit of it. Jeez, he looks a bit perplexed. What the hell did I just do? That was a lot of blinds to get in there. Christian not, in head, not, not, not having not really having that move in his arsenal over the top. Um, okay, Alan, thanks a minute for joining us. I have top Goodbye, sets. Everyone. And if it was Ask a cooler, it was I've a cooler. But, uh, I felt that I uh, he didn't have um, a hand that beat me. Maybe he had Jack 10, that's why I asked him, but what can you do? Yeah, maybe the board doubles on the river and I still win it if he has Jack 10. <laughs> I have to think about it, but uh, it was maybe the King 8 versus Jacks that I was lucky. Yeah, I ran, I ran really good in everything from the satellite to the first day to I, I played, the, I entered directly to the second day because I already uh, qualified from a satellite and played day one and I played another satellite and qualified again and played day two and I started with 25 big blinds and I, I ran really well, day two, day three, day four, yeah, I don't know yet, I never had so much money so <laughs> to think about it but uh, maybe invest in something durable like a house an apartment something some part of the money of course stays uh, for the for the bankroll yes but not all, not all of them kids don't don't keep all their money for the game <laughs> yeah uh, first of all I'm gonna sleep really well like a week because uh, this was uh, very tiresome and um, I'm gonna study one two weeks but uh, i heard that uh, the field is pretty good in uh, day 1a so hoping just to be on a on a big run and uh, and doing something there also tough to give an advice because uh, tournament poker is very very tough and it involves a lot of luck so uh, it takes a very very long time to make a big result that matters you know and you have to be uh, very serious and uh, very determined and not give up, that's all. And not many players can, uh, many people can do that. Yeah.